Uh, Tom, I wrote rather, not I, I was basing it on what I can see through, through, ah, through the window. There you go. The we have a, a revised grid um, due to uh, alterations last night and results. And, uh, yesterday afternoon's races, one win to Ryan Smith and one win to uh, Martin Gibson. So uh, all to play for today and the championship still wide open at the moment with uh, Franz Hatch to come after this one. Uh, if we go to the uh, grid position, it is Tony Smith, the 45 truck on pole, the reverse grid, as you said, and uh, Tom O'Rourke, number 86, will be alongside him. Then Well, a very good morning race fans and a warm welcome to beautiful South Wales here on day two with BARC TV at the Pembrey circuits not far from uh, Planetley and Port Talbot on the South Wales coast. Second day of racing here on BARC TV. The sun is out here at Pembrey and we are ready to go racing with the British Automobile Racing Club. Dave Goddard here taking you through today's action. The big rigs are ready to rumble once again. The British Truck Racing Championship, the headline act on today's programme. We saw two races from them yesterday and another three coming up here today. Supported by the Junior Saloon Car Championship, the 14 to 16 year olds in their Citroen Saxos. And we've also got the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship for their final race of the year. We kick off in uh, about five minutes time with the British Truck Racing Championship, racing over uh, 15 minutes. First of their three races today. Second race coming up at 10.55 is the final race of the year for Everything MG, the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. 11.55 we have the first race of the day for the junior saloon cars, 15 minutes plus one lap the distance for that one. Then after the lunch break we have uh, more truck racing, then 15.20pm we have the junior saloon car championship and the final race of the day, the trucks once again. Two truck races uh, yesterday and the trucks now on their way to the grid for the third race of the weekend. The marshals will greet them on the grid, it will be a rolling start behind a pace truck but um, before we get the trucks out onto the grid we can hand down to the paddock where our man on the ground uh, the one and only pointy caught up with a couple of the drivers earlier on so again still fresh from race two of the weekend just just missing out on that third place John Powell you, you, you are literally on the, the precipice of getting on that podium this weekend what do you think is holding you back well, that would be my brother, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, just go straight for the jugular. So, I'll have a word with him later, if he can just have a lie-in. Next time, just get him to move over. <laughs> I mean, I mean it, in all fairness, it's nice to get out and have a mix. We had a race with Adam earlier in the first race. Just just missed out then. So, but no, enjoy that. It's really good, actually. And, uh, you know, it's probably love, isn't it? It is. So, it is. Yeah, and I, it is I'm fantastic to see you tussling out on the track. I mean, we're seeing some great racing. I mean, positions uh, aside, um, the, the truck is obviously a lot more reliable now. Touch wood. Uh, you're getting some fantastic performance out of it. Does it feel better than it did at the beginning of the season? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we spent a lot of time. It blew up at Brown's Hatch. Went back to the drawing ball, re uh, pistons, liners, camshaft turbo everything and also just a quick service then oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. just an oil change it only <laughs> came in for a light bulb yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've been to an mot station yeah. like that yeah, yeah oh so so, uh, so it's going well you're enjoying yourself and that's yeah. the main thing well the main thing is that you're reasonably competitive with the pace so it's very frustrating if you turn up and you're off the pace and you know you can drive you know so yeah. But um, it, it, it's no fun running around the back of the field. I did that last year. So. Yeah, well, it's good to see you in the mix. Uh, now, before we started filming, we were talking that you don't like biscuits. Is that is there any, is there any particular reason you don't like biscuits? Only if they're chocolate coated. Ah, I see, there we go. Chocolate coated. So we've already had Tunnocks. It seems Division 2 are up for the chocolate coated biscuits, ladies and gentlemen. 
Cadbury's and Cadbury's only. Oh, Cadbury's. It's got to be Cadbury's. Well, thank you very much for joining us, John. Fantastic effort and good luck for tomorrow uh, or shortly as it may be by the time this goes out. Uh, that's all from us here for now from Park Ferme. We'll see you all very soon. So here with Steve Powell now taking third place in Saturday's race two of the British Truck Racing Championship. Uh, we've not really had much time to speak to you this weekend, have we? No, not on camera, no. But no. Like, in the day, that's it. But yeah, it's, it's always good to catch up outside of the racing. Absolutely lovely. Yeah, yeah. really look forward to it. It's, it's, it's one of the highlights of my week. Oh, it's highlight of my life. <laughs> I don't let the wife find out. <laughs> my goodness me. Uh, this is what's it. So, so second trophy this weekend now, though. Yeah, yeah, we've done all right. Second in the first race. For today, so. And I saw the lads running around earlier on doing some uh, makeshift welding of sorts. Is, is is that a problem or a modification? No, just a little bit of a modification. Now we've helped Bradley out, so the boys went around and got Bradley out for that race. So uh, no, we've done a lot of work between Snetterton because we're really down on power, right. and we've got the boost back up now, so we're happy really. Like so, we've only got tomorrow and Brands actually this, and then we're into Division One. So. Uh, yeah, it's just finishing the season on a high, really. That's what we would like to do. I mean, Craig's he's miles off. We're not going to catch him, but if we can keep him in front of the others, then it's good enough. Yeah, I actually asked your brother John uh, what was what was holding him back from taking that third position. He just said it's your fault. Absolutely. I mean, if, <laughs> yeah, if he's fourth and I'm third, yeah, it's down to me. Andy. It is all your fault, and so uh, yeah, he messed up the start a bit. So and uh, he done me at Snetterton. So it was I wasn't going to let it happen again, but it's. Uh, yeah, it was a good race, good clean race, so that's what it's all about. Yeah, so. I'm glad to see you're all enjoying yourselves out there, that is the main thing. Yeah, it's been good. I mean, this morning's race was really good as well, so it's, it's a tight circuit and you don't want to go off here, because if you go off, there's no gravel, it's all there time. is is tyre bales. Yeah, and and we then, have seen a couple of people yeah, do that here. You're going to hurt yourself, it's as simple as that, so time. you might as well just have a bit of respect for the other people, and it's been good. And I think hopefully tomorrow, I think the weather forecast is alright, so... Brilliant, yeah. Hands down. And, uh, and to finish off, uh, obviously the most important thing that everybody at home is, is, is looking forward to asking the drivers now is Gary Baldy. Gary Baldy. Gary, Gary Baldy, Baldy. Baldy. Why that. not? So you've got a kind of knobbly exterior, bit fruity in the, the middle. Yeah, <laughs> job done. That's it. And that's me all over, really. What you see is what you get. It's a bit different than a bit. I like it. I like it. Well, well, Steve, I like them thank well. you. Oh, so do I. They're yeah. quite I nice. I do actually. I really, like a, I really like a shortbread. Uh, what is it? Uh, Ch -ch Chop chick shortbread, the square things from Oh, Cotton. yeah, they are the best. Uh, yes. But racing was the one from uh, Kirkland, from yeah, but other brands are available. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. no yeah. advertising here. Yeah. <laughs> we, we make them at the Pauls Bella in, they're very nice. Oh, but, really? Uh, yeah, 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 very nice pizzas oh, on yeah, there. Yeah, very nice pizzas. Right, that's yeah. enough free advertising <laughs> for you. Thank you very much to Steve Powell there for joining us down here at the Park Ferme, and we'll catch up with some more drivers shortly. Okay, so uh, great to hear from Pointy and a couple of the drivers there as we get ready for our first of three truck races today in the sunshine of Pembroke. The Division 1 trucks, the uh, quicker, more powerful machines starting off from the front in uh, reverse order from the finishing order of uh, yesterday's second race. The grid as follows. Number 45, Tony Smith, his first appearance in Division 1 on pole for this one alongside 86, Tom O'Rourke. Second row, 81, of Mark Taylor and number 18 John Newell. Third row, 10 times champion, number 7 Stuart Oliver and 69 David Jenkins. And then the fourth row, number 1 Ryan Smith and 11 Martin Gibson. Now Ryan Smith took the flag in first place in yesterday's second race but he got a penalty for uh, an overtake off track as he made his way through from the back of the Division 1 grid. He was penalised one place so Martin Gibson inherited the win in yesterday's second race. Then there's a gap and we've got the Division 2 runners, the slightly less powerful trucks. Number 10, Craig Evans, alongside 6, who we just heard from, John Powell. Stephen Powell, number 3, the reigning Division 2 champion, alongside 32 of Jock Borthwick. Then 68, Craig Reed. 46, Bradley Smith, the son of Tony. Hopefully he's out there, had some problems yesterday, had a crash in qualifying. Hopefully 99, Paul McComsky is there as well, number 99, alongside 5, Adam Bint, who missed uh, yesterday's second race with steering damage. And 92, Simon Faulkner, he's actually a Division 1 driver, but as he's a novice, electing to start from the very back of the grid, his first ever truck race meeting this weekend. This will be a 15-minute race, there is Simon Faulkner from the back. We're about to get underway then. We're missing Tony Smith. Uh, he's not at the front of the grid there. I think he's starting at the back, actually, as we're about to get underway with the first race for Division 1 and 2 truck racing here at Pembrey today. And away they go. Great start by Tom O'Rourke down to, towards Hatchet's Hairpin.
for the first time. John Newell, number 18, on the outside. John, John Newell runs out wide as they go down towards the right-hander at Spitfires for the first time. There's 69, David Jenkins. He's the championship leader. Well, it is 86, Tom O'Rourke, who leads over the crossing. Mark Taylor in second place. John Newell is in third. Now, who's leading Division 2? Looks like it's John Powell, number 6. Brother Steve in third place, the men from Kent. We're missing a couple of trucks at the back. Tony Smith, number 45, started at the back of Division 1. We're supposed to start from uh, pole position. There is Martin Gibson, number 11. Just a point behind uh, David Jenkins coming into this weekend. Running wide onto the grass there, coming out of, um, where's that, Brooklyn's corner is Tony Smith, number 45. Coming round towards the end of the first lap then at uh, Honda Corner, it will be uh, Tom O'Rourke, number 86, who has the lead. 81, Mark Taylor second, it's John Newell, number 18, in third place. Stuart Oliver in the number 7, Volvo there, is in fourth. And then we've got 69 of David Jenkins into Hatchet's Hairpin for the second time there's Ryan Smith number one the Mercedes Actros demoted to second in yesterday's second race he won the first race yesterday but uh, a penalty in yesterday's race dropping in one place behind Martin Gibson Martin Gibson had problems in qualifying at the uh, start of yesterday's uh, meeting had uh, a brake disc go bang on him in qualifying had to start from the back of the division one grid for the first race Fine sight they make in the morning sun here in South Wales. Three MANs, first, second and third. O'Rourke, Taylor and Newell. Then Stuart Oliver in fourth. David Jenkins is fifth. Then Ryan Smith. And behind them, Martin Gibson and Tony Smith. No relation to Ryan, incidentally. Tony's son, Bradley, not out there in this one. What's happened to Craig Reid, the Division 2 Championship leader? Double winner yesterday. I can't see him there in... Um, Division 2, we seem to have lost him somewhere around the lap. So we'll look out for where Craig Reed has gone. He didn't come through at the end of the first lap, so uh, that could be Craig Reed's first defeat in a while. David Jenkins has lost a couple of places in truck number 69. Division 2 is led by John Powell in the blue and white at DAF, ahead of the 32 of Jock Borthwick. Stephen Powell is third. Ah, Craig Reed is there in truck 68 uh, for some reason his transponder isn't working Jock Borthwick holds off Stephen Powell yeah there's Craig Reed. he's fourth in division two hasn't uh, shown up on the timing for some reason apologies for the confusion there as uh, Ryan Smith into the side of Stuart Oliver and off goes the number seven that was at uh, Senna corner coming uh, out onto the back of the circuit there. Stuart Oliver gets shoved out wide and he goes off onto the grass. He's down in among the Division 2 runners now. Well, Ryan Smith, number one in the Mercedes. Uh, maybe uh, a bit fired up after that penalty he got yesterday. We know he's an aggressive driver, Ryan Smith, the five-time Division 1 champion, trying to match Stuart Oliver's uh, record of ten Division 1 titles. Ryan Smith, here he comes. He's attacking John Newell now, number 18. Newell moves to cover into the hairpin. Here comes David Jenkins as well. I thought David Jenkins wasn't going to get the truck stopped there. Well, he's using Martin Gibson as a brake there through the hairpin. Oh, it's all kicking off in the uh, midfield in Division 1. Goodness me. Martin Gibson running wide there. A bit of steam coming off the brakes, these water-cooled brakes, these uh, race trucks. Still your leaders are Tom O'Rourke and... Uh, Mark Taylor, John Newell still there in third, Stuart Oliver has uh, stayed ahead of the Division 2 pack, there's Craig Reed up into third place now, for some reason his transponder didn't work on the first lap, so he's showing us uh, in last place, but he is there, Craig Reed, the current uh, points leader in Division 2, looking for his first championship this year, he won all five races in the category at uh, Snetterson last time out. There's Martin Gibson. Looks like he's escaped without uh, any damage following uh, a bit of a wallop from David Jenkins going into the hairpin last time through. It's still Tom O'Rourke from Scotland, number 86 in the MV Commercial MAN that leads the way. 81, Mark Taylor in the Taylor's Haulage MAN in second. Ryan Smith is now up to third. He's got ahead of John Newell in the uh, 
number 18. Bit of damage to the back of uh, his truck there caused by that impact with uh, Stuart Oliver, I would wager, earlier on. Then we've got David Jenkins, number 69, another former champion, as Mark Taylor attacks for the lead as they go through the crossing. He goes through. So Mark Taylor is your new leader. Out of the crossing, then up towards Senna. Edson Senna at one stage was the uh, outright lap record holder, and Smith does it again. Forces his way past uh, Tom O'Rourke. He's not hanging about, is he, Ryan Smith? And nor's John Newell. Look at the 18 up the inside there. Tom O'Rourke's been attacked from every side. David Jenkins is going to go through now as well. So Mark Taylor leads it, but for how long? Because Ryan Smith is now right behind him in the uh, number one. But a very um, robust run through the field, shall we say, for the Mercedes pilots. Last five uh, seasons, he's won the Division One Championship. He was in MANs then, in the Mercedes now, and he's down the inside into the hairpin. He's going to take the lead from Mark Taylor. Up the inside, attach its hairpin, and Ryan Smith into the lead. Side by side, almost for third now. John Newell and David Jenkins. Swing their way through at the left-hander at Debeni, and it's up towards the crossing between the two paddocks here at Pembroke. Then out towards Senna, Brooklands. Speedway straight, Carters, Honda and the end of the lap. There's the leader in uh, Division 2, that is John Powell. Eight minutes of this race still to go then. Yeah, Craig Reed's transponder isn't working properly. He's showing his two laps down, but he is there in third on uh, second on track. Now, in fact, in Division Two, he's got past Jock Borthwick. Stuart Oliver on his recovery drive, chasing down Tom O'Rourke. He's got past uh, Tony Smith there, number 45. Uh, we don't have Bradley Smith out in this race. Tony's son problems with his truck out following an accident yesterday. Paul McComsky didn't uh, take the start in this one either. Stuart Oliver has a look on the inside down into the hairpin Tom O'Rourke holds him off just over seven minutes to go okay Craig Reed has now appeared in second place he's been corrected by the timekeepers so sorry for the confusion there early on Ryan Smith leads looking for his third win on track this weekend of course got that penalty yesterday was penalised one place Powell is being caught now by Craig Reed, the man from Stoke in the Iveco Stralis. There's Stephen Powell ahead of Adam Bintz. Adam third place in the first race for Division 2 yesterday. Missed the second race with uh, some problems with his steering that didn't quite get repaired in time. There's the two GT tyres trucks of Gibson and Oliver. Stuart Oliver now back up into uh, seventh place. Stephen Powell under fire from Adam Bint in the Volvo White. Running on HVO fuel. And it's more environmentally friendly and economical. It's uh, certainly improved Adam's uh, performance over the last couple of meetings. That's the battle for fourth in Division 2. Here's the battle for the lead in Division 2 because the Evico of Craig Reed is all over John Powell looking for his first win of the season. John Powell, he did take a win at Snetterton earlier this year but then was penalised for jumping the start come off the hairpin down towards the right at Spitfires then the left at Debeni the lead gap is up to just over two seconds Ryan Smith ahead of Mark Taylor and it's Newell, Jenkins Gibson, Oliver O'Rourke and Tony Smith so Tom O'Rourke has dropped down to seventh having led early on in his first race of three today for the British Truck Racing Championship the main focus is the battle for the lead in Division 2 the DAF LF of John Powell, the man from Kent, under attack from the Reed Freights, Iveco of Craig Reed. The other Iveco of uh, Simon Faulkner, our novice, running at the back of the field. He's a Division 1 truck, of course, just learning his craft, his first ever weekend of truck racing. Still John Powell hanging on to the lead in Division 2. Five minutes to go. Reed gap has increased by another couple of tenths. Ryan Smith from Mark Taylor. 
Taylor going well up there in second. It's 1.3 seconds ahead of John Newell. David Jenkins, who led the championship coming into this weekend, is in fourth place. He was only a point ahead of uh, Martin Gibson as a bit of a slide there for John Powell. Here's the battle for second place. John Newell has uh, caught Mark Taylor now and David Jenkins in the black MAN there closing up as well. A little bit of damage on the front of the 69 truck because he clipped Martin Gibson at the hairpin earlier on. There is Gibson behind him. Then Stuart Holland. There goes Ryan Smith still with the lead in the number one. closing stages are beginning to now on this first truck race of the day. Down to the hairpin, Mark Taylor under fire for second place. David Jenkins shadowing John Newell who's got to attack and defend at the same time here, the Yorkshireman. And, oh, we've uh, got a truck stopped uh, coming out of Debeni there. That is uh, Adam Bintz. He's come to a halt as uh, Stuart Oliver tries to attack. And, in fact, we've got red flags. The red flag is out. The race, uh, I think, is being stopped. That's because we've got a stranded truck coming out of Debeni into the crossing. So the uh, race is being stopped with Adam Bint stopped there. OK, so I imagine with uh, about three and a half minutes remaining, that will be result declared. Well, there is Adam Bint, the Oxfordshire driver, has come to a stop on the edge of the circuit. Gets out of the truck to uh, inspect what has gone wrong. Some sort of mechanical failure. He had steering trouble yesterday with the Volvo. He stopped right on the edge of the circuit there. That's coming out of the left at Dibeni, up towards the crossing. So it's on the edge of the circuit. A dangerous position there. So the red flag has come out. The race has been halted. And I have a feeling with three and a half minutes left of the 15, that will be a declared result, which will be a win provisionally for Ryan Smith, ahead of Mark Taylor and John Newell. And that would also mean that John Powell would get his first win of the season in Division 2. So we're just awaiting confirmation. Yes, chequered flag is shown on the timing screen, so I imagine that will be a result declared. We're just going to wait and see. The trucks are making their way up to the green. Yes, the chequered flag is being shown, so it looks like the result will be declared. That's a win for Ryan Smith second win of the weekend for him. Third time he's uh, come home in first place. So, as we say, got that penalty in race two yesterday. And that means number six, John Powell, is going to take uh, division two because he'd stayed ahead of Craig Reed. So congratulations, John Powell. That's his first win of the season. First time Craig Reed's been beaten, I think, since Sir uh, Donington earlier this year. Jock Borthwick takes third in Division 2. We'll confirm uh, what's the provisional results when we can. So all 15 uh, trucks, 14 of the 15 trucks who started making it home. Bad luck to Adam Bint. He won't be classified because it's him that uh, brought out the red flag. There is John Powell, your Division 2 winner provisionally. We'll get the results when we can. OK, provisional uh, results as follows then. Ryan Smith, the winner by two and a half seconds ahead of Mark Taylor his MAN. Three more MANs next home. John Newell, David Jenkins and Martin Gibson. Stuart Oliver, despite uh, being forced onto the grass midway through, takes sixth place ahead of, jo of uh, Tom O'Rourke and Tony Smith completing the top eights. Then we've got the Division 2 runners. John Powell, the winner just ahead of Craig Reed by less than half a second. Jock Borthwick, the Scotsman in third ahead of Stephen Powell. Then uh, Adam Bint uh, shown there in 
fifth place. He won't be classified, though, because he caused the red flag. Then Craig Evans and Simon Faulkner, our newcomer in Division 1. Okay, the truck's heading back into the paddock then, so that's end of race. Hopefully Pointy is going to be down there to hear from uh, our division winners. And then we will move on a little later on to our next race. That is scheduled to come up at about 10.55. Next race, which is the final race of the year for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. But uh, hope you enjoyed the trucks there. One of our comments on YouTube says, I can remember watching truck racing at Brands Hatch in early 1985 and some of the racers were dropping off loaded trailers in the paddock before racing. Yep, truck racing started in the mid-1980s in Britain and it was literally trucks that would uh, arrive on the road, leave their trailers in the paddock, go out and race and then get back on the road to wherever they were going. Imagine that nowadays. Most of the drivers are uh, connected with the road haulage industry. OK, so I think uh, down in Park Ferme, we are now ready to, ha ready to hand over to Pointy, who's ready to talk to uh, some of the drivers. So Pointy, over to you. Right, here we are in Park Ferme after race one of Sunday here at Pembury. Let's get a couple of drivers to talk to. Uh, Mark, Ryan, can I borrow you for a second, please? Mark, oh, come, come over, come over, come over. Well, congratulations, gentlemen. First of all, let's, let's speak to Ryan Smith. Uh, fantastic effort, starting from very far back, and uh, a sterling effort and first place finish. Enjoyed it. Track's still cold, so I new tyres would take a little longer to come in came in but honestly I want to talk about Mark he had a torrid day yesterday and to do what he's just done in that race full credit to the old team well done for him for not giving up but no great start to the day kind words from uh, competitor Ryan Smith there Mark how do you feel about getting that result this morning it's brought a uh, new weekend on now we've had a uh, bad week start to the weekend we've had broken springs broken discs uh, brake chambers and the truck won't going right Ryan come round helped us gave us some good advice and everything with it and we've just gone out on form this morning and come and it's all come good together. Well, it looked like a relatively clean race for everybody involved. Uh, certainly great to watch for the spectators. Lots of great driving. Uh, what, what saw the gap past uh, Tom O'Rourke earlier on? I'm just seeing a gap and you've got to go for it. <laughs> to be fair, the, the, Tom and Mark were racing fair. I was watching it for a while and they were showing each other the room, going round corners together. So, you know what, for spectators and the championship, it were a great, fantastic start. It does look fantastic. Well, well, well done to both of you. Before I lose you both, there's a question I've got to ask you. We've been going around the paddock about what biscuits best describe your driving style. Uh, Dave Jenkins was a chocolate hobnob. Uh, Martin Gibson, a party ring. What, what would, would you say you are? Jaffa cakes, I'm half moon. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And Mark, what are you saying? I'm waiting for Jammy Dodger because everything's jamming together now. Oh, this is brilliant. We've got two originals here. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, lots of laughter down here in Park Ferme to finish off race one here on Sunday. Uh, let's go back to the studio to speak with Dave. Thanks, Pointy. He still hasn't told us what his favourite biscuit is. Said mine yesterday Golden Crunch Creams for me. Well, I hope you enjoyed um, the uh, first race of the day there. We'll be back in action a little later on with our next race of the day. 10.55, the scheduled start for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. Two more truck races coming up over the course of the day. And we've got the junior saloon cars as well. Drivers age 14 to 16. And identical Citroen Saxo VTRs. Training ground for saloon car stars of the future. A lot of drivers making the move up from karting and from junior short oval racing in there. They were very good indeed yesterday. Two more races to come for them. While we have a chance, we'd like to wish a very happy birthday to Gemma Dixon, who's one of our regular viewers of VARC TV. Many happy returns to you, Gemma. Hope you're enjoying the action today. And uh, also very happy birthday to the voice of motorsport Murray Walker who would have been 98 years young today happy birthday Murray we all miss you well uh, we're going to take a break in the meantime and we'll show you I think some highlights from uh, yesterday's action here at Pembrey Circuit on BARC 
CV. We'll be back with you a little later on with our next race for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club. We'll join you a bit later. Number 66, Will Sharp in his MGZR will be on pole. Alongside uh, the man we just heard from, Simon Kendrick, the first of the MGFs in number 42. Second row, a pair of MGFs, 53 Mark Baker and number 5 Stuart Plotnick. The third row, the ZRs of number 30 Andrew Robinson and number 12 Nick Golhart, real veteran of this championship is Nick. Row 4, we've got the first of the classic cars, the MGBs. We were going to have an MG Midget as well, but that's not here. So just three MGBs in the Classic Division, Class A. David Amflit, number 14, and Malcolm Hill, number 7. And then we've got number 11, Chris Millard, and the only Class B car, which is Anthony Bates, number 70, in his MG Maestro. Four classes. Uh, class A, A for Abingdon, where the original MGs were built. That's MGBs and Midgets. Class B is for MG Maestros, just the one of those here this weekend. Class F for MGFs, as the name suggests, and Class Z for the ZRs. Now, Will Sharp was originally going to be racing his MG Midget in the Classic Division this weekend. It wasn't ready in time, so he's brought the ZR that's won a few races already this year. As uh, explained in the interviews there, a few cars suffered mechanical problems over the last couple of meetings at Silverstone and Snetterton, so I've elected to uh, end their season early. Snetterton, Paul Wisby in his MGF uh, suffered engine problems. Uh, Adrian Olsen blew his engine as well in his ZR, so he's not out. And another reason is that uh, the championship is already wrapped up by a driver who's sitting this weekend out. Uh, congratulations to Steve McDermott, the uh, ZR class champion. He's the overall champion as well. He's already sealed that at Snetterton, so well done to him. Uh, David Amflit has already won the Classic uh, Class A Championship. He's well clear of Chris Pollard in their points. Chris Pollard not here this weekend. Class B has been won by Anthony Bates in the Maestro. And Class F has been won by Mark Baker. So they've all won their respective points championships in their classes. So racing just for fun this weekend. Will Sharp will be the man to beat in his ZR. And we're going to wait to see if the MGFs can beat him overall. It's been um, ZR's taking all the overall wins uh, this year. The majority of them have gone to Steve McDermott. Uh, Will Sharp has taken uh, a couple of wins this year and there's been a couple of wins for Fergus Campbell who's not here this weekend either. So we await the uh, cars to come out then and we're going to show you here that you don't necessarily need a very big grid of cars for a good race. They are a very close, very entertaining championship, the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. We must uh, send best wishes to Jim Bainham as well, the uh, longest serving driver. And right here we are, they're halfway between the pit lane and Park Fermi on a little bit of tarmac, but we are with Charlie Handy right Championship. That is Pembrey Circuit's own car, so a nice coincidence there. Simon Kendrick in the Tiger, second on the grid. And there's Sir Stuart Plotnick. Well, they were going to, they did say it was a zebra or a stripy donkey. I think that's uh, doing the car a bit of a disservice. I thought it was a white tiger. 
Well, such things, of course, if you've been to safari parks around the UK. Mark Baker, the blue number 53 there. He's already secured Class F Championship. David Amflit in the black MGB Roadster is Class A Champion. Keep an eye on Nick Golhart. Been racing for many, many years. Used to race a maestro in this championship in the days when uh, we had full grids of maestros. Green flag is waved at the back of the grid then. This will be a 20 minute race. I think we get a green flag lap first of all. Are we missing a car? I don't think Malcolm Hill's there. He should be behind Nick Gollar. I can't see him there. No, there's a gap on the grid, so we're missing uh, Malcolm Hill, number seven, with his MGB, the Gloucestershire driver. So, lost one car already. So MG's young and old on this grid then. I suppose the question will be... Can the MGFs beat Will Sharp in the ZR? He'll start as the favourite. Green flag waves then. We're off on our warm-up lap. This is one championship where you can uh, tell, just by looking at each car, which class it's in. Because it's all... Um, based on the age of the car. What class are you racing? There's Andy Robinson's ZR, the yellow machine, number 30. Nick Golhar, number 12. And there's Anthony Bate at the back in that rare MG Maestro. His only class rival this year has been Alan Forster. He's been out for a few rounds in his Maestro as well. But it's Will Sharp who leads them round. Third in the points in class Z this year behind Steve McDermott and the uh, Ever consistent Phil Walker, who's not out uh, this weekend. Young Jack Woodcock, a newcomer to the championship, fourth in that division. Nick Golhar, fifth in the uh, ZR category this year, ahead of Fergus Campbell. Fergus only contested a couple of meetings, he did have a couple of wins. Behind them, Adrian Olsen, he's one of Fergus Campbell's old rivals. They used to race uh, Mice Rose as well. Andy Robinson down in ninth in the ZR points. Former class champion David Mello, we saw appear in the early part of the season. When was the last time you saw an MG Maestro? A collector's items these days, you know, among uh, British Leyland fans. So nine cars out there for the first of two races this weekend for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. Final meeting of the season for them. This will be a 20 minute race. It is number 66, Will Sharp, in pole position with his ZR, followed by a trio of MGX. Number 42, the orange car, Simon Kendrick, Mark Baker on the inside of the second row, number 53 in the blue car, and the white livery, number 5 of Stuart Plotnick. Leader of Class A is the champion in Class A, David Amflitz. Ahead of Chris Millard, the two MGB Roadsters. At the back of the grid, number 70, Anthony Bate, the Class B champion in the Maestro. The overall championship already sealed by Steve McDermott in his ZR. He sits this round out. Green flag waves at the back of the grid. This will be a 20-minute race for our field of MGs here at Pembrey. The Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship is go. And down towards Hatchet's Hairpin for the first time. A good start by the two front row men. Will Sharp in the ZR on the inside. Tacking around the outside is Simon Kendrick. It will be the ZR, the wayside adhesive sponsored car that leads into Hatchet. Second place is Simon Kendrick. Mark Baker in third position. And a poor start there by uh, Nick Gollar. He's dropped to the back of the field in the number 12. Chris Millard in the number 11 getting through there. Gollar holding off Anthony Bates in the Maestro. They start to sort themselves out around this opening lap. Then it is Will Sharp who leads the way. Mark Baker making a move, coming out of the crossing there. He's up into second place. The uh, MGF 
world-class champion in number 53. Now, the MGFs would love to try and take an overall win here. Every race this year has been won outright by a ZR category car. They're going to try and topple Will Sharp in the ZR there at the front of the field. Andy Robinson's ZR is fifth in behind the three MGFs. And sixth behind him, we've got the first of the Class A runners, which is David Amplitz. MGB Roadster. He's already sealed the Class A for Abingdon title this year. So they come round to complete the opening lap then. Will Sharp in the ZR leads the way. Looking for his third race win of the season. Over the line they go. He leads by half a second at the end of the opening lap from Baker, Kendrick and Plotnick, the three MGFs. Then Andy Robinson, David Amplitz, Chris Miller. Big lock up there from David Amflet. Stuart Plotnick did that, attached its hairpin in qualifying and ended up going off onto the grass. There's Chris Millard behind him, Nick Goha and Anthony Bates round out the field. There we can see the uh, classification by class on the right of your screen. The uh, Class Z cars in pink, Class F in blue, Class A in white and Class B in yellow. These cars ran uh, combined in qualifying with the uh, Max 5 series for Mazdas. Mark Baker is not hanging about here. Closing up there into Brooklyn's on Will Sharp, going with the leader. He's dropped Simon Kendrick in third place. Plotnick still fourth. As they start to sort themselves out then. Well, I thought we would perhaps see Will Sharp run away with this in the quickest of these ZRs, but the MGF's not letting him get away. Through Honda Curve for the second time. The reason classes A and B, classes MGOC there, is because of them being combined with another series in qualifying. To avoid clashes between classes A and B in that series. Simon Kendrick in third in the Flying Tiger. As we heard it was his uh, young son who designed that uh, Tiger livery. So Stuart Plotnick, his teammates, took the White Tiger, or perhaps it's a Zebra, in uh, the number five car there. Stuart Plotnick has also raced... Uh, in Maestro's. He's had to go in the Lotus Elise, if I remember rightly, as well. Doesn't like his uh, lightweight sports cars. Robinson dropping back into fifth. And then uh, there's been a bit of a change further back there. Nick Gollar has got ahead of one of the MGBs. I think that's Chris Millard. Mark Baker still on the tail of uh, Will Sharp. It looks as though the MGF's uh, slightly stronger on the twistier sections of Pembroke. Mark Baker trying to make a move for the lead on Will Sharp. He's got a good run here on the inside, coming out of Brooklyn's corner, the run down speedway straight. They're side by side there. Baker will have the inside for Carter's curve. He's going to try and take the lead. Sharp giving him room. They're absolutely side by side. Coming towards Honda. Can Sharp hang on in the slightly more powerful ZR? They are absolutely together. And Sharp does pull ahead on the run out of Honda into the straight. So using the power of the ZR to stay ahead. That proves that, uh, as we said earlier, you don't need a big grid of cars for a good race here at Pembroke. Will Sharp, and here comes Simon Kendrick up the outside. Where did he come from? Well, he's just done the fastest lap of the race. That's why he's closed in. 117.506. Quicker, only slightly quicker than those ahead of him on that lap. Less than a second covers the first three now. And Stuart Plotnick has closed up there as well. So it could be four for the lead shortly. Andy Robinson in the yellow ZR there watching on. Then in sixth position there is David Amflitz. Nick Gollar is up to seventh now in his ZR ahead of Chris Millard. Anthony Bate in the Maestro rounds out the field. The field covered by 14 seconds at the end of the third lap. Here they come then, round towards Brooklyn's. This is where the MGF is slightly stronger through this uh, slightly twistier section of the tricky Pembrey circuit. Can he get a run on Will Sharp this time? Marshall's watching on from in with interest in their post there. They're loving this. Carters up towards Honda. Sharp from Baker. And Mark Baker's already won the MGF class points title this season. Simon Kendrick went sideways over the curb there. As Baker scored 111 points from the rest of the season. Simon Kendrick got 73. They do have to drop their two worst scores at the end of the season. And Simon Kendrick did not uh, score points at Snetterton, so he's got two zeros to drop. But the title is already sealed in Mark Baker's favour, even before drop scores are taken into account. It's all done and dusted where points are concerned. This is uh, really just for fun for these drivers. 
we said Steve McDermott, the ZR Class Champion, confirmed also as the overall champion this year. There's David Amflit leading Class A in his beautiful little MGB. It's ahead of Nick Golhar. Made a slow start in his ZR. He's not had the best of seasons, Nick Golhar. We've also seen Jag Golhar race in uh, this series uh, over the years as uh, Amflit a bit sideways there. Another member of that team raced in a diesel-powered MGZS saloon in the um, Invitation class. I'm trying to remember his name. Harjit the Bamber, I think that name was. Race the ZS. We've even seen a few Montegos in this series over the years. That's a Honda curve come the leaders. What's the gap going to be this time? What's 0.6 of a second? It's 0.8 of a second now between Will Sharp and... Mark Baker. Sharp comes from Radcliffe on Trent in Nottinghamshire. Mark Baker from Ipswich in Suffolk. Simon Kendrick closing up now. The number 42 comes from Beckenham in Kent. Still plot next, still fourth. They've gone clear by some five seconds. And Andy Robinson, the yellow number 30. Looking for his best overall finish of the year so far. Well, there's our Class B runner. Anthony Bates in the Maestro. A much maligned car in their uh, heyday, the Maestro, but now very much uh, sought after by collectors. Here comes Mark Baker. Not close enough to launch an attack again on Will Sharp. But ahead of this race, I thought Will Sharp was going to clear off in front of this, but the MGF's very much keeping him honest. Stuart Plotneck in front. Robinson. Here comes Nick Gola catching David Amflit. Bates catching Chris Millard as well. Robinson, number 30. Second of the ZRs comes from Woking in Surrey. Chris Millard about to, and uh, David Amflit rather about to be taken by Nick Gola. Here he comes using the power of the ZR. Down the inside, he's recovered from his slow start now. ZR goes through into Hatchet's hairpin. Still 11 and a half minutes of this race to go. So we're coming up towards half distance. David Amflip from Whitney in Oxfordshire has already secured the Class A title, as we mentioned. Now it's three, line astern for the lead. Now this time, Mark Baker might have a chance if he's brave into Brooklands. Here we go. Moves across one way to the other. He's got the inside, and Will Sharp's going to have to give him room. Mark Baker at the inside. He goes through, takes the lead. Good bit of driving by Mark Baker. Now we've got a race on our hands. Baker's been trying that since the very first lap. He'd already he'd done the fastest lap of the race on that previous lap. Sharp back down the inside. They're side by side. Oh, that was close. Through Carters up towards Honda. Who's going to come out of this with the lead then? It is Sharp who's got it back again. He got the inside through Carters and Honda. And puts the ZR back into the lead. What's Mark Baker going to try this time? They're loving it, these two going to go to the outside. He won't get the inside line away for Hatchet's hairpin. Where is he going to try and make a move? Probably over on the back of the circuit again, but he might not get the chance because here comes Simon Kendrick. Of course, that's he's going through at uh, Spitfires there. He's through into second and into the lead of the class. So Mark Baker's gone from second to first, then probably back to third. Fantastic racing here from the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club. Here comes... Stuart Plotneck in the white car as well. Will Sharp's been able to get away a little bit as a result of that. Simon Kendrick now leads the MGF class. Can he catch Will Sharp? Will Sharp, who's raced a variety of MGs over the years. He's raced Porsches as well in the past. Raced in the uh, Porsche Boxsters and 924s with his brother Henry. Here they come. Through Carters. Simon Kendrick now in second. Tiger his way past Mark Baker. Baker on the brakes there, trying to get the tighter line. He's going to try and attack into Hatchet's hairpin, I would think, but all the time they're battling. They're letting Will Sharp get away. But be mindful that Stuart Plotneck is there as well. Kendrick holds the inside line. He'll keep second place, but Baker is going to try and shuffle him as they come towards the crossing, I think. Out of Hatchets, up towards the right at Spitfires and the left at Debeni. Mark 
Baker, the blue car with the two white stripes. Some remarks they looked uh, similar to a Dodge Viper, that car, with that livery, number 53. No V10 under the bonnet of the MGF, though. It's all over the back of Simon Kendrick now. He's having to defend here, Kendrick. Baker's going to try again. This is where he's stronger, dodging about there on the uh, bumper of Simon Kendrick and you can see how Will Sharp's been able to get away. He's saying, well if you're all going to squabble amongst yourselves, I'm going to get my foot down and clear off into the lead. He wants his third win of the season. As you say, Steve McDermott and Fergus Campbell have done the rest of the outright winning this year. Plotnet gets a tighter exit there from Honda Curve. He could take third place here and move into the overall podium placings. Great fight between the MGFs. Plotnick's going to have the inside line here. Mark Baker's going to have to see it to him. Or is he? He's going to be later on the brakes. He's not going to see it to him. You're not getting past me, says to Stuart Plotnick. And he doesn't want to overrun. He, oh, he has overrun on the exit of Hatch. It's over the grass, goes Mark Baker. And Plotnick is through. I thought he was being a bit ambitious there, Mark Baker. Just too late on the brakes, going into the hairpin. Now they've started to spread out as a result of all, a result of all that. Sharp leads from Kendrick by 2.3 seconds. Stuart Plotnick up into third from Mark Baker. Runs a bit deep there through the uh, first part of the centre S. Then a gap back to Andy Robinson, who's over 10 seconds further back now in his ZR in fifth position. But they have put on a superb race here. There may be only 10 cars here, and uh, of course one of them sadly failed to start. I don't know what's happened to Malcolm Hill in the MGB GT, the fastback version, as opposed to the Roadsters. Hopefully we'll see that out for tomorrow's race. What can Mark Baker do here? The MGF class champion. There's our B-class champion, Anthony Bates, in the Maestro. Still not letting Chris uh, Millard get away here. They're only a couple of seconds apart in 8th and 9th. I've only seen one of the Maestro appear this year. I think the Gollar family still own one of their Maestros that they used to race as well. It'd be nice to see that out again. One of the famous names to have raced in the days of the Maestros in the 1990s was Jim Edwards Jr. Went on to become a British touring car driver briefly, of course, in the days of the production class. Raced at Honda Accord, if I remember rightly. Is the number 11 that is Chris Millard from Maidenhead in Berkshire fourth in the points in class A this year behind David Amflick, Chris Pollard and Jim Bainham as Stuart Plotnick makes a tighter line there he could go for second here are the teammates going to be uh, able to fight it out for second overall and the win in the MGF category Mark Baker as we said has done the majority of the winning this year Stuart Plotnick did have a class win at Castle Coombe in Wiltshire earlier this year. Simon Kendrick had a couple of wins at Thruxton. Every other, every other race has been won by Mark Baker in the MGF class. You normally have Paul Wisby's red MGF battling with them, but that uh, suffered engine trouble in the previous round. Snetterton so wasn't able to be here this weekend as Plotnick has a look up the inside, right up on the kerb there. Very tight into the hairpin. He went off there in qualifying, he locked up the brakes and slid into, slid into the grass. Stuart Plotnick, so he needs to be careful here. Still holding that third place. Of course, in the late 1990s, there was uh, a one-make series for more sta for standard MGFs, the MGF Cup. The likes of um, Dave Loudon, Jamie Hunter, among others, uh, a couple of names I remember from that series. I have to I'd have to consult my collection of autosport magazines to try and remember who else raced in that. Mark Baker going to the outside here into Brooklands this time. GF Cup rose to the uh, standard of supporting the British GT Championship for a time. There they go. Still there in second. One of our commenters pointing out that that maestro 
was previously raced by Ben Short, who went on to race successfully in uh, Mazda MX-5s and in historic racing as well. So Ben Short, another well-known name to have raced the MG Maestros. It's uh, the car now being raced by Anthony Bates. And thanks for a bit of uh, background info coming in. It is appreciated when I get a chance to take a look at the comments. There is David Amflit, still leading Class A. Three and a half minutes on the clock. David Amflit up there in sixth overall. I think that might be one of the best finishes for a, a classic MG this year. Overall in this championship. Nick Gowar has now got the MG ZR away ahead of him by some four and a half seconds. So uh, Gowar recovering from his poor start to pass the classics. Andy Robinson's dropped back as well. Has he got a problem I wondered where Andy had gone, and uh, Nick Gollar up there in fifth. He's down to seven. What was his last lap time, uh, Andy Robinson? A 1.23, the slowest of all on the last lap. So I reckon Andy Robinson's got a problem. Keep an eye on that yellow ZR if we can. Three minutes to go. Just over six minutes of the race. Just over six seconds in it, I should say. Sorry, in it for the lead. There's Andy Robinson. Yeah, that car does not look too well to me. Yeah, he's lost out to uh, Anthony Bates there as well, and Chris Millard's got through. Well, I think Andy Robinson's heading for the pits this time. David Amflick continues to lead Class A. Let's wait to see if Andy Robinson does pull into the pits this time. Here's the battle for second. The three MGFs still line astern. Mark Baker... This is where he's stronger through the twisty bits, even the stronger than his fellow MGFs. He's still got the fastest lap of the race, 116.858. Anthony Bates still going, ah, oh, Andy Robinson does head into the pits, I thought he had a problem. That's the end of his race. And there goes third in the uh, ZR category as well. Chris Millard continues ahead of Anthony Bates, who's now eighth overall. There is Robinson, and he's heading into the pack. Hopefully we'll see him back out tomorrow. Hopefully we'll see, uh, as we mentioned, Malcolm Hill race tomorrow as well. Here comes Mark Baker. Here comes Plotnick again, having a look on the inside. They're all over each other, these three. Almost red, white and blue, isn't it? It's quite patriotic for MGs. Orange, white and blue, of course. Will Sharp now leads by over six seconds. He's got this race in the bag because mainly because everybody else too busy squabbling behind him. Baker up the inside, attacking Plotneck as they come towards the new Clubman Circuit loop there. That's the bit that the trucks don't use. This is good driving by Mark Baker. He's frustrated in there until he's harrying Stuart Plotnick. He wants a podium. Simon Kendrick looking for his third class win of the season. The MGF category had a double win at Silverstone recently and now Baker to the inside of Plotnick out of Brooklands. He's surely going to get there this time as meanwhile round to start his final lap we call a glimpse of Will Sharp. Baker's through. He's got ahead there in towards Honda so Baker up into third place. There is Will Sharp. He did break away as the race went on but only because those behind him were scrapping so hard. Mark Baker, having briefly led the race overall, now down in what was fourth place. Let's see where he comes to. I think he is uh, able to hold third now. It's the wayside adhesives car of Will Sharp heading for victory. Simon Kendrick is going to win the MGF category, and it is Baker holding third. Still with the fastest lap, 116.858, the blue car. He's spoiled the symmetry now, hasn't he? Red, white and blue. He might get second place in a little bit of luck. We checkered flag at this time for Will Sharp. There he is heading up speedway straight in the background. It's going to be a win for the ZR. this give him pole position for tomorrow's race so no, it's on second fastest qualifying time so we'll wait and see on that so Will Sharp is coming in to take the win here he comes out of the final corner checkered flag for Will Sharp waves as he crosses the line to take the victory 
Class F and second place is going to go to Simon Kendrick, Mark Baker a determined effort, he takes third and Stuart Plotnick fourth and third in class. Well done to the MGFs, they put on an excellent display there. Waiting for fifth place to come in, it should be Nick Gollar next home in his Z up. And class A will be won by David Amflit. In sixth place there is Gollar, recovered from a poor start to take fifth position and second in the ZR class for the demise of Andy Robinson. David Amflit wins class A in his MGB Roadster, he's already sealed the title there. And the other finishers will be Chris Millard and Anthony Bates as we saw we lost Andy Robinson into the paddock. the final two, Millard ahead of Bates, Bates the winner of Class B. Nice message on the front of the Maestro there, thank you for marshalling. Still got the original sticker there, I noticed BS Motorsports, Ben Short, as we mentioned earlier. Here's your results uh, confirmed then. Will Sharp the winner by just over seven seconds ahead of Simon Kendrick who wins Class F. 1.6 seconds covered the three MGFs. Mark Baker third, Stuart Plotnick fourth overall. Fifth position went to Nick Golhar, the second ZR home. David Amflit the winner of Class A in sixth position. Some 17 seconds ahead of Chris Millard and Anthony Bate the final finisher wins Class B. We lost Andy Robinson into the paddock a couple of laps from home. Malcolm Hill was a non-starter. Okay, good to see uh, the MGs from yesterday there, and that's what we're going to see on track next. Second race of the weekend, the final race of the season for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship, catering as we saw for MGs of all ages. The championship is already sewn up, favour of Steve McDermott with his ZR. He's not out this weekend after uh, sealing the championship in the last round at Snetterton, electing to sit out this weekend. All the other classes sewn up. Mark Baker, number 53, has won Class F for the MGFs, ahead of Simon Kendrick and Stuart Plotnick. Simon winning the class for the third time. Th three wins for him this year yesterday. Anthony Bates uh, winning the class uh, for the Maestros, Class B, and Class A for the Classic Machines, the MGBs and Midgets, won by David Amflit. Shortly be getting back underway, just a bit of sweeping up to be done by the Marshals after uh, some uh, interim track action there. Oh, there's what's happened, oh dear. That is Neil Tressler's pickup truck, that's certainly gone wallop straight in. That's the end of his weekend. Now where's that happened? That's down at Brooklyn's corner, I think. Yeah, you can see the tyre marks there. He's got caught up coming through the corner and spun off into the into the tyres. Okay, so that's why we've got uh, a short delay here. So one of the pickup truck racers here this weekend has taken a wallop there. It is at Brooklyn's. A couple of safety cars during that uh, pickup truck race, I can tell you, where we had uh, one truck go into the barriers at the crossing as well. So we're awaiting the uh, MGs shortly then. We should hopefully see 10 cars out for our next race. It will be a 20 minute race, but there is going to be a, a short pause obviously while that pickup is recovered. Full credit uh, to our volunteer marshals as always, the Orange Army, couldn't go racing without them. And um, our recovery teams as well, they'll be needed up there at the far end of the circuit. The medic medical staff there as well, you can see just checking that uh, number 37 Neil Tressler is okay. Those of you querying at the pickup trucks, uh, not part of our coverage this weekend. So apologies to uh, anyone tuning in hoping to uh, see the pickups. Yeah. 
Still beautiful conditions here at uh, Pembrey Circuit today. As we say, we'll have two more truck races to come later on. A warm welcome if you are just joining us here on BARC TV from uh, Pembrey. We had uh, first truck race of the day this morning. Ryan Smith coming through to take the win. Oh, a bit of a fly past. There is an airfield uh, very close to Pembrey Circuit. So Pembrey is built on an old airfield. Hence the name Spitfire for one of the corners. We had the Welsh Red Arrows practising yesterday. As we were saying, Ryan Smith was the winner of uh, our truck race this morning. His second win of the weekend, trying to get his season back on track. And a welcome first win of the season in Division 2 for John Powell, holding off the championship leader, Craig Reed. But the championships won in the MG, so we've got a slightly smaller than usual entry for them because uh, all the points titles wrapped up. And as we mentioned yesterday, one... Uh, driver who's not out this weekend is uh, the great Jim Bainham. He's telling me uh, earlier this week this is the first meeting he hasn't been able to attend for about 15 years for this championship. Jim Bainham, a veteran of well over 500 race meetings in his career in his famous MGB. One of the unsung heroes of British motorsports and uh, Jim I know is watching on so uh, all the best to Jim and his family. Uh, busy with family commitments this weekend. So not able to uh, attend, sadly. As we've just seen, yesterday's race was a win for Will Sharp in his MGZR. He won by seven seconds ahead of the battling MGFs. As so we have another bit of a fly past here. Fair play to our cameras for picking that up. Shows just how clear it is at Sir Pembrey today. As you say, just a, a short pause here while the recovery crews um, rescue Neil Tressler's pickup truck. Well, we, uh, then we've got four races to go later on. Just before the lunch break, we'll have uh, the Junior Saloon cars. They were in good form yesterday. The identical Citroen Saxo VTRs. We've got nearly 30 of them here this weekend. Charlie Hand was yesterday's winner, his ninth win of the season, continuing his march towards the championship. Good to see fans back at trackside here at the home of motorsport in South Wales at Pembroke. We've even got some classic MGs watching on, I noticed. Saw a couple of uh, old MGs in the crowd, so uh, clearly here supporting the MG Owners Club, must be their local branch in attendance. MG Owners Club, one of the biggest single mark uh, owners clubs in the world, I'm told. So apologies for the slight delay to the start of our next race then for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. It's a bit of recovery work going on on circuit at the moment. So there is the uh, offending vehicle, the pickup truck of uh, Neil Tressler. Tow rope is attached. Just awaiting uh, a tow vehicle now. Driver's okay. The uh, oh, they're going to tow it out of the grass uh, using the ambulance. Put the look of it. That's a bit different. Okay, we can uh, see the recovery operation in action here, showing what our marshals and recovery crews do. Marshals, all volunteers from all walks of life, they give up their time every weekend to allow us to enjoy our favourite sport. Full credit to all of them. So the pickup truck is towed out of the grass. Hopefully that damage is only superficial for Neil Tressler. Rest of the marshals on their uh, 
other posts around the circuit just enjoying the Welsh sunshine. waiting up. Here comes a Land Rover, so presumably that's going to tow the pickup truck back into the paddock. The tow rope will be reattached onto the Land Rover. end of the circuit, the exit of Brooklyn's Corner, named after the very first racing circuit in Britain. See the track then heads up to Carter's Curve and then Honda Curve at the end of the lap. Gives the fans a chance to enjoy a late breakfast. I think we can, uh, while the recovery operation continues here, we can hand down uh, to the paddock fairly shortly with uh, Ewan Dunlop, who he, along with Pointy, is uh, grabbing our interviews down in the paddock. But for, the, for now, the uh, recovery operation continuing. Bonnet is taken off the uh, pickup of Neil Tressler. As we mentioned in our truck interviews earlier on, you may have heard, Pembrey is almost unique in UK circuit racing in that it doesn't have gravel traps. Incredibly scenic circuit here in South Wales, on the almost on the coast, not far from the town of Bury Port, just along the coast from Llanelli and uh, Port Talbot, if you're not so familiar with Pembrey circuit. British Touring Car Championship visited here a couple of times in the early uh, 1990s. British Formula 3 has raced here. And there has been some Formula 1 testing done here in the 90s as well. That was uh, when Ayrton Senna broke the outright lap record. Hence there being a corner named after him on the Pembrey circuit. I believe that was in a McLaren. The race lap record is held by uh, Brian Smith in 1997 in a British Formula 3 car. 50.079 seconds. Back in uh, 1989, when uh, the McLaren Formula One team tested here at Pembroke in the days of the Ayrton Senna and Alain Prost feud, it was at its height when they did test together here at Pembroke. Now we can see the uh, pickup of Neil Tressler being towed in. Hopefully, that damage is only superficial for the 37 team. The other sport that uh, Pembrey is famous for is rallycross. We've seen the European Championship visit here on two occasions in the late uh, 1990s. The legendary Per Eklund 
was a winner on one occasion with his Saab. British Touring Car Championship came to Pembrey twice. Tim Harvey and Joe Winkelhock were the winners in their BMWs. The uh, likes of British Formula 3. Um, a couple of drivers had wins there that went on to Formula 1, including somebody called Jensen Button on the last visit to the circuit by British F3 in, the, in 1999. Other winners included uh, Nicolas Minassian, who went on to race successfully at Le Mans, among others. Ralph Furman, Oliver Gavin, went on to be the Formula 1 safety car driver, of course, for a time, and uh, found great success in GT racing. And uh, another winner here at Pembrey on uh, a couple of occasions was uh, Gavin's future teammate, Jan Magnussen father of Kevin Magnussen. Jan reached Formula One briefly as well with uh, the Stewart team. Jan Magnussen had two wins here in 1994 when he uh, was British Formula Three champion. Um, he went uh, through that season, I remember, virtually unbeaten. So thanks for your patience here, everyone, during the enforced delay while that recovery was taking place. One question we've had in our comments, um, Malcolm Skilton asking how did Paul Jones get on in the pickup truck race? Uh, number 82, Paul Jones, he finished 10th. That race won by George Turicki, I remember him as a 12 year old in ORCI mini stocks. Makes me feel ancient, that does. Okay, course car on the move there. Pit lane, so hopefully that means that the MG is going to be cleared at the moment. Ah, we've got some tyre wall repairs as well, so that's uh, another reason for the delay. Somebody else did go off in that previous race at the crossing, so that's what's being repaired there. Comments going. Keith Sims says, "Good luck this weekend to Ryan Smith from uh, all at Northside Truck and Van." Sponsors of Ryan Smith. Thanks to everybody. Do uh, let us know any shout-outs. Uh, Damage Inc. Gaming says, "Stay safe to all the Orange Army out there." Well said. Nice to see uh, some of the marshals and recovery crews in action here. Seeing uh, a little bit behind the scenes. Our next race coming up shortly is the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club. They are in the assembly area at the moment, just waiting for the circuit to be all clear. should have 10 cars for our next race hopefully we uh, as we've just seen uh, in the replay of yesterday's race we had nine yesterday one had problems in qualifying it was Malcolm Hill's MGB he had overheating issues so hopefully he is going to be out today
Okay, we now can hand down to the paddock where you and Dunlop, our man in the paddock, has got uh, someone to talk to. And we are down in the paddock with a very unique mechanical team here from Melzert Racing. I'm going to let them introduce themselves first of all. Just give me your names first of all and what your, what your role is within the team. Well, I'm Margaret and I'm the crew chief. Fantastic, Margaret. <laughs> I'm Neil and I'm the driver. And you're not a girl? No. <laughs> I'm Natasha and I'm the mechanic. I'm Larissa and I'm the spotter. And how did you girls, or I'm going to get you to the speaking, oh. how did you all girls get into sort of uh, motor racing and mo mechanicals, etc, etc? Because you are incredibly, if you walk around the paddock, there's very few girls, and to find three in one team is, um, is fantastic. Well, it goes back many years ago to legend car racing, yeah. and uh, yeah, they were very tiny, and then they've always been in motorsport, so... Uh, yeah, we, can, we came on to pick up foot racing, didn't we? Yeah. We kind of saw racing and then we started helping Dad out and then it just progressed from there and now we end up setting up the truck and everything. Yeah. And uh, uh, who's the boss? <laughs> anybody, but anybody but you now I, i've got to ask because you've had you've had a bit of a bump down here okay um can you explain what happened from a driving point of view and then how you two are going to fix it well it was like just trying to avoid another car that spun in front of me sort of thing and uh, got the wheels on the grass and it just took a handful and went bang straight in the wall sort of thing so it hit the tyre barrier with a good old belt uh, it's bent the chassis now sort of thing so we've probably just loaded up take it home and fix it in the workshop you still racing this weekend or is that no, you done? It done now. we're done now sort of thing. how are you going to fix it i'm going to ask you <laughs> we're going to have to get the uh, chassis, uh, chassis straightened out and then we're going to have to get some new wishbones and springs and basically we've got to just start back from scratch really i mean that that's a serious job isn't it how often does this happen and what's your general day-to-day -day when you're racing what are you doing generally and what obviously this is a, a unique scenario we're just, we're just doing the tires which are in the platforms at the back up and down just to get the right setup and everything but at the uh, workshop we'll just literally set the whole truck up and everything we'll do like uh, you can be your caster, your wheel weights and all that, and yeah, tow in, tow out. <laughs> and uh, what would you say to any girls watching or women watching wanting to get into motorsport? Do it. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. There's not enough, are there? No, not really, no. 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 Well, best of luck at your next weekend. Obviously, this one is done, but best of luck next weekend, and thank you so much for your time. Oh, and we're going to go back to uh, Dave Goddard in the commentary box. <laughs> Thanks, Ewan. Yes, uh, nice to hear from Neil Tressler and his uh, family team there. I know um, Natasha Tressler's done uh, a bit of racing herself. She appeared in the Honda Civic Cup a few years ago. But you heard there that um, Larissa works as the spotter, who's in radio contact with the driver at all times. You can tell them of any uh, incidents on track in the style of NASCAR in the uh, pickup truck racing championship. It's getting a bit more background info there after we saw uh, Neil take a bit of a wallop there. Sadly, that's the end of his weekend. Great to see uh, more ladies getting involved in uh, British motorsports. We've got a few young ladies racing in the um, junior saloon cars. We'll see out later on as well. Looks like repairs are nearly complete up there to our uh, tyre wall. I believe it was Dale Gent's pickup that uh, hit the tyres there. Hello to Kelsey in our uh, YouTube comments who says big shout out to Reese Blakely in the Junior Saloon Car Championship. They will be on track. What time is their race scheduled for? 11.55 is their scheduled race. Maybe uh, a little delay because we uh, will be running a bit behind time with the uh, necessary clear up here, as we've seen. But once the uh, paddock, once the uh, circuit is clear, the MGs will be released from the paddock. They're in the assembly area, waiting patiently. Our next action on BARC TV will be uh, next Sunday, the 17th of October. We're at Mallory Park 
in Leicestershire, final rounds of the classic touring car racing clubs at various championships. Saloon cars of all shapes, sizes and ages racing there, from the smallest hatchbacks up to the big Jaguars, the big Aussie V8 supercars as well will be in action around there in the classic Thunder Saloons. Championships to be decided. That's all coming up next Sunday here on BARC TV from Mallory. And the following week, we're in the Midlands again at Donington Park. We've got the uh, final rounds of the uh, Goodyear Brick Car Endurance Championship. Plus support. I think the Junior Saloons are in action at that one as well. And then as we go into November, the final rounds of the British Truck Racing Championship take place the first weekend in November at Brands Hatch down in Kent. And the week after that is our final meeting at uh, Brands Hatch. Our last action of the season on BARC TV where... Uh, the Brick Car Endurance Championships Trophy category has uh, a final meeting of the season with some night racing with various support classes there as well. OK, we can now hand back to Ewan Dunlop down in the paddock. He's got uh, another interview for us. Uh, we are down in the pit lane now with Lee Fitzpatrick. Now, Lee, you're in a class that we're not covering on BARC TV today, but you've got an interesting story. You are an ex-champion 10 years ago. This is your first race for 10 years. What's happened? It is my first race for 10 years. It's... Um you know, legends are great. It's always a good, a good draw. Um, Luke Takushis, who works with us, he's been sponsored by us, so he's racing next season. So we thought we'd get it out for a couple of, couple of goes before, and I thought I'd have another, another bash. And uh, yeah, it's been good. And, and take us back ten years. Where were you previously racing? And tell us about your championship win as well. So yeah, 2008, I joined uh, Burnett Motorsport, uh, racing with John John Higgins. And yeah, 2008, I come third, and then 2009, I won the championship down to the last race against Traherne and John John it was a really good season but uh, I've retired in 2010 and yeah been in the wilderness since. And uh, ex-champion what are your ambitions today? First, first time out in 10 years what are you looking to do? Finish. <laughs> I keep drumming it into Luke just finish the races finish the races so that's that's my aim you know it, it went okay in testing I was you know I was, got down to the pace there or thereabouts um, so yeah maybe make up a few places and see how it goes. And uh, we're not covering this class today, so we're not going to see these cars. But can you, it's worth having a look because it is absolutely beautiful. Tell us a little bit about it. Oh, you're asking the wrong guy. I am not technical. <laughs> I can make it go quick, but I know nothing about them. They're a um, purpose built race car. They're a 1250 Yamaha motorbike engine, sequential box. They've all got the same tyres, all got the same shocks, all got the same chassis. So it's purely down to setup and driver. Um, they're not the easiest to drive, but if you can get one of these around a the track quick, you can get anything around a track. So, no, really, really great formula, and it's the only one I've ever come back to. I've raced other stuff, but I've always come back to have a go on one of these. And you've got quite a vocal teammate behind you as well. Who's with you here today? We've got uh, John Mickle, and there's Mark Schlupp, and Ollie, his son, this is his first, first race as well. Um, Luke was racing yesterday in this car, and then uh, me today. 
So, yeah, really good. And there's five cars in here now. They're, they're absolutely incredible to look at. Look at this one on the right here, Alan. Beautiful stuff. Is this all the same sort of team? What's the setup here as a group? So this, this is one team. Um, Chris Brockhurst, he's, he's set up by these guys, but he runs his own car at race meetings. So, yeah, this is all one team. There are lots of father and son drivers and... Yeah, very really good. Lee, really appreciate your time. Best of luck racing. We won't get to see it, but we're watching it from the bank ourselves. Lovely. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, nice to hear from Lee Fitzpatrick there. Uh, I believe I remember him racing uh, Formula Renault single-seaters many years ago before he joined the Legends cast. Oh, good to see Lee Fitzpatrick back on track this weekend as we say apologies for the uh, enforced delay here a few barrier repairs taking place at the moment after uh, a bit of a wallop for one of our pickup racers at the crossing has uh, gone into the tyre wall so that's being replaced at the moment well, we apologize for the delay ladies and gentlemen that, uh, barrier... it looks like we now have cars coming out yes we do here comes the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship onto the grid. Thank you for your patience there, everyone. And we are almost ready to get uh, back underway with racing here at the Pembrey Circuit. Let's have a look at the grid then. It is uh, yesterday's winner, Will Sharp, who is on pole position. This grid set by the second fastest lap for each driver in qualifying yesterday. So Will Sharp, number 66 in his ZR, is on pole alongside the first of the MGFs, number 42, Simon Kendrick. The second row, 53, Mark Baker, and number 5, Stuart Plotnick, both in MGFs. Third row, number 30, Andy Robinson. He's in a ZR, uh, failed to finish yesterday's race. Unfortunately, starts alongside another ZR, number 12, Nick Goha. Then we've got the classic cars in Class A. Number 14, David Amflit, the Class A champion, alongside uh, number 7, Malcolm Hill. Unfortunately, Malcolm won't be starting due to problems in qualifying yesterday. He's a non-starter. And on row 5, we've got number 11, Chris Millard. He's in an MGB Roadster. And at the back, we've got the Class B champion, number 70, Anthony Bates, in his now rare MG Maestro. So we should have nine cars on track then. It might be only eight. I can't see Andy Robinson there. No, he's not there. So further problems from yesterday. So this will be a 20-minute race. There may only be single figures of cars out there. But, proved yesterday, you don't need a big grid of cars for a good race. We had a brilliant battle between the three MGFs and Will Sharp. Will pulled away towards the end of the race to take the win by about seven seconds. But the MGFs had a terrific squabble. Okay, this will be a 20 minute race. Final race of the season for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. Congratulations to the champions, Class A, David Amflitz, Class B, Anthony Bates, Class F, Mark Baker, and Class Z for the uh, ZR, Steve McDermott. He's the overall champion as well. Not out this weekend, though, having already secured the title, electing to sit the Welsh weekend. Out. This is going to be a good one, I reckon. start to weave to warm their tyres up down speedway straight towards Carter's Curve and Honda Curve at the end of the lap. It'll be a standing start, racing over 20 minutes. Cars coming to the grid then for the final race of the season for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. Eight cars out there for a 20 minute race. Will Sharp looking to make it two wins this weekend in his MGZR. He will start on pole position alongside the first of three MGFs. Simon Kendrick in the Tiger striped number 42. Second row, the MGF class champion Mark Baker in the blue car with the white stripes. Alongside him, the white Tiger. Number five, Stuart Plotnick, Simon Kendrick's teammates. 
There's a gap on row three. No Andy Robinson, so Nick Gollar's ZR starts there alone. Got two MGBs out there. David Amflit and Chris Millard and Anthony Bates, MG Maestro, starts at the back. The green flag is waved at the back of the grid, ready to go racing with the last race of the year for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. They're underway and down towards Hatchet's hairpin for the first time. It's a great start by Will Sharp. Good start by Mark Baker, who's come through into second place from the second row of the grid and into the lead of the MGFs as they go into the hairpin for the first time. Now, every race in this championship this year has been won overall by a ZR. We could be losing an MGB there already. Number 11 is pulling off. Chris Millard in trouble. Oh, that's a great shame. Is he going to keep going or uh, where's he going? He's going to try and keep it going and possibly limp it round to the pits. But problems there already for one of our MGBs. So it's Will Sharp that uh, leads. No, uh, Millard has kept it going, as we can see. So hopefully, just uh, a momentary problem there, and he can keep uh, racing on. We won't lose any cars from this race. He already lost a couple yesterday, Andy Robinson and uh, Malcolm Hill's MGB. So Will Sharp leads it then. Now, as I was saying there, every race so far this year has been won overall by a ZR. The wins have been shared by Will Sharp, Steve McDermott and Fergus Campbell. I'm sure the MGF Brigade would want to take an overall win here. Here come your leaders and whoa, Will Sharp, goodness me, nearly spun it there. Got a wheel onto the grass heading out of Honda Curve there and uh, if he'd spun it there he would have gone straight into the pit wall. That was uh, a bit of a lucky escape there. But Mark Baker not able to uh, capitalise and take the lead. Simon Kendrick challenging Baker for uh, what is second overall. Then we've got Stuart Plotneck in the number five car. Does like his lightweight sports cars. Has raced uh, Lotus Elise's as well. Here come the leaders out of the crossing. Fortunately, we've lost our camera at the crossing at the moment. Apologies there. Get that back later on in the day. Simon Kendrick looking for a second class win of the weekend. Mark Baker's already won the class championship. It's David Amflit up there in uh, fifth place there with his MGB. Then Nick Gohar with his ZR. And at the back of the field at the moment is Anthony Bates. Oh no, Chris Millard is still going. Just caught a glimpse of him in the background after those problems on the first corner. Whether he uh, just lost drive momentarily, I'm uh, not too sure. Coming round to complete the second lap then, it is Will Sharp who has the lead. Over the line they go to complete lap number two. Point nine of a second in it as they cross the line. Kendrick in third, there is Plotneck in fourth. Is that a, whether that's a white tiger or a zebra that that car is supposed to be painted as, we're not too sure. The tiger striped car of Simon Kendrick in third. So they chase their way over onto the back of the circuit for what is the third time. Out towards the crossing, here they come. And you can see the, uh, the car racers take a slightly different route to the trucks. The trucks go straight on through that uh, section. They miss out the first part of the Senna-esque. It's a little bit too tight and narrow for the truck racers. But the cars take that little extra section, that left-hander, making a slightly longer lap. Through Brooklands, Will Sharp not uh, getting away by any great stretch from the MGFs. Of course, we saw uh, Mark Baker take the lead there yesterday, but... Uh, then promptly lost it again coming through Honda Curve at the end of the lap and then uh, went wide onto the grass at Hatchet's hairpin and dropped back to fourth. Hoping not to do that again as they come out of Honda Curve. Still the Wayside Adhesive sponsored MGZR, the man from Radcliffe on Trent, Will Sharp who leads the way. Simon Kendrick giving chase in third place. Stuart Plotnick is fourth. Swing their way through the Senna S. Just over 15 minutes to go, so we're at about 
one quarter distance. Chris Millard is now back up to speed. He's about 15 seconds behind Anthony Bates, the uh, MGB. There he is. So he's back uh, up and running. Must have just lost his gears or something momentarily there on the first corner. There's the other MGB in the background. Uh, David Amflitz heading for a, another class win. Well clear of Chris Pollard in the points. Chris Pollard not here this weekend. Through they go towards the end of another lap. Four laps completed and uh, Mark Baker is just on the fastest lap of the race. 116.532. So he's closing up a bit on Will Sharp. I think I see a little bit of damage there on the front of uh, Simon Kendrick's car. Whether that was already there before the race started. Maybe a legacy of yesterday's uh, race because I haven't seen any contact in this race. We don't want to see any contact at all of course. Out of Debenny, over the crossing they go, through the left-hander and up towards Senna once again. Here comes Mark Baker, he's going to go for the outside, he's trying to position himself so he can go up the inside in the second part of the Senna S. So we've briefly got our camera back there at um, the crossing, which is good to see. Well done cameramen. Down to Brooklands. Swing their way through the right-hander. And up speedway straight and onto Carter's curve. First four have broken well away from the rest of the field. Stuart Plotneck has dropped a little way back. He's uh, lost the draft, as they say in uh, NASCAR racing. There is the white MGF. What's the gap going to be this time then? It was 0.63 of a second. 0.7 of a second, so it's about the same. Baker still with the fastest lap of the race in the blue number 53 number 53 it should be white with red and blue stripes shouldn't it I'll leave you to work out the reference there blue with two white stripes like that looks a bit like a, a Dodge Viper style livery no V10 engine under the bonnet of this car it's closing though on Will Sharp in the ZR there's the other ZR Nick Goa veteran of this championship used to race an MG Maestro in the days of full grids of Maestros just got the one here this weekend the other Maestro we've seen this year Alan Forster uh, number 93 not out here at Pembroke he's been uh, racing on the short ovals this weekend with the Grand Prix Midget Club racing his midget car he'll race anything Alan Forster he's done Formula, Formula V single seaters he's raced legends he's done all sorts of things over the years Race the ZR with this championship, if I remember rightly, as well. Stuart Plotnick still dropping back a little. Over the line they come, and the lead gap increases to 0.8 of a second. So Will Sharp responding to the pressure of Mark Baker. 12 minutes of the race to go. There's Chris Millard. He's still going. Still at the back. Is he closing on uh, Anthony Bate in the Maestro? No, he's not. Their lap time's about the same, lapping in the high 120s. Simon Kendrick, one second off Mark Baker. There is Kendrick in third place. You can see just a, a bit of a dent in the front of his MGF. And Mark Baker really having a go. Now, this is where the MGF is stronger than the ZR, through the more twisty section. But the ZR's got the straight line speed. We saw this yesterday. Baker goes out wide. He'll try and cut in on the inside into Brooklyn. That's where he took the lead for a couple of corners in uh, yesterday's race and he dearly wants an overall win to go with all his class wins this year here they come up towards Carters swing their way through this uh, right-handed flick past the pit entrance and into Honda curve Will Sharp under pressure here we come up towards half distance in this final race of the season for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship Baker over the line does the fastest lap of the race and Sharp's having to move to defend into the hairpin Baker just did a 116.507 that time around he's all over the back of Will Sharp here for the lead but Will Sharp uh, wasn't even intending to race his ZR this weekend he was going to bring out his MG Midget in Class A but that wasn't ready in time so he's brought the ZR this he's had a couple of wins with earlier in the season he's looking for another one here but can he hold off Mark Baker Baker is not holding back, he's lunging, he gets up alongside there out of the crossing. 
into the centre S towards the far end of the circuit Baker he's in the slipstream he could try and make a move here at Brooklands this time Sharp is wise to him takes the uh, tighter line he'll be able to pull away again down speedway straight there's Kendrick shadowing in third they've dropped Stuart Plotnick there he is in the white car it's Amflet further back in fifth he's about 12 seconds back off Stuart Plotnick now can Baker get into the slipstream here Coming round to complete lap eight. It's only four tenths of a second in it between the two, as you see on the left of the screen there. Last time through, what's it going to be across the line this time? Over the line they go, 0.614 of a second. So sharp, quicker by a couple of tenths on that lap. Through the hairpin. Baker now starting to close up again. You can see the uh, MGF is quicker in this twistier section in the first half of the lap around the Pembrey Clubman circuit layout. Kendrick still in third. He's uh, over three seconds clear of Stuart Plotnick now. In fact, uh, Kendrick and Plotnick's last lap times were absolutely identical. They both did 117.878. Accurate uh, to the thousandth of a second. Here comes Baker again. There's Anthony Bate, the Class B leader. Now is Mark Baker going to get within range of a move this time into Brooklands no he's not just shadowing every move made by Will Sharp and as in yesterday's race I expected Will Sharp to run away with the uh, races this weekend he's been one of the quickest ZRs this season only third in the points because he missed the first couple of rounds of the championship was racing his uh, MG midget early on in the season as well so not challenging for the ZR title, although he has had a couple of overall wins. But now Mark Baker is really getting aboard. The gap comes down to 0.35 of a second that time through. He's really putting the pressure on here. He wants to end the dominance of the ZRs in terms of overall victories this year. And now he's really having a go as they come up towards Spitfires and uh, Dibeni. Eight minutes to go. Eight minutes of pressure for Will Sharp to withstand. Third place is still Kendrick. He's dropped two and a half seconds back now as Baker goes out wide. There's our Class A leader. We mustn't forget about him. David Amflit on for a best overall result of the season in fifth. As they come out towards Senna and Brooklands. Now, this could be Mark Baker's chance. But again, he's had to go the long way round out of the uh, right-hander at Senna there. Sharp's got the racing line nailed on. Will he crack under the pressure from the MGFs? There's Kendrick and uh, Plotnick, the two teammates third and fourth. David Amflit is now 17 seconds back in fifth position. Nick Gollar behind him in the other ZR. And Anthony Bate in the Maestro is 12 seconds off him. And Millard a long way behind in the number 11. His last lap was a 126, so maybe he does have a problem. There's Nick Gollar, sixth position. While the leaders into Hatchet's hairpin. Baker not able to make a move there. So as they come out of the crossing and up through Senna and Brooklands, that's where Mark Baker is stronger. Trying as hard as he can to take the lead. This section of circuit coming up now. Over the crossing. Into the left-hander. In this second left-handed flick, it takes them into the Senna S. The lead car sponsored by Wayside Adhesives and it's got an MGF glued to the back of it as they come through Senna. Again, he has to go over to the left. He's not close enough to cut back in. The, the, the ZR has just got the straight line speed advantage. He's trying to wrong foot Will Sharp there. He goes out to the left coming out of Senna, then will try to cut back to the inside into Brooklyn. That's how he took the lead yesterday. But the ZR was straight back through its Honda curve then um, Mark Baker was too late on the brakes for uh, Hatchet's hairpin the next time around and went wide onto the grass as he was battling with Simon Kendrick but so uh, no threat from Kendrick here at the moment he's dropped away it's just between these two for the lead just over five and a half minutes remain there's Anthony Bates still leading his class in seventh a rare car these days the MG Maestro likes of Jim Edwards Jr. went on to touring cars briefly. Andy Campbell, the Golhar family. 
Fergus Campbell was very successful in uh, Maestro's as well. We've seen him out in his ZR this year. He's had a couple of wins. Snetterson Thruxton. And there comes Mark Baker again. Is he, is he close enough this time? Again, he goes out wide. See what he's trying to do. He's trying to cut back in there. But he's never close, quite close enough to the ZR to make it work. Now he's all over the back of Will Sharp, trying to slipstream him there down speedway straights. The name not uh, referring to the sport of motorcycle speedway. To my knowledge, that's never been staged here at Pembroke. There were plans to build a drag racing facility here at Pembroke one stage. They uh, never materialised, though. Through Hatchet's hairpin. Again, he's up on the bumper of the ZR, Mark Baker. Still a few laps to go. In one of the most entertaining championships, in my opinion, in the whole of club racing this year, the... Uh, MG Owners Club Championship, sponsored for many years now by uh, Lancaster Insurance. Can Mark Baker, Lancaster bomb his way through into the lead. And coming up to lap Chris Millard in the MGB, though we're hoping he doesn't get in the way. Marshalls will show him the blue flag to warn him that faster cars are approaching, just to hold his line. Down speedway straight. There's the back marker. Number 11, Chris Billard from Berkshire. Will Sharp from Radcliffe on Trent in Nottinghamshire. Mark Baker from Ipswich in Suffolk. There we can see Stuart Plotneck in a, a rather lonely fourth place now, has dropped back from his teammates. Mark Baker, he's got his headlights on now, as has Will Sharp. They put the headlights on to warn the back marker that they're coming up on him. You'll see those in his mirror. Now Mark Baker, he's trying to go around the outside at uh, Hatchet's hairpin. That won't work. So Will Sharp with uh, the full beams on there to uh, warn Chris Millard to get out of the way. They've not met him in the best of places there at the crossing. He has moved aside. Good driving, Mark. Uh, Chris Millard. Let's Will Sharp and Mark Baker through. I imagine Mark Baker will keep his headlights on here to try and intimidate Will Sharp even further. Two and a half minutes left. It's great duel for the lead of the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship season finale. I think Will Sharp is just about going to have done enough to hang on here unless he makes a major mistake. Will Sharp, an experienced racer. He's raced Porsches as well as uh, MGs in his time. Simon Kendrick now flashing the headlights at Chris Millard. Excuse me, he says. Goes through. The lead gap that time through was just under a second, so uh, Sharp's actually pulled away just a little bit here. There he goes. Through the crossing. And one minute, 20 seconds now left on the clock. So we'll get one more lap out of this. See, Will Sharp has pulled away just a little bit there as uh, Nick Gollar up alongside David Amflit. This is for fifth place overall. Nick Gollar goes through at the hairpin, the slightly quicker ZR. It matters not for David Amflit because, of course, he's still leading his class. Gollar second of the two ZRs. We would have had a third one, but Andy Robinson had problems yesterday and was a non starter. Okay, the leaders coming up to start the last lap of the season then. For what's been one of the most entertaining championships in UK national racing this year, the MG Owners Club Championship. Just over 30 seconds on the clock as they come up across the line. This is Mark Baker's last opportunity. Through Hatchet's hairpin. See Will Sharp working the wheel there. Looks as though he is going to hang on for the victory. 
He had a win at Brands Hatch earlier this year. He had a win at Thruxton. It looks like he is going to make it four wins for the season. And the ZRs will have won every championship round overall this year. Unless Mark Baker can do something special here. He's had several class wins already in his MGF this season. Right on the tail there of the ZR through Senna. Up towards Brooklands. He's going to be late on the brakes here. He wants to try and get through. I don't think he's going to do it. Here they come down Speedway straight for the last time. Can Mark Baker get in the slipstream there? I don't think he'll quite do it. They swing their way through Carters, then onto Honda Curve. Only about a car length in it. Mark Baker is not going to do it, and it's going to be a win. A double for the weekend for Will Sharp, number 66, takes the chequered flag and brings the curtain down on the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship season. He beats Mark Baker home by 0.346 of a second. Mark Baker consoled with the fastest lap. Simon Kendrick comes over in third. Stuart Plotnick is fourth. Mark Baker wins Class F. It's going to be Nick Goha who takes fifth position with his ZR. Class A is going to be won by David Amflitz behind him. Good run by Nick Goha. Usually slow in the first uh, lap or so of a race and then uh, starts to turn up the power. So Will Sharp waves to the crowd and the marshals. And here comes our Class B car. David Amflitz is going to take, uh, Anthony Bate rather, is going to take seventh behind David Amflitz and uh, win Class B. Chris Millard has already crossed the line a lap down. The MG Maestro will come in as the uh, last card across the line and that does bring down the curtain on the MG Owners Club Championship season. Sponsored as it has been for many years by Lancaster Insurance. A flash of the lights as Anthony Bate comes home to win the class. A nice message on the front of his car as well. Thank you for marshalling. Sentiment we can all agree with. Okay, we'll confirm the results in a moment then. Race winner completed 16 laps in a time of 20 minutes 42.267, winning by. 0.346 of a second, Will Sharp over Mark Baker. He wins the MGF class. Simon Kendrick has to settle for second in class and third overall today. Stuart Plotnick in fourth. Nick Golhar taking fifth. And David Amflit, the winner of Class A in sixth position. Anthony Bate winning Class B in seventh. And Chris Millard, after a few problems at the start, finishing a lap down. Non-starters there, Malcolm Hill and Andy Robinson. Bad luck to them as the MGs head back into Park Ferme. Hopefully we will hear from some of the drivers shortly. And our next race uh, coming up in a short while is going to be the Junior Saloon Car Championship. Okay, Ewan Dunlop will be down there to talk to our race winner, Will Sharp. He did very well indeed there, soaking up the pressure from a determined Mark Baker. Uh, we'll probably do it in reverse order again. Let's go with the race winner because Will Sharp's ready. Well done, fantastic, David. There's been people keeping their wife wearing a black cap, and they're getting seen in. My hat. And uh, Carrot's own. Yes, it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, final race of the year for the Lancaster. As we say, the junior saloon cards are next. Uh, what's the plans for next year, then? Anything yet? Uh, just to get we are running a little way behind schedule uh, after the earlier barrier repairs so we'll have to wait and see what the start time is going to be originally scheduled for 11.55 so we'll get underway a little behind schedule so we've got another race in the interim and then after the lunch break it will be the British Truck Racing Championship then the Junior Saloons again later on and a final truck race to close out the day here in South Wales Yesterday, he was third. He was Simon behind you yesterday. Yeah, Mark, he grabbed the lead very quickly yesterday. Yeah, he did. I mean, I thought, I thought if Mark gets the break on his on Botnick and um, Kendrick, then he might be able to stick
Right, I think we are now ready to go down to Park Ferme with Ewan Dunlop and he's going to be talking to our race winner, Will Sharp. Here we are in the pit lane then with our class winner and overall winner as well. Congratulations, Will Sharp. Great weekend. Two races, two wins. Yeah, first time I've done that this weekend, so uh, this year, so I'm really, I'm really happy with that. And it was, I was pushed all the way today by Mark uh, and I couldn't make any mistakes in that little infield bit and I had to just rely on my bit, a little bit of extra straight line speed. You had a slightly easier win yesterday. Mark kept you extremely honest throughout that one, didn't he? Completely. You know, you've only got to make one mistake and get him get in front and I drop back a bit. And if you'd got, you know, behind him, it would have been a lot difficult, more difficult to overtake. And uh, he really, uh, I don't want to sound patronised, but he really deserved to get an overall win today. And I kind of half thought when I came round the line, I might just let him go over. But then at the last minute, I thought, no, I'm going to it again. <laughs> uh, Will, you're a racing driver. You're never, ever going to give a win away. I'm absolutely certain. Now, what happens now? That's the last race of the championship. Four wins this year. So fantastic year for you. Where will you go in next season? Uh, definitely staying with the MG Owners Club next year. My little brother, Henry Sharp, he's come in to uh, race. He's got his ZR done. Uh, it's both our big years next year. I'm 50 and he's 40. Um, we want to go for the overall title. I've got a choice of the midget or this, and I'm going to look at what the competition's like and pick the route for the overall. Do you have a midget at hand? I've got my midget, yeah, I have. Yeah, I've just speaking to the original owner of it just now. I haven't seen for 14 years. Um, and yeah, that's my, that's my favourite car, but this really handles well as well, so I'm, I'm getting used to it. Uh, you've raced other classes in your history as well, haven't you? What is it like racing MG? I think you've raced the Porsches as well. Yeah, Porsches, uh, the new Mini Coopers, uh, obviously in the Maestros. Uh, the, the Midget and the Porsche, my, two, my Midget's my ultimate favourite car because it just handles and it's like, it does everything you want it to do. And the Boxster was exactly the same as that. Um, they were very similar cars but totally different top speeds, obviously. But um, as, a, as a group of people and as a way championships run, the owner's club is the place to be. So any MG Trophy drivers out there that want to come into where, the, where it's going to be next year, then this is the place to come. There you go. There's your advice from Will Sharp. Congratulations. Fantastic weekend. Fantastic can championship. I my, can I say hello to my daughter, Olivia, my granddaughter, Josephine, and my wife, Vivian. Hello. Oh, I'm with the daughter, Olivia. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. Thank you very much for work. We're going to try and get Mark Baker as well. Uh, we've just got our uh, track interviewer with him at the moment, but Ket Will, incredibly honest indeed. He had a second place in the class yesterday, but... Uh, Fantastic. Here we go, Mark. I, 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 ju I just went blue and blue and I made a silly, a silly assumption. So you kept him uh, very, very uh, tr uh, honest indeed, didn't you, in that one? Yeah, I mean, it was a great race. Uh, you know, I learnt from... You know, yesterday's race, not to get too embroiled with trying to get past Will because he had the legs on me on the straight. Um, so I thought if we just if we just kept going, you know, we could get a gap on Simon. Uh, Simon gave me a little love tap just to remind me that he was here, uh, which I didn't need much reminding. But yeah, it's just a great race. Well, that's two great races. Yesterday, you, Simon, and I forget the third chap in the race with you three yesterday for second place. But you've had a great weekend of just entertaining racing. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, the Fs and the ZRs, I mean, they're all very evenly matched. You know, we had a great yesterday with uh, race yesterday with Stuart and Simon, um, and you know we had great races like at Silverstone and stuff as well. You know, they're just such great cars for race. You know, pretty good value as well. You know, compared to some of the expensive stuff around here, uh, but yeah, just really good to race. And Will tells us he's staying in the MG class next year. Are you going to be racing him? Yeah, of course I am. <laughs> I've been doing this for I've been doing this for nearly I think 20 years. And uh, yeah, it's just a great family atmosphere. The family loves it, and uh, it's just a great place to come racing. And what do you say to somebody with an MG? You want to get more people into this sport, don't you? Because it was quite yesterday, a little bit quieter today, sadly. I know it's the last race of the season. We are quite far away in the Welsh countryside. But what do you say to people wanting to look into get into MG racing? Well, I think you know the main thing is come and talk to us, yeah, because actually this level of racing is not as expensive as you think. You know, it's not British touring cars. It's not the expensive end. You know, you can get cars relatively good value if you've got the time and you want to have a go come and do it and so literally if i or somebody at home has got an mg i can legitimately come and race in this championship yeah i mean obviously you need the you need the safety devices and the cages and stuff but you know once you've got that then you're pretty much good good to go
great weekend, great championship. Look forward to seeing you next season. Thank you very much. And there we go. If you've got an MGE, come out and get on the track. We need more of you on the Pembury and at the other race courses around the country for next year's championship. But for the time being, we're going to go back to Dave Goddard. Cheers, you and yes, the uh, crowd still enjoying the uh, sunshine here at Pembroke. Our next race on our schedule is the uh, second race of the weekend for the Junior Saloon cars. We're running about 10 to 15 minutes behind schedule, so that should be taking place in uh, hopefully around 20 minutes from now. In the meantime, we're going to show you some highlights from their first race of the weekend, which uh, took place yesterday. And we'll be back after that with our first race today, the second of the weekend, for the Junior Saloon Car Championship. This is this weekend for the Junior Saloon Car Championship. Championship leader Charlie Hand on pole. Ruben Hage, a race winner at Brands Hatch early this season, starts alongside him. Number 42, a relative newcomer to the championship, Will Redford in the red and black car, well up on the second row alongside 322 of Jamie Petters. Waiting for the race to get underway. Here we go then, down towards Hatchet's Hairpin for the first time. And it is Charlie Hand makes a good start. Ruben Hage moves across to the inside as they run down towards the hairpin. He's got second position, side by side the third. Alfie Jenkins has made a good start from the third row in the number 754, the ex-junior rallycross driver. Goes around the outside there, he's in third position. They've all made it through Hatchet's hairpin okay so far. He's identical 1600cc Saxo VTRs. Will Redford battling away in there with uh, Jamie Petters, number 322. But it's Charlie Hand who leads from Hayes, Jenkins, Caton, Petters in the blue and yellow car in fifth position. They're all away cleanly in this first of three races this weekend for the youngsters. Most of these drivers have come up from the world of karting. One or two short oval graduates in there. A couple who've come from uh, the world of rallycross and uh, autograss as well. Ruben Hage is an ex-autograss racer. Three wide here into uh, Brooklyn's. Matthew Cripps having a look up the inside there. Jack Deakin uh, challenging him in the 91. Jack Meakin, I should say. And uh, a bit of uh, push and shove there in the midfield. Look at this. Four and five abreast. Town Speedway straight there. Spectacular stuff. Alfie Deakin's looking fired up here. Chasing Ruben Hage for second. But it's Charlie Hand who leads. Harvey Caton in uh, fourth place. All those three have got one win to their names so far this year. Second, third and fourth in the championship. It's Charlie Hand having won eight races so far this year. He leads the way by 0.8 of a second at the end of the first lap. Ruben Hage in the second place in the Guard X car. Chased by Jenkins. Then it's Harvey Caton in the Maximum Motorsport Saxo, the man from Staffordshire. Jenkins chasing hard. He's uh, won a few races in Junior Rallycross here at Pembrey as well in the past in his Nissan Micra. Jamie Petters is fifth. His brother Dan Petters races in the pickup truck racing championship. Then we've got the white car of uh, Aaron Walker, number 80. And Louis Hounsell leading the rookie points is uh, next in the order. Car that I haven't seen in there, uh, 42, Will Redford. Now he's pulled into the pits. Will Redford unfortunately started from the second row of the grid. He may have had a bit of contact on the first lap. We've lost somebody else as well. Harry Smith, number 10, has pulled off. Jack Meakin takes Oliver Cottam in 98, who's under fire from Matthew Cripps. Comes from a saloon car racing family. Matthew in classic touring car racing, among other things. They stream their way now in single file around the Pembrey circuit. They've settled down after those frantic early exchanges. There is uh, Oliver Cotton, number 98, fifth in the championship. The best results he's had are a couple of third places this year, though. Five drivers have scored wins. Four of them currently hold the top four places. The other winner earlier this season, Ashley Gregory, started quite a way down the grid as Matthew Cripps attacks Oliver Cotton down into the hairpin at Hatchet. He's up the inside. There's a little bit of rubbing in there. He gets through on the inside. That's... Uh, the battle for about, looking down the order, about ninth and tenth position. Start to sort themselves out now. Still your leader is Charlie Hand by just over a second. You can see the, uh, unlike truck racers here this weekend, the cars use that first part of the Senna S, the truck straight line that bit. Field battle continues. A little bit of damage on the front of Matthew Cripps's car there. He's got the triple three car of Adam Harding up behind him now. 
And there is 871. That's Jensen Bell, relative newcomer to the series. Tanned from Hage, Jeekins, Caton, Petters, Walker up front. Then Louis Hansel. There's Harry Hickton, 46, the son of David Hickton, longtime saloon car racer. Adam Harding in the Oryx car under fire. That's from Jensen Bell. Still plenty of laps to go in this first of three races this weekend for the junior saloon car championship. Harvey Caton under braking for the hairpin, making a move on Alfie Jeekins. Tries for the inside there to take third place away. Can he make it stick up towards Spitfires? No, Jeekins drives back around the outside and holds the place. That might be a short oval experience coming into play. He did start his career in junior hot rods on the ovals before moving into rallycross. Petters behind them, then Aaron Walker in the white car, Louis Hansel, Harry Hickton. Behind them looks like 91 of Jack Meakin, followed by Matthew Cripps. Hand leads by 1.2 seconds, but Harvey Caton has done the fastest lap, 117.736, and he's chasing down Alfie Jeekins for that third place. Harvey Caton has moved up from the world of karting. He was the uh, two-time IndyCar champion, cadet class in 2017, Rotomax in 2018. Jamie Petters, a short oval graduate under fire. He's done ninja karts and mini stocks. He's got Aaron Walker, number 80, on his tail. He's in the British Kart Championships in the past. 871 and Jensen Bell has fallen back a couple of places, I noticed there. There's the 77. That is Travis Chapman, under fire from number 29 of Scott Sumpton. See the front bumper coming loose on Matthew Cripps, number 40 car. He's had a bit of contact in the early stages. 91 Jack Meakin ahead of him. This is the fight for 8th, 9th and 10th. Adam Harding behind him, then uh, behind them, then it's Oliver Cosson. Hand leads by 1.3 seconds, so just pulling away at a tenth of a second a lap or so from Ruben Hage in second place, who won an absolute cracker of a race at Brands Hatch earlier this season. Where's Ashley Gregory? Also a winner earlier this season. She's a bit further down the order, I think. Yes, down in 18th place at the moment. I think it's the first time she's raced in September. Matthew Cripps battling with Jack Meakin, trying to go around the outside on the run to Brooklyn. That's a brave move. That's to lock up the brakes there slightly and doesn't get the place. Harry Hinton ahead of them in the number 46 car. Complete novice at the start of this season, never raced before. You can see a bit of damage on uh, Jack Meakin's car. The mirror's hanging off as a result of that bit of rubbing with Matthew Cripps. Rubbing's racing, as they say their way through Honda Curve on the edge of adhesion there, back with the leading group, Jamie Petters under fire for 28, that's Louis Hounsell, he's competed in uh, corporate karting over the last few years, won several titles, now moving into full-scale motorsports as Cripps gets past Meakin there into the hairpin, the great fight going on between these two, we've got just under eight minutes plus that one lap of this race to go. Hand has now increased his lead just over one and a half seconds ahead of Ruben Hage. They're a couple of seconds clear of Jeekins in third. Then it's Caton. A change for fifth there. Aaron Walker has got up into fifth. There he is, the Chandler Motorsports run car. Run by uh, ex-junior saloon car competitor Stephen Chandler and his family. They now compete in the Brick Car Endurance Championship as well. And there is 322, Jamie Petters. Started his career in the ninja carts on the short ovals. You can race those when you're as young as six years old. I couldn't even ride a bicycle when I was six, never mind race carts. Very hand still behind him, looking to top the rookie points this year. For those in their first season in this Junior Saloon Car Championship. Charlie Han continues to lead. 1.8 seconds ahead of Ruben Haynes. This is the battle between Harry Hickton and that increasingly battered car of Matthew Cripps. One of the headlight covers is coming off now. He's up the inside though, takes the place, clean pass there into Hatchet's hairpin. Harry Hickton tries to cut back on the inside. Cripps has that place sealed. This is great stuff. Will Redford, I can tell you, is still going at the back of the field, and uh, Harry Smith. They came into the pits at the end of the first lap to uh, perhaps check a bit of damage. 
Will Redford, who's come into the uh, championship from uh, Sim Racing, learnt his craft on iRacing, competing online. He's uh, only a couple of meetings into his career. He's had some good results so far, though, but uh, stuck at the back in this one after having to make a pit stop. Here comes Harry Hickton attacking back on Cripps. Behind them is uh, Triple Three, which is Adam Harding. Still your leader is Hand from Hayes, then Jenkins, Caton, Aaron Walker, fifth. Charlie Hand looking for win number nine this year. Here's a battle further back. Coming up towards Carters and Honda. The number 16 of uh, Jacob Heap gets through on the inside. That's the 58 car. That's Harvey Dent. They've got Jensen Bell behind them. He's fallen back after a quick start. The tail end has come through up the inside. Here comes the 98 of Oliver Cotter. It looks as though Jack Meakin is about to lose another place. He's lost the wheel arch uh, surround there as well as the mirror fair bit of rubbing going on there there go the leaders Aaron Walker closing on Harvey Caton Petters under fire from Hounsell still the next group headed up now by Cripps in 8th place having got past Harry Hickton Charlie Hand continues to lead the way the 16 year old in his third year of junior saloon car racing was third in the points last year the clear title favourite coming into this season. He's uh, pretty much dominated this season. Louis Hounsell looking to become the top rookie in a Jenkins family prepared car. He's currently seventh in the uh, overall points. His best results was a fourth place. A couple of fourth places actually at Silverstone in the last meeting. Bit of damage to Oliver Cotton's car there as well. He's done some rubbing somewhere. Jacob Heap heads up for this battle with Jensen Bell. Beautifully turned out car number 871 there. He charged their way through. Looks like it's Chloe Grant in behind them in the 63. The uh, young Scottish lady racer. Won the junior gold star from the British Women Racing Drivers Club last year. She's certainly one to watch into the hairpin. Bell moves to the inside to try to take Jacob Heap in the Lucas Oil car and does so. Makes up the place there. That's 14th place. There's Ashley Gregory in there as well, the ex-mini stocks racer. She had a win on home tarmac at Knock Hill earlier this season in Scotland. But uh, well back in the pack in this one in about 16th place. 2.3 seconds is now the lead for Hand ahead of Hage. Four seconds off the lead is Alfie Jenkins. But a tyre smoke there through the Senna S's. Now on the absolute edge of adhesion in these little Saxos. Jacob Heap attacking Jensen Bell. Little scrap between these two. To look down the inside into Brooklyn. Bell turns in. Just about holding the place. Oh, and uh, somebody slowing there coming off the corner. That's Oliver Cotton, I think. Number 98, so has he got some damage? Yeah, they're streaming past him, so Cotton's got a problem, I think. Whether it's damage as a result of that rubbing we saw earlier on, he might have a puncture, quite possibly. Here's Jamie Petters, 3-2-2, still in sixth position. Still holding off Louis Hounsell. You can see a number of the cars with the orange heart stickers on them, saying thank you to our marshals. There goes the leader. Charlie Han getting away all the time. He's got the fastest lap as well. 117.624. Ruben Hayes still second. And Jenkins, Caton and Walker. The top five seem fairly set in stone. We've got two and a half minutes to go plus one lap. Don't forget, so it's not checkered flag when the clock counts down to zero. And like in our truck races, we will see the last lap board go out when the clock goes to zero. Well, they may only be young racers, uh, these teenage stars. Their racecraft is certainly excellent. Finding standards very rigorously enforced in junior saloon cars. Jacob Heap closing up on Jensen Bell there. Behind them looks like uh, Chloe Grants. There goes our leader. Charlie Hand looking for win number nine this season. Third in the points last year. 45 points clear of Harvey Caton in the championship standings coming into this race. And he'll increase his lead still further here. Alfie Jenkins third in the points, six ahead of Ruben Hage. Here's the battle further back, number 58, Harvey Dent ahead of Bell, Pete, and Grant. 
Jacob Heath goes for the inside under braking for Hatchet's hairpin in the 16. This is lap 11. He's up the inside. All oh, they lean on each other and Bell goes rally crossing in the 871. He'll lose out to Chloe Grant as well. Just uh, ran out of room there on the outside. He's lost a couple of spots there. Jensen Bell in the 871. Puts him down to about 14th place. Behind them, number 19 of uh, another young Scotsman, Rhys Blakely. He's won a number of karting trophies in his career so far. Still the fight continues between Heap and uh, Chloe Grant to the inside. Meanwhile, here's a battle at the back. There's Cole Lynch, one of our newcomers. She's just lost out to the recovering Will Redford. There's Louis Hounsell still chasing... Adam Harding, so Harding's got through there, that's into seventh place, and he split the uh, battling pair of Petters and Hounsell. So Adam Harding on a bit of a charge here. It'll be last lap next time around, because there's only 20 seconds left on the clock. Here's the battle for second, Jeekins has closed up on Hage. So there's uh, battles developing everywhere you look in the closing stages of race one for the Junior Saloon Car Championship. There goes Hand. Now, Ruben Hage under real pressure for second place because Jeekins took over half a second out of him on the last lap. Through the Senna S. Can Alfie Jeekins take second place away? He knows the rallycross course at Pembrey very well. His days in uh, various junior rallycross classes. He's going for the inside into Brooklands. Hage gives him room. And into second place goes Alfie Jeekins, or does he? Or does he? Because Hage gets his foot down and fights back there side by side on the run up towards Carter's curve. This is going to be close up towards the right hander. Jeekins has got the inside, he'll hold second place. Then it's the short sprint past the pit lane entrance up towards Honda curve. Hage will surely attack back at the hairpin. There's Harvey Caden fourth and sideways in fifth. That is. Uh, that's uh, Matthew Cripps up there in number 14. Now, ah, he must have been into the pits. Yes, he's a lap down. So Cripps has been in the pits, presumably, to check on some damage to his car. He may have got the black and orange flag, which signals mechanical issue and you need to call into the pits. We didn't get notification of that, but so I would imagine that's what's happened, just to check that bit of bodywork damage. Ashley Gregory gets past Scott Sumpton there further back. Well, there's the lead for Harvey Caton for uh, Charlie Hand, I should say. Harvey Caton closing up, I should say, on our second place fight. Here's Rhys Blakely under fire. Side by side with Chloe Grant, who makes up another place. Jensen Bell recovering in there as well in 8-7-1. Here's the fight for second. Ruben Hayes fighting back, and look at Caton. Really getting into this now as well. The harder 754 in the 600 battle, the more the 54 of Caton's been able to close in. It's three for second place now. Here comes Caton, he's going to try and take both of them, three wide towards Carter's curve. This is terrific stuff, really uh, ramping up in the closing stages. Caton's up the inside, he's got both of them. Brilliant from Harvey Caton, and Hage goes onto the grass. Hage out wide, three into one, didn't quite go there, it was Hage who was on the outside. He lost out, meanwhile up to the chequered flag comes Charlie Hand, who is going to be second. They're up towards the line, Caton's going to get there. Third is Jeekins, fourth is Hage, and Aaron Walker fifth, terrific finish there. Harvey Caton then gets the second place, a brilliant move there on the last lap. Petters is sixth, Harding seventh, Louis Hounsell is eighth, Harry Hickson ninth, the rather battered car of Jack Meakin is tenth. Next across the line will be Harvey Dent, then it's Jacob Heat, plenty of battling for him, then Chloe Grant, Jensen Bell and the rest of them. Here's a fight towards the back, the 77 of Travis Chapman. And that's number 33, Jacob Baldry, who's come through from the back of the grid in the green car. We'll confirm the full results in a moment as across the line come the 57, that's Ben Carter, 92, Adam Parker. I think we've only got one non-finisher, Oliver Cotton pulled into the pits. Everybody else, there were a couple of pit callers in that one, but they kept going. But it is Charlie Hand, win number nine this season, extends his championship lead. And he'll get the point for fastest lap as well. 117.624. One of the stars of that race, Harvey Caton. Second place on the last lap in a three wide move at 6.3 seconds off. Charlie Hand. It shows how hard they were battling. They really dropped away in the closing stages. But look at that for second. Half a second covering the next three. Caton second. Alfie Jeekins third. Ruben Hage fourth. 
Fifth went to Aaron Walker, Jamie Petters in sixth, then Adam Harding, a good run from him. Louis Hansel taking eighth place. Harry Hickton ninth, Jack Meakin rounding out the top ten. Then in eleventh place was the number 58 of Harvey Dent. Twelfth for Jacob Heap in number 16th, Chloe 16, Chloe Grant was 13th, Jensen Bell 14th and Reese Blakely rounding out the first 15. Ashley Gregory might be a little bit disappointed with 16th ahead of Scott Sumpton then CJ Morgan in number 59 was 18th home. 19th place went to the number 57 of Ben Carter. 20th was Adam Parker and Travis Chapman, Jacob Baldry and Cole Lynch the last finisher on the lead lap. Uh, Matthew Cripps, Will Redford and Harry Smith. They all got to the finish but a lap down after making pit visits. Oliver Cottam sadly the only retirement. Okay, that was race one for the Junior Saloon Car Championship. That took place yesterday. I'll be coming out onto track very shortly for race two of the weekend. This will be a 15 minute plus one lap race once again. So once the clock counts down to zero, the last lap board goes out. Charlie Hand with nine wins so far this season, extended his championship lead yesterday, looking to move into double figures in terms of race wins here today. In the second of three races, there'll be another one later on. Looking to follow up the hat trick he scored at uh, Silverstone a couple of weeks ago. I'll give you the grid very shortly for our second junior saloon car race of the day. It's, uh, set by the second quickest time for each driver in qualifying. We should have 27 cars on the grid for this one. The course car leads them up to the grid. It is Charlie Hand who will start on pole position number 55. Alongside him, a relative newcomer to the championship, Will Redford in car number 42. Great to see him on the front row. Second row, number 600, Ruben Hage and 54, Harvey Caton. Third row, 754, Alfie Jeekins. Those three had a terrific battle as we've just seen for second yesterday. Alongside Alfie Jeekins is the leading rookie in the points, number 28, Louis Hansel. Row four, number 80, Aaron Walker. And uh, slotted in alongside him is 322, Jamie Petters. Row 5, it'll be 91 of Jack Meakin and 98 Oliver Cotton. The 6th row, 46 Harry Hickton and alongside him will be triple 3 Adam Harding. The reason for the gaps on uh, our grid there is they had problems with their transponders in qualifying. Uh, row 7, 58 Harvey Dent alongside 40 Matthew Cripps. Uh, the 8th row, 871 Jensen Bell, 16 Jacob Heap. Ninth row, 63 Chloe Grant and alongside her number 29 Scott Sumpton. Then on the 10th row we've got uh, Ashley Gregory in number 22, 77 of Travis Chapman. 11th row 59 CJ Morgan alongside 57 Ben Carter. Row 12 number 19 Reese Blakely and 33 Jacob Baldry. Row 13 10 Harry Smith, 92 Adam Parker and one more car at the back number 7 Cole Lynch, the third of the uh, young lady racers in this one. She's in her uh, second meeting in the championship, made her debut at Silverstone. She starts at the back. So we'll get a green flag lap first of all to warm their tyres. There we see our uh, second row men, 600 Ruben Hage, scored his maiden win at Brands Hatch earlier this season. Harvey Caton had a win at the opening meeting of the year at um, Cadwell Park, won the very first round of the season after. Uh, Charlie Hand hit a few problems, but uh, Charlie took the second race there in Lincolnshire. There's Jamie Petters, the blue and yellow cup. Had a good run uh, yesterday. As they start to weave their way round, warming their tyres. There's Cole Lynch at the back in the metallic uh, pink machine. All these cars identical, 1600cc Citroen Saxo VTRs. Very entertaining racing I've seen this season from the junior saloon cars. Already had one or two shout outs in the uh, YouTube comments today. But can anyone stop Charlie Han making it 10 wins for the season? He was third in the championship last year. 
Started as the hot favourite ahead of this season and looking to march on towards the title this year. By contrast, Will Redford, alongside him, number 42, from Warrington in Cheshire, is a newcomer to racing this year. The only racing he'd done prior to 2021 was in sim racing. He's learnt his craft in iRacing online. Starts alongside Charlie Hand here, looking for his first podium. Will Redford, his first couple of meetings, his best uh, results have been uh, three top tens at Brands Hatch and Silverstone. Hit some problems early on yesterday, had to make a pit stop at the end of the first lap. Leaving Caton, Jeekins and Hage to battle for second place. They finished in that order. Harvey Caton's come up from the world of karting. Likewise, Ruben Hage was fourth in the points last year. He's also done some autograss racing in his career. We've got uh, ex-short overlers, ex-rallycrossers in there as well. The Saxos come up to the grid then for the second of three races this weekend for the Junior Saloon Car Championship. Nine wins so far this year for pole man Charlie Hand, number 55. He looks to make it 10 with the relative newcomer Will Redford, number 42, alongside him. 15 minutes plus one lap. The schedule for this second of three races for the youngsters this weekend, all 14 to 16 years of age. Ruben Hage on the second row, number 600, alongside the 54 of Harvey Caton. Then Alfie Jeekins completing the top five. Green flag is waved at the back. And the pack about to be unleashed once the red lights go out. The revs are up and they're away. Here we go then. Down towards Hatchet's hairpin for the first time. Charlie Hand gets away well. So does Will Redford. Ruben Hayes trying to get down the inside there on the run into the hairpin. He's side by side with Alfie Jeekins. who's made another decent start. He's up the inside. He could get second place with a bit of luck here. No, Redford turns in. Hand's got the lead. Jeekins could get third. Jamie Petters gets forced out wide onto the grass. Three into one doesn't go at Hatchet's hairpin. And Petters has dropped back as a result of that behind Harvey Dent in the number 58. Number 16 is in there as well. That's Jacob Heap. As they charge their way around the crossing for the first time. Your leader is Charlie Han. Ruben Hayes has made a bit of a mistake there. He's dropped back to around sixth position. It's Han that leads from Redford. Jeekins in third. Then Kate and Aaron Walker in the white car with the black bumpers is up into fifth place as they start to sort themselves out around the first lap. Walker under fire from Hage. Behind them, Oliver Cotton, who failed to finish yesterday's race. Up the inside, well, over the kerb goes Hage, and that's forced Aaron Walker wide onto the grass. I don't think that was intentional there. Harry Hickton running wide onto the grass as well, so a fair bit of changing going on in the uh, midfield. Harry Hickton was delayed there. There's Hage side by side with Oliver Cotton as they come through Carter's and up towards Honda Curve. Yeah, Ruben Hage bounced off the curb coming through Brooklands. That's what caused that little contretemps because he uh, forced Aaron Walker onto the grass as a result. It's Hand who leads from Redford, Jeekins, Caton, then Hage back up into fifth, Cotton sixth, then it's Louis Hansel, the rookie points leader in uh, seventh place in a Jeekins family prepared car, Alfie's teammate, and oh, but not another bit of shoving there. Who's that getting involved? Jack Meakin, number 91, and it's Aaron Walker involved again, and uh, he gets pushed wide again by Adam Harding in the Oryx car, number triple three. Bounces off the kerb himself. Now, Aaron Walker's all over the place in the uh, number 80. He's been rather pushed from pillar to post in this one. They start to sort themselves out. Walker fighting back side by side with Adam Harding. Behind them, Harvey Dent in number 58. Speaking of Dent, there's a bit of a dent in. He's on the grass again. Aaron Walker will be taking up Rallycross the way he's going. Speaking of Dent, he said there's a big dent in his door where uh, Ruben Hage bounced off him. Okay, things hopefully starting to calm down a bit in the midfield now. Your leader is Charlie Hand from Will Redford. He fan out three abreast. You can see Jamie Petters has dropped uh, well back. Ashley Gregory in the blue and pink car in the middle there. Harry Hickton in the race truck sponsored car, side by side with Matthew Cripps, both of their families regulars in the classic touring car racing club over the years. David Hickton and uh, the Cripps brothers. They stream their way over the line. Hand leads it. Uh, Harvey Caton has taken third from Alfie Jeekins. As Aaron Walker back up the inside, he retakes the uh, number 58, that is, of Harvey Dent. Uh, there's a bit of smoke there. 
I think that's uh, the bumper rubbing against the tyre you can just see there on the Chandler Motorsport car of Aaron Walker as he tries to fight back. So it's Hand from Redford. Caton's up to third. He's taken Alfie Jeekins. There are the leaders. It's Caton, the green and white car run by Maximum Motorsports. Ruben Hayes having a go at Jeekins. Next is Ollie Cottam. Then Hounsell. Meekin up to eighth as a result of those shenanigans on the previous lap. Ninth, it is Adam Hardy. And then we've got Aaron Walker. Jacob Heap side by side with Harry Hickton. Matthew Cripps in behind them. Jensen Bell side by side with Jamie Petters behind. Jamie's brother Dan racing in the uh, pickup truck championship this weekend. Just over 11 minutes of this 15 minutes plus one lap race to go. There is the Lucas Oil car of Jacob Heap moving through. Matthew Cripps on their tail. Harry Hickton is uh, run out wide Harry a complete novice this year and he's got round the outside there at Honda Curve that's good driving by Harry Hickton here's Reuben Hayes up the inside trying to retake Alfie Jeekins for fourth position I think that is a little bit of rubbing there as they come off the corner Jeekins not giving way but uh, Reuben Hayes is through Alfie Jeekins his first time racing here at Pembrey was in junior rallycross a couple of years ago with the Nissan Micra is down a place into fifth. It's hand that leads from Redford by 1.8 seconds at the end of the previous lap. Caton is third, then this frantic battle for fourth between Hage and Jeekins. Then Oliver Cotton wants a bit of this as well. Failed to finish yesterday, so he wants to make up for lost points. Number 98 there, Oliver Cotton. Race carts in the UK and uh, over in Asia. And uh, Ruben Hayes and Alfie Jeekins getting physical again there. Jeekins onto the grass. Put his hand out of the window. I think he was uh, bending his mirror back into place there. That's allowed Oliver Cotton to come through. And now he'll chase Ruben Hayes. Bit a needle creeping into this battle for fourth place now. Hayes throws it in. Four wheel drifting his way round there almost. He's really on it. Ruben Hayes in the number 600 car. Matthew Jeekins will be fired up here. He's down to six now. Very tough young racer is Alfie. From the school of hard knocks that is Rallycross. Hand leads it from Redford. Meantime, Harvey Caton's done the fastest lap. And Caton attacking there. Will Redford as he went out of sight for second. Oh, and more. Another collision. Debris everywhere. That's Aaron Walker. And I think it was Adam Harding that he collided with. Now, we'll have to be careful that nobody punctures on the debris there. Jamie Petters ploughed his way through. Poor old Aaron Walker. He's been hit from every side in this one, but I think it was another car that lost its bumper there. I think that might have been Adam Harding, number uh, triple three, possibly. Hand continues to lead from Redford. Caton on his tail. Then Hage, Cotton, Jeekins. And the rest of them come through. There's Jamie Petters side by side with the 871 car. That's Jensen Bell. And they've got Ashley Gregory up with them the three lady racers in this championship Ashley Gregory had a win earlier this season at Knock Hill there's uh, the uh, warning of oil or debris on the circuit the red and yellow striped flag it normally means slippery surface but I think in this case it means debris from that collision uh, going into Hatchet's hairpin Jamie Petters round the outside of Jensen Bell also in there the number 63 that is Chloe Grant the young Scottish racer there we can see that debris is being avoided by the second place fight and uh, Harvey Caton has got through there ahead of Will Redford but Charlie Hand is pulling away looking for win number 10 this year Hayes fourth Jeekins fifth Cottom's back down to six then we've got Louis Hounsell Jack Meakin in the 91 and rounding up the top 10 Harvey Dent and Harry Hickton see them come through in the background there is Dent there is Hickton with the orange front end Matthew Cripps behind him. Aaron Walker's down to 13th behind Jacob Heap. And then the rest of them charge their way through. Seven and a half minutes to go in the second of three races this weekend for the junior saloon cars. Chloe Grant getting past Ashley Gregory there. Chloe Grant now the leading lady. There's number 59. That's CJ Morgan in the Blackford Group Cup. He's been karting since the age of six, according to his driver notes. Here comes Will Redford. And the safety car is coming out. Now, presumably, that's for that debris at turn one, because it is a bit of a hazard there. So, um, the 
Ferry safety car coming out. We've also lost Adam Harding, number 333. That will be as a result of damage from that collision, no doubt. There you can see there's debris everywhere on the outside of Hatchet's hairpin. And the safety car is going to be deployed to allow a bit of a clear-up operation. Okay, the leaders have been picked up by the MGZR safety car. We're not sure where Adam Harding's car has come to rest, but it's him who shed that debris there in the collision with Aaron Walker, so he stopped somewhere on circuit as well. Where's part of his car? That's the front bumper and various other bits that have come off it. So the marshals will sweep up. There they are, the Orange Army into action. There's one uh, comment on YouTube says here, if it wasn't said that these were youngsters, we wouldn't be able to tell with such close racing to such a high standard. Well said. These drivers... Uh, all under 17 years of age. Some of them as young as 40. Only just out of karting. There is Cole Lynch. A little bit of damage to the front of her car there. Right at the back, number 92. That is Adam Parker. Ex-junior Rotax 125 racer, among others. weaving behind the safety car to keep their tyres warm. There's Alfie Jenkins been getting into a few scrapes with uh, Ruben Hage in this race. They're fourth and fifth. No overtaking, of course, behind the safety car. Still haven't seen where the triple three car has ended up. Uh, Adam Harding. J.D. Petters there, the blue and Daglo yellow car. Jensen Bell, 871. Beautifully turned out car for him. Marshall's just uh, move off to the edge of the circuit to let the field bite. Four and a half minutes or so to go. Plus one lap. Well, this will neutralise the field. Charlie Han's lead is eradicated that he'd uh, built up. You'll have Harvey Kate right on his tail for the restart and the Staffordshire driver will be hungry for a second win of the season in the car run in association with Maximum Motorsports. He's won a couple of karting titles, Harvey Kate. In 2017, he won the IndyCart Cadet title, following year the Rotomax title. On Charlie Hand is something of a veteran of junior saloon cars. This is his third season. He was third in the points last year, so the hot favourite for this year's title. He ran from Crawley in Sussex. Can he hang on here? The lights are out atop the uh, safety car, so it should pull into the pit lane this time. And we will go racing once again. You can see Charlie Han trying to anticipate the restart. He's backed up the field, doing a bit of a Sebastian Vettel here. Get racing. Yes, the safety car has pulled in, I can tell you. We'll get racing again. We're just over three minutes to go. Go then the pace quickens and off they go they get the green and we're back underway He's got the restart right here Charlie Han now here comes Oliver Cotton he's made a good restart so is Will Redford moving to the inside it's gonna be three wide is there look at this from Oliver Cotton can he get the car stopped in time into the hairpin he's taken Jenkins he gets a tap he gets a push there from Jenkins can he take Ruben Hage as well Louis Hansel's up the inside too well Oliver Cotton over the curb there on the inside at Spitfires that was a great restart. He's got past Jenkins. He didn't quite manage to get past Ruben Hage. Just couldn't quite get the car stopped in time. But Charlie Handers held his lead ahead of Harvey Caton. It's Will Redford up there in third, looking for his first podium in JSCC. Up the inside there, big lock-up from uh, Matthew Cripps. Has he tagged anybody there? Might have been uh, a bit of contact in there with Matthew Cripps. I think they've all kept it going. Like he nearly slid into the side of Jacob Heap's car. Aaron Walker continuing his recovery drive up past Harvey Dent. Harry Hickton coming through on the other side. Harvey Dent didn't know which side to look there. 
Keeps the inside. Ashley Gregory onto the grass slightly. It's still dent, uh, still a hand from Caton at the front of the field. I can't keep up with this. Frantic stuff. Side by side now. Ashley Gregory with one of the Oryx cars. That is Chloe Grant. And we've got a red flag. We've got a red flag. What has happened? Did somebody go off round at um, the exit of the crossing there? I saw a lock up from. Oh, there's what's happened. It's Cole Lynch. What has happened there? Now, where is that? Wait and um, see if anybody else is involved there because it doesn't look as if that car is near a barrier. So whether that has gone into the back of another car. Yes, that's coming out of uh, the crossing into the Senna S. bit of damage on the car of um, number 57 Ben Carter he's dragging the front bumper so there's been a bit of a wallop at the back of the pack we were watching the midfield so what has happened there Cole Lynch involved she's one of the newcomers to the championship in the number seven let's hope she's okay debris there on the outside so there has been a collision at the exit of the crossing I did see I think it was Matthew Cripps have a big lock up there but we didn't see um, what ensued well, it looks like the medical car has driven away there so I think Cole Lynch thankfully is okay but the race stopped there were 1 minute 46 seconds left on the clock so that will almost certainly be a declared result and it will be win number 10 this season for Charlie Hand. The point, if the result stands for the fastest lap, will go to Harvey Caton, 117.010. There are the lap times. Another car that's pulled into the pits uh, that time round was Harry Smith, number 10. So whether he was involved there. I'm not sure what happened, unfortunately. So the race brought to an early halt with the collision on the exit of the crossing. There's Ben Carter's car just coming out of the corner there. Look at the state of that. Now, cars being taken um, onto the grid. Just waiting to see what's going to happen here. Yes, chequered flag is being shown, so uh, race declared. There's what's left of Ben Carter's car. Looking at the amount of damage there, I reckon he's spun and uh, Cole Lynch hits him head on. Cars being stopped on the grid, and then we'll probably be taken uh, back into the paddock. Some debris on the home straight there as well. The 19 car pulling in as well, that's Reese Blakely. There's Cole Lynch's car being towed in, the Harper Motorsport car. That's taken a big front end impact. I didn't see what happened, but I am guessing, looking at the damage on Ben Carter's car, that he was spun round in a melee at the back, and uh, Cole, who was at the back of the field, went uh, head on into him. Okay, the car's now being released by the marshals. The chequered flag is out. And they will be uh, signalled back into Park Fermi. That's end of race for the junior saloon cars. We'll hopefully hear from Charlie Hand, our race winner, shortly. That's win number 10 for him this season. Extends his championship lead. Second place and the fastest lap to Harvey Caton. And well done, Will Redford, number 42. That's his first podium 
in junior saloon cars. Okay, we'll hear from our race winner with Ewan down in the uh, Park Ferme area shortly. It will be lunch break next here at uh, Pembrey. And then uh, at about 10 past one, our next race will take place, which is the next race of the British Truck Racing Championship. It's at about 40 minutes from now. Bit of clear up needed for our marshals before they uh, get their lunch break. Thanks to them for their services as always. As we say, two races to come later on after that. The junior saloons will be back out at um, about 20 past three. And then an hour after that, the British Truck Racing Championship have their finale for the weekend. Okay, I think we can now go down to Ewan Dunlop in uh, Park Fermi, who's ready to talk to our race winner. And here we are in the pit lane then with the absolutely unstoppable Charlie Han. Charlie, I think that's 10 wins this season. You just keep doing it. Yeah, it's been going uh, really well so far, so very happy. Talk to us about Pembury. You went on lots of tracks. How is uh, Pembury special to you? Um, I think that uh, I think every track's fun. Um, they all have their different quirks and stuff, and it's just just about nail nailing them. Now, being at the front, that was a bumpy old race behind you. The nice thing is, you get to keep your car quite nice and clean, apart from just a couple of dinks down here. Are you aware of what's going on behind you? Because it got a little bit rough. You can always see, obviously it's quite hard the um, the amount you can actually see in your mirrors, but you can see people jostling and stuff, and then when you come round on the next lap and there's loads of debris on the track, it's, uh, it's um, uh, a bit of a fright actually, because you don't want to get a puncture or anything, so just trying to stay clear of that, and yeah. I think a puncture might be the only thing that can stop you now. With, with 10 race wins, what does your future look like? Because you are dominating this class. Are you going to move up to a bigger engine, bigger car? What's your plans for the future? Yeah, so this is, this is my last year in JCC, obviously... Um, we're not really sure what we're going to uh, do yet, just sort of exploring options, but um, whatever we go in, hopefully we do well. We've got, I think it's five races left of this season, so best of luck with those, and no matter what you're doing next year, we're going to be following you. Lovely, thank you very much. Well done, Charlie. Now, we're going to try and find Ruben. Who came second in that one? It was Harvey Caton. Harvey, can we grab you for a sec? He's just having a, having a, having a little debrief with his team. Um, Harvey, I make that two second places, is that right? over the weekend fantastic so just summarize your weekend and that race for us obviously charlie was out in front so he didn't see what was going on behind you had a better view of what was going on well um with all the red flags and saved cars i'm not sure what happened obviously there was a lot of debris so obviously some of the cars had contact but um had some pretty good battles with obviously redford and alfie and i'm still having some problems like because you'd see i dropped back but um other than that it was a really good race and yeah really enjoyed it now you still got racing to do this weekend um anything you got plans for the car between now and the next race sort of to prevent those issues that you had in that one uh no i think really it's just about my driving because obviously there's we don't know what's happening just uh, i've got to figure it out on myself and yeah 
hopefully we can get it sorted for the next race. Now, for anybody that watches uh, sort of Formula One or British touring cars, they get a lot of data back after the race. Do you have access to anything like that, or is it just your opinion of what where you went wrong or, or where sort of you can improve? Well, most of our cars have loggers in the car, and obviously they use mostly GPS because how old these cars are, they can't really run those systems like checking our acceleration and all that. So it's kind of difficult for us to check data, but we get as much, much as we can from it. Harvey, um, great weekend so far. Good luck with your final race of the day later on this afternoon. Thank you very much. And we're also going to try and speak to um, third place in that one, Will Redford. Will, he's just having a chat with Charlie. You can't don't discuss with the enemy. <laughs> what tips was he giving you? Um, well, he, didn't, he said turn in earlier down there. So, turn in earlier? Yeah, something like that. Now, we spoke to you before the race, um, obviously having a good weekend so far. I didn't go your way yesterday. Um, so just describe what, what changed in that race. There was a lot going on. You were kind of in the middle of it. You weren't always in third place. So it was like entertaining race for you as a driver. Yeah, um, obviously the issue sorted now that we had yesterday. So I can, I can run at the pace that I can do. Uh, the start was all right. I had a good start, good getaway, and then we, we tried to keep with Charlie, but uh, there's a few corners where he's faster than me at the moment, so we'll have to go back and look at the data. Um, and then, obviously, Caitlin catched up, and then we had the safety car, which uh, which lost me out a bit because I couldn't get the run on Caitlin, and then, um, obviously, the red flag. So, But apart from that, it was a good race. My first podium as well, so I'm happy with that. Fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah, lots of flags in that one. Um, so, so have a fantastic this afternoon. Go and enjoy your lunch. You've definitely earned it. First podium. Go and enjoy your trophy. Thanks for speaking to us. Thank you. So that is it from down in the pit lane for the Junior Slews. We've got one more race coming up this afternoon. And of course, the British truck racing gets us underway next, just after lunch. But for now, it is back to Dave Goddard. OK, thanks very much, Ewan. We've got about half an hour before our next race takes place at around 10 past one, the British Truck Racing Championship for their fourth race of five this weekend. So that'll be coming up in uh, about half an hour from now, just over, all being well. Marshall's doing a bit of a clear up there on the pit straight at the moment, so thanks once again to them. They'll have a short lunch break as well. In the meantime, we're going to show you some highlights from some previous action on BARC TV this season. We'll be back in uh, just under half an hour. And welcome to another edition of Full Throttle, bringing you the best of British motorsport from around the UK. Today, we're at the Brands Hatch Circuit in Kent for big rig race action. Yes, the British Truck Racing Championship is in action alongside the Pickup Truck Racing Championship. Let's head down into the paddock and hear from some of the competitors. I want to know what it's like in one of these going down Paddock Hill Bend, because people watching might not realise it's actually pretty steep, isn't it? It's very steep. I mean, all you can see is tarmac until you come up the hill. But I mean, for us, this is the first time we've ever raced in this sort of temperature here. So yeah. it's the quickest I've ever been around that circuit today. Wow. Which is because we're usually either like April to November. So it's brilliant, you know. I mean, it's a bit of a shame yesterday because we tested in the wet, which yeah. was but the the track's so sticky, the tyres are good, so it's only going to get improved over the weekend. So, so you're going to get looking quicker? Forward. Oh yeah, I mean quicker. we're breaking late, um, different gears around bends, we've never raced in these conditions here. Wow. So it's, it's good and it's a lot faster, I mean we used to drop half a peg in the first bend, now we're top gear all the way around. Really? So, yeah. Because okay. so you've uh, got to be brave, haven't you? You've got to keep your foot yeah, in, you've you got to be in it, back out. A bit of left foot braking just to keep it level and then power back out of the thing, so it's... Uh, no, we're looking forward to it, it'll be good, so... John, let's talk us through qualifying baking conditions, was it Was it yeah, quick out there? Yeah, it was quick out there, we just made a couple of mistakes on his final lap. Uh, really, we should have been up to P2, not P4. We made, lost half a second in turn one, taking train a different line. So you're confident then, come the race, the pace is in this then to get further up? Yeah, 100% the pace is in it, it's all down to me at the minute. Uh, and Chuck, of course, it was just your first ever qualifying session, wasn't it? What well, was it like yeah. out there? Yeah, it was good. Better just yesterday in the way, enjoyed it. Yeah. A lot more grip, obviously. Got new tyres on, learning a lot. Like, it's a steep learning curve. You know? Is that what this weekend's about for you? Is it about learning or yeah. it's still competitive? You still want to give it a good uh, fist, don't you? Yeah, but we had little problems there. The near leak had to come in and bed the brakes in. So 
only really got two or three laps, but yeah. I've got a little speed signal, signal issue with it, so I need to try to fix that just now. So, um, yeah. Well, great to hear from a couple of the drivers there after qualifying down in the paddock with Ian. And we'll bring you the grid lineup for our first of five truck races across this weekend. The more powerful Division 1 trucks, the more heavily modified machines start in the first group, the Division 2 trucks behind them. So in pole position, it will be the reigning five-time British truck racing champion, number one, Ryan Smith, debuting a brand new truck this weekend and alongside him the 10 times British champion, former European champion as well, number 7 Stuart Oliver. On the second row, number 11 Martin Gibson with his uh, MAN alongside 18 John Newell also debuting a new truck here today. Row 3, former champion number 69 David Jenkins starts alongside 81 of Mark Taylor and a newcomer behind them, 157 from Birmingham, Jonathan Willis, ex uh, short oval hot rod racer starts on row four then there's a gap and then we've got the division two trucks the reigning champion number three Stephen Powell we just heard from was pipped to pole at the end of the session 68 Craig Reed it is who takes pole in his Evico alongside number three Stephen Powell behind them 16 of Brad Smith lines up alongside number five Adam Bint in his Volvo White the next row at number six which is John Powell and 41 Simon Cole in the Mercedes Beast as it's known and finally, number 10, Craig Evans, made his debut last season alongside our newcomer, number 32, Jock Borthwick, the Scotsman. He had his qualifying times disallowed for overspeeding during qualifying. These trucks are electronically limited to 100 miles per hour, and you will be penalised if you exceed 100 miles an hour. It is monitored carefully. They have electronic speed limiters fitted to them, but if your truck does go over uh, 100 miles per hour, then you will get a penalty and in this case Jock Borthwick had his qualifying times disallowed he has to start from the back of the grid here they come then up towards the red lights when they go out these 1000 horsepower engines will release their power I'm really looking forward to this race the pace truck is in the pit lane up towards the red lights they go here we go the power comes on and away they go truck racing 2021 is underway front row men lead them into paddock hill bend it is a good start by Ryan Smith, the new Mercedes leads the way into the first corner in Division 2. It's side by side between Craig Reed and Stephen Powell. Leading the way it is Ryan Smith, somebody running a bit wide there. Mark Taylor's got to, onto the dirt at the back of the Division 1 pack. It's Smith who leads from Oliver Gibson. Then David Jenkins has got ahead of John Newell up into fourth place. And the Division 2 trucks keeping up at the moment with Division 1. We expect to see them split apart. You can see the dirt on the tyres of the 81 there. He went to wide coming out of paddock, but he gets past Jonathan Willis up into sixth position. It's Ryan Smith in the Mercedes that leads. Second, the Volvo of Stuart Oliver. Martin Gibson in third place. Somebody running a bit wide there in Division 2. That was Brad Smith in the 16 that ran out wide. He's lost a spot or two. They start to sort themselves out around this first lap of this 15-minute race then. There's Jonathan Willis on his debut in the 157 truck. Two newcomers in this, of course. Jock Borthwick at the back of the field. There's the grey, number 32. There are the leaders in Division 2. It's Ryan Smith leading by nearly two seconds at the end of the first lap ahead of Stuart Oliver. Gibson in third, then Jenkins, Newell, Taylor and Willis. Craig Reed leads Division 2. On our graphics there you can see a Division 2 in white, Division 1 in blue. Brown Druids for the second time. Fly in Ryan Smith going for six titles in a row. Look at the lead he's got already in the Mercedes. Oh, and a tangle there. That's Jonathan Willis. And Craig Reed, that's the Division 2 leader gone. Oh dear, the Evico gets itself out of the gravel. Now, can Jonathan Willis get the Lawson's Direct uh, MAN going again? Stephen Powell has inherited the lead in Division 2 with his newly liveried MAN. Adam Bint in second in number 5. There's the uh, two Team Oliver Kelsa Truck Products machines, second and third. David Jenkins up to fourth. Didn't uh, go too well in qualifying. Then John Newell in truck number 18. 11 minutes to go in this first British Truck Racing Association Championship race of the season. Division 1 runners fairly spread out at the moment. It's getting dialed back in really for the new season. Five races this weekend. The leader is lapping a second quicker than everybody else. There is Ryan Smith. He really is the Lewis Hamilton of truck racing, leading by a similar margin as well, nearly six seconds ahead. There's Jonathan Willis in 157. After his off earlier on, a little bit of damage to the rear of the truck where he was clipped by Craig Reed. He's uh, not all that far off being lapped by Flying Ryan in his new Mercedes Actros. Here's the Division 2 boys. 
Powell, Vince, Smith and Borthwick still the order. This is good driving by Jock Borthwick from Hoyk in uh, southern Scotland. A little bit of smoke from the back of Smith's truck there as he goes through Graham Hill Bend. I think that's possibly a very small uh, leak in one of the pipes there. It's lap Craig Evans in the number 10. Keeping an eye on the number one here. You can see Ryan working away. You can see how tightly packed into their cabs these drivers are. Got my close up there as uh, Fly in Ryan continues lap time this time so he's lapping under one minute the only driver apart from um, David Jenkins currently lapping under a minute yeah, last lap was a 59.4 there's Stuart Oliver in second place Martin Gibson third and David Jenkins fourth they pretty much held station for the full duration of this race is Jenkins closing up yes he is very slightly on Martin Gibson for third position Stephen Powell continues to dominate division two with his newly liveried MAN. His gap uh, was 3.2 seconds. Now, is Brad Smith closing on him in the slightly lightened number 16? See as they go over the line, it's the DAF catching the MAN. Over the line they go, still 3.3 seconds in it. Borthwick, happy with the podium place, I think, in third. Craig Reed is next, then Adam Bintz. Craig Evans and Jonathan Willis the lap down. John Powell has retired into the pits. Craig Evans just gets out of the way. Let's see quicker runners through there. Now David Jenkins has caught Martin Gibson for third. There's a bit of damage to Jenkins' truck there. Didn't see what he hit. He hit something though, you can see. John Newell, his beautiful new uh, MAN. Built with support from uh, MAN in Germany. Chasing there in fifth position. Gibson gets away a little bit on the straights. Now, David Jenkins doesn't seem to have the straight line speed in the 69 truck here. A couple of laps to go for Flying Ryan Smith out in front. With Brad Smith, no relation, holding off for Borthwick for second in Division 2. And here comes Ryan. Certainly a bit of smoke or steam coming from the Mercedes there, but it's not slowing him down. Don Newell laps Jonathan Willis. The leader coming up to lap Craig Reed. Looking at the um, time left here, 1 minute 20, so I think they're going to get two more laps out of this. So we should see a 16 lap race to kick off the season. Oh, and somebody slowed there, that's Borthwick. Borthwick has stopped on the home straights. Now that might be an early finish if he can't get it going again from there, because that could lead to a red flag. The uh, 32 truck has stopped on the uh, front straight I saw there. He was third in uh, Division 2. And the red flag is coming out. We have a red flag because of that stationary truck. I thought the red flag got straight away. There is Jock Borthwick. What a shame. He was on for third in Division 2 on his debut. I don't know what's happened there. He stopped uh, right next to the pit wall. And of course, a very dangerous position there with the trucks coming uh, out of Clark Curve, hard on the throttle. The red flag comes out. The race will finish with one minute to go. So, chequered flag showing on the timing screens then. So, it will be a win for Ryan Smith. There's only one minute. Uh, or so left to go so the race I don't think will be restarted Stuart Oliver second Martin Gibson third fourth will be number 69 David Jenkins uh, fifth number 18 of John Newell and 681 Mark Taylor seventh the division two winner number three Stephen Powell uh, eighth and second in division two number 16 of Brad Smith ninth and third in division two recovering after a spin Craig Reed in the 68 so you see the result confirmed. Uh, Jock Borthwick shown as 10th, but he won't be classified as he brought out the red flag. So 10th and 4th in uh, Division 2 will be Adam Bint in the Volvo. 11th overall will be Jonathan Willis on his debut in the MAN. And uh, he will take 7th in Division 1. And the final finisher, number 10, Craig Evans with his MAN. John Powell pulled off into the pits after a couple of laps. An early finish then to our first truck race of the season and it's flying Ryan Smith and Stephen Powell who take the win starting their title defences in perfect fashion. Uh, Ryan, uh, race one, congratulations, talk us through it. Yeah, we went out in quality this morning, obviously the new brand, Mercedes-Benz, it's the first time we've uh, driven it this weekend. It looks very shiny and new, I have to say. Yeah, <laughs> um, we went in qualifying, did one lap and got a really fast time, so I said to uh, Arnie, the main mechanic, let's come in and 
uh, see what other people do and nobody got near it so that's all it was needed and race one it was just a, a matter of controlling from the front and yeah. You know, doing his job, but it's just a pleasure to be back now. It's, after what it's so nice, isn't it? What is this thing like to take around the indie circuit here? It's very good. Oh. You know, a seat card back, weather's good, yesterday wasn't so good, but we've got new sponsors on board, UFI filters, you know, party come back with us again. It's, you know, we've, we've had companies have gone through tough times, but yeah. they've, they've stayed with us. Um, and, and hopefully this year can be a successful year again. But well, it certainly was last year, wasn't it? Uh, race two coming up, of course. Now I heard, heard a little birdie tells me you were saying you can go even quicker. We can go quicker. <laughs> um, but it's about tire, saving the tyres, saving the engine. So the guys aren't going to work till late. So we're going to play. We'll play safe. We'll get round turn one in single file. Then we'll start yeah. attacking and trying to pick people off and. Uh, see what we can do from there but the early signs with the new Mercedes is good uh, as I said we've got new support with sponsors yeah. the partners have been fantastic so you know we're, we're, we're on we're on to something good this year I think I think so I, look, what sort of life can you get out of these tyres can I mean how long do they last we should do today for keep the inside rears to the front yeah uh, so we should get on today and see how they hold up by the end of place today and uh, yeah see where we'll go from there so man, best of luck for race too. Always a pleasure. Thank you. A reverse grid in each division from race one. So it's 157 Jonathan Willis, the newcomer who starts on pole for this second race alongside 81 Mark Taylor. Second row 18 John Newell and 69 of David Jenkins. Then on row three Martin Gibson number 11 alongside number seven Stuart Oliver. Ryan Smith number one has to start from row four this time. Then there's a gap and we've got division two. The two uh, non-finishers from race one should be starting from the very back. They don't count in the reverse grid. So in pole position for Division 2, number 10, Craig Evans, alongside 5, Adam Bint. Second row, 68, which is Craig Reed and 16 of Brad Smith. Third row, number 3, Stephen Powell and 32, uh, Jock Borthwick. And the final row, 6, John Powell and 41, Simon Cole, should be there. Truck, the pace truck is in pit lane. Here we go, race 2 of the weekend, the final race of this Saturday for the British Truck Racing Association Championship. Jonathan Willis and Mark Taylor on the front row. They come up towards the red lights. The power comes on and away they go. Super start by Mark Taylor. He will take the early lead as they go into Paddock Hill Bend. Division two are flagged off behind Craig Evans and Adam Bint leading them down towards Paddock. Looks like it's Bint in the Volvo. Oh, we've got a spinner. We've got a couple of spinners uh, seen from the cab of Martin Gibson there. He's got through on the inside. One of them is Mark Taylor. The other is Jonathan Willis. We've lost our two front row men already and I think that has put Martin Gibson into the lead as they come out of Druids for the first time. Up. So the red flag is out, we'll try and see the reason, we've got a couple of trucks, in fact uh, we've got several trucks in the gravel trap at uh, Paddock Bend, Stuart Oliver is one of them, uh, Mark Taylor and Jonathan Willis have gone off as well, we'll try and see a replay. Yes indeed, uh, just, just looking down onto the bottom of Paddock Hill now, we've got Trucks Ride Recovery starting the uh, laborious task of dragging the two stranded trucks out of the gravel. But yes, Stuart Oliver seems to be relatively unscathed, just showing those many years of experience now, uh, the ability to get yourself going uh, on the gravel. We've just seen a replay of what happened there, it was a bit of an over-optimistic lunge by David Jenkins trying to get up the inside, he clipped the back of Mark Taylor and sent him uh, into a spin, so uh, that's what happened. Willis and Oliver went off in avoidance. Here they come up towards the red lights on board with Martin Gibson as we get underway. What's going to happen this time? Into Paddock Hill Bend up towards nearly 100 miles an hour before they reach Paddock Bend. Mark Taylor and Jonathan Willis are going to join in from the pit lane. Adam Bint has taken the lead in Division 2 in his Volvo, but it's John Newell who leads the way up into Druids for the first time, David Jenkins in second, Martin Gibson's third, and it looks like so far they've all got round okay with John Newell in the lead. Yes, looking back to Division 2 now as we just come round Druid. Uh, Steve Powell trying to make his way down through Graham Hill, Craig Reed trying to get past John Borthwick, uh, sorry. Jock Borthwick, newcomer, who's doing quite well to hold his own at the first half of this race, but uh, Adam Binth screaming ahead of the Division 2 pack, closely followed by Brad Smith. So there are the Division 2 leaders coming through clearways. Stephen Powell in behind uh, Borthwick, as you say, their pointy Simon Cole under fire as well, but it's John Newell who will lead the 
first lap then over the line ahead of David Jenkins Martin Gibson behind them Ryan Smith's doing the fourth he's got ahead of Stuart Oliver then the Division 2 leaders already the cavalry charge from the pit lane starting to come through Mark Taylor and Jonathan Willis but uh, John Newell under pressure the uh, tanker lorry businessman from uh, South Yorkshire under fire from David Jenkins on board with Martin Gibson charges his way down Graham Hill chasing after David Jenkins holding third place at the moment see how hard he is having to work at the wheel of that MAN the first five breaking clear slightly then we've got the uh, division one and two mixed further back as David Jenkins up the inside as they go into Surtees and he takes the lead away from John Newell two. Uh, absolutely super tight pat now as Ryan Smith riding the bumper of uh, John Newell certainly not going to make it easy for him though is John and of course Stuart Oliver and Martin Gibson behind them as well Ryan now looking for the inside line. Can he squeeze past John? Oh, he's on the grass, but John not quite letting the door shut. Unfortunately, no, Ryan takes that now straight through. Quite a professional move. And I do believe we see Stuart Oliver making the move past John Newell. He must be having some kind of issues uh, with the truck today, Dave. Well, Stuart Oliver coming through there as well. Uh, Martin Gibson will uh, possibly try and see what happened to him at Paddock Bend a lap ago. We may have a replay of that the, uh, num from the number 11 truck yeah, Ryan Smith was there on the inside was there contact there? I think Ryan may have just uh, bounced off the kerb coming out of paddock which sent uh, Martin Gibson out wide, he just ran out of room I don't think there was any contact there, Martin bouncing through the gravel on the outside and Stuart Oliver able to come through as well, so the lead is with David Jenkins from uh, Ryan Smith now, one and a half seconds in it at the end of the last lap, it'll be less than that this time, Oliver third Gibson fourth, fifth is John Newell Still leading Division 2 is Adam Bintz, looking for his first win in a couple of years. He had uh, a fair few problems with the black uh, Volvo White last season. It seems a bit of a misnomer to call it a Volvo White in that livery, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. Uh, had the new livery uh, for last year's season uh, and a couple of technical issues really held him back for the entire year, unfortunately. But uh, uh, having Gage. some pressure gauge issues and uh, taking it a little bit easier earlier on today certainly seems to have fixed up that truck and making some serious headway uh, as we continue the uh, second race of the weekend here. Uh, Brad Smith under pressure from Mark Taylor, but this is obviously Division 1 on Division 2. Just not finding that gap past the uh, Brad Smith Division 2 truck and Craig Reed uh, taking up third position of the uh, Division 2 race here uh, looking for a space past obviously Brad Smith and Mark Taylor well Ryan Smith has taken the lead from David Jenkins he got through on the inside at Paddock that time through as we see Mark Taylor making the move on Brad Smith at uh, Graham Hill Bend David Jenkins under pressure from Stuart Oliver now for second place we've got eight minutes of this restarted race to go so we're not yet at half distance but Ryan Smith's Mercedes already through into the lead the Mercedes Actros very very tight top three now for division two Adam Bint looking very comfortable at the front there Bradley Smith at Brad Smith sorry trying to find every possible gap through with uh, with Craig Reed snapping at his heels and uh, of course further ahead of the division two pack now we've got Mark Taylor pulling nicely away but is it too late in the day to be looking for the rest of the division ones that is the only problem as they come down out of division twos down the pit straight into paddock hill again two and a half minutes roughly left of uh, today's race uh, back with the division ones now we're still looking at that undying battle of defense from uh, dave jenkins as martin gibson trying to pull out all the stops late braking taking the outside line on board again now with the number 11 man martin gibson truck and it is looking very very tight certainly testing dave jenkins with everything that he's got um, really really it's going to be an exciting finish if he continues to push as hard as he is Stuart Oliver perhaps taking the back seat for the moment looking for a gap if one of these two make a mistake Dave yes he certainly is the 10 time champion and one time European champion just uh, keeping a watching brief on his protege Martin Gibson ahead of him swinging their way through Druid's Bend 90 seconds of the race to go while well, Ryan Smith's away and God is leading by 8 seconds now he's heading for his second win of the weekend but can Adam Bint hang on to win Division 2 a wheel arch hanging off the Volvo there as he heads through Paddock Bend well Ryan Smith we've uh, hardly seen him he's run away and hid at the front of the field flying Ryan in his Mercedes Actros is heading for his second win the ex Norbert Kiss truck the great Hungarian but Brad Smith is really attacking now Adam Bint for the lead 
Can Adam in the uh, Volvo, the Oxfordshire driver, hang on in front? Well, he's certainly got the heritage. He's been doing this for quite a while. Uh, the truck has been with him the whole way as well. So uh, if anybody can hold that position, it's going to be Vinti. Uh, but of course, Brad Smith, fantastic bit of driving. Uh, they almost look uh, inseparable, those front three, uh, with Craig Reed just following the same line as the uh, the two front runners of Division 2, looking very comfortable. Um, I think they're just going to be happy to take the podiums they've got at the moment. There's no real need to be risking the rest of the weekend uh, with a last minute dash. Although, although, wait as we see now we've got Bradley Smith looking down the outside line uh, will he take no it doesn't back down behind uh, Vinci now uh, Craig Reed still just looking for that gap between the two of them I believe yeah here comes the battle up into Druids the leader about to start his final lap I think Brian Smith he's heading into the last lap we'll concentrate on the division two battle as they swing their way out of Druids down the hill into Graham Hill Bend so Ryan Smith surely heading for victory Who's it going to be as they come through in Division 2 though? Adam Bint holding on the deal line. He's a very defensive driver. I saw him do this at Pembrey a couple of years ago where he held the entire Division 2 pack off to take a brilliant win. Ryan Smith is away and gone. He's heading for win number two here this evening. David Jenkins is still holding second ahead of Martin Gibson. Still Adam Bint is holding on ahead of Brad Smith. They're about half a lap behind the Division 1 leaders, there's David Jenkins has held his second place ahead of Gibson and Oliver. They're coming round towards the finish line now, the chequered flag will be in sight. It's going to be two out of two for the man going for his sixth consecutive title this year. Here comes Flying Ryan out of the final corner, the new Mercedes Actros working faultlessly. It's going to be two wins out of two for Ryan Smith here at Brands Hatch. He takes the win in British Truck Racing Championship race number two of the weekend. David Jenkins will come over in second ahead of Martin Gibson. Great drive by him. Stuart Oliver fourth. It will be John Newell in a rather lonely fifth place. But who is going to win the uh, Division 2 battle? We'll hand back to that there on the Cooper straight now heading towards Surtees for the last time. And Brad Smith is going to go for it. Here they come. It's Adam Bint somehow holding on ahead of Brad Smith. Everything he can throw at him. Craig Reed's going to have a look up the inside as well. They're going to finish line astern. The three Stephen Powell trying to make it four. But I think Adam Bint has just about done enough. He had a very poor season in 2020, but he's going to hold on for victory here ahead of Brad Smith. A very happy Adam Bint comes over the line and wins Division 2. That's a terrific drive. And we can confirm the results of that one. Ryan Smith, the winner by just under 10 and a half seconds. The winning margin in the end, another clear win for the new Mercedes. David Jenkins holding off Martin Gibson for second, a determined drive by Martin. Stuart Oliver fourth ahead of John Newell, a rather lonely fifth. Mark Taylor made it back up from the pit lane start to six. Well done to him. Adam Bint in seventh overall, a great win for him in Division 2. He'll be very pleased with that. Bradley Smith took eighth place, less than a second behind him. Ninth place going to... Well, welcome back after the lunch break here at Pembrey Circuit here on BARC TV. Dave Gonard here with you, ready for the afternoon racing. We've got three races remaining on our coverage today. The next stop them is our fourth truck race of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship 2021. It will be a 15 minute race We're using the reverse grid of course from the race we had this morning. The top eight will be starting in reverse order. Two more races to go after this. Later on we've got the junior saloons out again and then we will have another truck race at the end of the programme. So the trucks will be in the assembly area hopefully we will see the full complement this time. Hopefully Bradley Smith, number 46, will make it out. And hopefully Paul McComiskey as well, who uh, missed the first race, had some problems yesterday. Uh, Tony Smith is scheduled to be on pole in number 45. But as it's his first time in Division 1, he may opt to start behind the other Division 1 trucks. Simon Faulkner, number 92, Division 1 driver in the Avico, will start from the back of the grid for all races this weekend because, as we said earlier, he is a novice, his first ever weekend in truck racing. Well, before we get this next race uh, out on track then, we've got uh, a few interviews with Pointy recorded a bit earlier on. Well, here we are at the bottom of the paddock here. Uh, with uh, Team Smith, uh, not to be confused, of course, Ryan Smith, we've got father and 
Sun on team Tony and Bradley Smith. Now, we spoke to Bradley earlier on this weekend. And after a bit of a mishap. I promise, here we are with Stuart Oliver in front of his very nice ball nose. Uh, Volvo number seven. Uh, uh, how are we, Stuart? First of all, very good, very good. Yeah, enjoying the weather in uh, sunny Wales. So yeah. uh, good feeling. Uh, apologies there. As you can see, one or two uh, problems with our interviews. There, we'll try and rectify those for later on for you. Always good to hear from our drivers with uh, pointy down in the paddock. We'll have a look at the uh, starting grid then for our uh, next race. They should line up as follows for race four for the trucks this weekend in pole position 45 Tony Smith. We'll wait to see if he does start from pole this time. His first ever Division 1 meeting alongside number 86 Tom O'Rourke. Second row number 7 Stuart Oliver and number 11 Martin Gibson the two GT tyres trucks. 69 David Jenkins on row three alongside 18 John Newell and then we've got number 81, great second place earlier on, Mark Taylor, alongside the number one of Ryan Smith, going for his third win of the weekend. Then there's a gap, and we've got the Division 2 trucks. Number 10, Craig Evans, will start alongside three of Stephen Powell, the reigning Division 2 champion. 32, Jock Borthwick, starts alongside the 68 of Craig Reed. His winning run brought to an end earlier on by the next man on the grid, six of John Powell. He starts alongside Adam Bint, number five, who pulled up in the uh, earlier race. And behind them, we'll have number 92, Simon Falk. Now, we'll wait, we'll wait to see if 46, Bradley Smith, and uh, 99, Paul McComiskey do join the grid for this one. As we say, we'll uh, wait and see on that one. More problems for Adam Bint. Not been... Uh, happiest of weekends for him I told it was um, a problem with the rear suspension earlier on uh, damage to the rear axle that put Adam Bint out of the race we did see him looking at the back of the truck when the red flags had come out so uh, problems with his rear axle hopefully they've been repaired on the Volvo white aerodyne and uh, he will be back out for this one There is one more meeting to go for the trucks in uh, 2021. That's uh, in November at Brands Hatch on Bonfire Weekend, traditional truck racing and fireworks festival. I believe the Junior Saloons are also out at that one for their championship finale. They've got another uh, meeting as well in the interim at Donington Park. The MGs, meanwhile, the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship, have finished their season. Their last race of the year was earlier on few cars being re rebuilt over the winter for that one. We've seen the Sharp family already. We heard from Will Sharp after his win earlier. He and his brother Henry are going to be out in the championship next year. OK, uh, apologies again for our problems with our interviews earlier on. We're going to go for take two on our interviews recorded earlier in the paddock with our man Pointy. Well, here we are at the bottom of the paddock here with uh, Team Smith. Uh, not to be confused, of course, Ryan Smith. We've got father and son team Tony and Bradley Smith. Now, we spoke to Bradley earlier on this weekend after a bit of a mishap uh, in your truck. Um, and, and now we, we join Tony in front of his truck. This is a Division 1 truck, am I right? Yes. Yeah. Now, for those of people at home that well, obviously haven't seen you before, um, where have you been and why are you back now? Well, we competed in 2017 last in the Sisu, uh, Finland, Finland built truck, and uh, had a good year, finished second in the championship. And then we've had a couple of years out we're trying to rebuild the Sisu, and now we've just treated ourselves to a new MAN, and uh, Bradley's going to come and drive that next year, and he's let me 
have a play in it this weekend, which oh. has been good fun. So you've warmed it up for him, yeah. uh, and now he's thrown his dummy out the pram, smashed up his old <laughs> one, and yeah. you're like, OK, well, it looks like I've been relegated again. Dad, get out of the seat. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, that certainly seems the way. Um, we, we've been uh, very quickly asking uh, drivers up and down the pallet this weekend what biscuit best describes their driving style. So, as a few examples, we've got Martin Gibson's a party ring, Dave Jenkins called himself a chocolate hobnob. Uh, what, what would you say? A custard cream, isn't it? A custard, custard cream? cream. What, 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 what makes cream. It? Smooth driver. Smooth, smooth driver. driver. Cream driver. With two biscuity <laughs> layers. Is that what it is? I don't know. I think I've had a few ball moments. Oh, <laughs> okay. There we go. So ball bar and a custom. Two classics, I might add. Two classics. So you'll be going out in this Division One truck and racing in Division One. Now this is your first time in Division One. Yeah, first time. So I'm start at the back. Just uh, take it easy. Follow them. Yeah, see what I can do. <laughs> I mean, you, yeah, I mean, your dad's been at the back most of the weekend anyway, so at least we'll know where the truck is. <laughs> Gotta keep it there. <laughs> He's probably going to smash my times out there now. Oh, I hope he doesn't smash yeah. anything else yeah. out there. My yeah, goodness lovely. me. So we're just going to behave ourselves, get around the track, and, and, and have a good sunny afternoon. Yeah, yeah. people on the tarmac and uh, yeah. want to show for everyone, keep the trucks on the track. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and, and have we got any future for. Oh, uh, who's, who's helped us out getting yeah. this truck, you know? Yeah. Made yeah. it possible for him to. And have we got any uh, chances of seeing Tony Smith back in the BTRC next year? Yeah, well, the CSU's in. Craig Reed's got our CSU building it now. So. Um, there's a lot of change. He's going to update it and bring it all up to uh, the present day, and next year she'll be out next year. Wow, well, that's uh, well, well, good, good chance. That's uh, fantastic yeah. to hear. Well, yeah. thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you very much for the bourbon, uh, <laughs> bourbon biscuit, and the custard cream. I think you're more the custard cream. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Right then, uh, father and son Tony and Bradley Smith here at uh, the uh, the paddock. Let's go and have a word now with Stuart Oliver. I promised here we are with Stuart Oliver in front of his very nice ball nosed uh, Volvo number no. 7. Uh, how are we Stuart first of all? Very good, very good yeah, enjoying the weather in uh, sunny Wales, so yeah. uh, good feeling, the truck's going well, so quite happy. That's fantastic, uh, it is going well, uh, some people have been saying you've been going like a rocket man. Rocket man, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that one, but, but uh, uh, yeah, it's, um, it is going well, it is going well. Uh, Qualifying was very well, yeah. uh, very good. Um, just got pipped oh, yeah, for the fastest for Paul, but uh, no, I'm happy with it. Well, obviously, when, when we had the engine troubles at the previous races, we thought it was going to be a, a long, long time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I know where you're going, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it was big engine troubles, but yeah. we got yeah we got the bottom of that, got it put together, and uh, you know it's it's still a bit of life in the old girl yet, and the. Or the old dog, yeah. and the truck's not bad either. That, that is indeed true, very true indeed. Yeah, so so uh, where, where are we starting in this race now? We'll be, I think, a finished fourth, so uh, we'll be we'll be in the, you know second row from the front, so in for a good chance on this one, see what we can do and get, uh, thing is, get 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 up the front quickly and get away, that's that's the thing, you know, and uh, see, see what can secure a win. Yeah, definitely fantastic. And, and of course, you may have heard the, the, the rustle of biscuit wrappers around the paddock this weekend. Y you also went for a ginger nut, is that right? Well, you put, sort of put the words in your mouth, I think, just purely because of the colour up top. But uh, <laughs> ginger nuts is the obvious one, but jammy dodgers, without a doubt, is mine. Jammy dodgers. I like jammy dodgers. That's two for jammy dodgers, three for ginger nuts. I think we're doing very well. Well, Stuart Oliver, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, good luck. The breeze is picking up, and the last we want is for you to be like a candle in the wind. So have a fantastic afternoon. Uh, Stuart Oliver, ladies and gentlemen, down in the paddock here at Pembury. Uh, let's go and over to Dave now for some racing action. You do realise, Pointy, we're expecting a buffet of biscuits for our cameramen at the next meeting at Brands Hatch, don't you? Anyway, it's thanks for Pointy for his input there, and now we know why the 45 truck is starting at the back in uh, Division 1. It isn't Tony Smith at all. Bradley swapped into the Division 1 truck. That didn't appear on the uh, timing earlier on. It was still showing up as Tony, so uh, the timekeepers didn't know. So that's why the 45 has changed places, it's changed drivers. They'll be starting at the back again for this um, next race. They are on the grid at the uh, MAN pace truck from Martin Oliver Transport leads them off. Tom O'Rourke on his own on the front row in the uh, MV Commercials and Hyab Cranes MAN Scotsman. 
then we've got the two GT tyres trucks, Stuart Oliver in the Volvo. Hadn't had the best of weekends so far. Martin Gibson, number 11, inherited the win in race two yesterday when Ryan Smith was penalised. Mark Taylor, John Newell, there's Ryan Smith, there's Bradley Smith in number 45. Craig Evans heads up Division 2 ahead of Stephen Powell. There's Jock Borthwick, also sponsored by MV Commercial, the white and tartan liveried MAN, the Stuart Grand Prix livery almost. There's Craig Reed, looking to extend his lead for the Division 2 title. Simon Faulkner at the back, Adam Bintz back out, the rear suspension repaired. We haven't got Paul McComiskey or, um, well obviously we haven't got Bradley Smith because he's in his father's truck in Division 1 now. So no Paddy Mac, engine dramas yesterday. At least he got past qualifying this time though. Snetterton, he only managed one lap in the qualifying session, that was his weekend over. Still beautiful conditions here at Pembroke. Simon Fong, we're at the back, just learning his craft in the ex Simon Reed of Eco. Simon, the brother of Craig. Simon now kept busy running the family freight business. Ready for the fourth race of the weekend then for the British Truck Racing Championship. Tom O'Rourke on his own on the front row of the grid. Stuart Oliver and Martin Gibson behind him. Keep an eye on Bradley Smith in number 45. He's taken over Father Tony's truck. Craig Evans and Stephen Powell head up Division 2. This will be a 15-minute race around the Pembrey National Circuit. Adam Bint back out after some repairs to his rear axle following that retirement in the earlier race. Here we go then up towards the red lights. The pack about to be unleashed. The power comes on and away they go. Watch for Stuart Oliver up the inside. Tom O'Rourke will move across in the MAN to defend. A good start by David Jenkins up the inside of the hairpin. Watch the 69 truck trying to take Martin Gibson. He's on the back of Stuart Oliver as well. Gibson's going to have to give way to him and Jenkins will take third place as they swing through Hatchet's hairpin for the first time. Oh, and Craig Reed goes around. There goes the Division 2 points leader. Was there contact there with Stephen Powell possibly? Throws it round a cloud of tyre smoke. Craig Reed is off after the rest of the field. Look out, Simon Faulkner. That's your team's old truck that just nearly hit you there, Craig Reed. Tom O'Rourke's got the lead, but he's got Stuart Oliver on his tail as they head down into Senna for the first time. Third place, David Jenkins, and a gap back to fourth, which is Martin Gibson. Ryan Smith, going for win number three this weekend, is in fifth position. But Martin Gibson will not be too happy to see his title rival, David Jenkins, up there challenging the leaders. Behind Ryan Smith, we have got John Newell. Stuart Oliver has a look there coming into Carter's curve. It is Tom O'Rourke, the Scotsman who holds the lead. He's had just uh, one win, if I remember rightly, in his British truck racing career. That was last year. Jenkins in third. Then it's uh, Gibson, Smith, and they're really throwing these trucks around. David Jenkins onto the grass as they come out of Honda curve. Down towards Hatchet's hairpin for the second time. Tom O'Rourke just about holding his lead. Martin Gibson under pressure from Ryan Smith as they go into Hatchet's hairpin. It's three tenths of a second in it for the lead as they went over the line there. O'Rourke under real pressure from Oliver and from Jenkins. Watch for Ryan Smith coming through. He was certainly aggressive in the earlier race as he was yesterday. And the lead has changed indeed there at the crossing. Stuart Oliver has taken over from Tom O'Rourke. Jenkins followed through into second place. It's two of the most experienced men in British truck racing out front. Then Oliver from Jenkins. O'Rourke down to third. And Simon Faulkner into the pits in number 92. Problems with the Evico. Maybe there was a bit of contact there on the first corner. Mark Taylor down in seventh place in his MAN, number 81, ahead of... Brad Smith, there's Ryan Smith on the attack, no relation to uh, Tony and Bradley as, as we heard earlier, quite a lot of Smiths in uh, UK truck racing, Stuart Oliver leads then, it's been a while since we've seen him take a win, here comes Ryan Smith, Martin Gibson defending as they go down the pit straight into Hatchet's hairpin, Division 2 is being led by Stephen Powell in the number 3 ahead of Adam Bintz 
and Jock Borthwick, then John Powell, Craig Evans and Craig Reed recovering from that spin is now on the tail of Craig Evans. Don't know whether there was contact on the first turn. Stuart Oliver leads by just over a second ahead of David Jenkins and Tom O'Rourke is rather the uh, cork in the bottle in third place. He's got Martin Gibson and Ryan Smith closing up. Smith up the inside. You saw this move from a few times earlier on. He nudges Martin Gibson there coming out of centre. Geroff says Martin Gibson keeps his foot in and keeps the place in fourth position through Brooklands. Ryan Smith will try again. Here he comes up towards Carter. He's got the quicker exit in the Mercedes at cross. He'll go through here up into fourth position yes he's through Smith up to fourth now going after the leaders O'Rourke still in third place going well in his MAN it's the Volvo Stuart Oliver that leads it but David Jenkins has done the fastest lap 1 minute 11.484 now Martin Gibson under fire from John Newell in the uh, number 18 so Smith now ahead of Gibson all this is helping him close up on uh, championship leader David Jenkins in the points race Martin Gibson was only 10 points ahead of um, Ryan Smith in the points coming into this weekend Smith don't forget going for his sixth straight division one title there go the two leaders Smith up the inside there been battling it out with Borthwick here in division two Ryan Smith was on the attack there as they came through towards uh, Senna has he got past O'Rourke yes he has Gibson in behind them. He'll have a go at Tom O'Rourke now. John Newell next in the order, then Mark Taylor. The wiper going on uh, Ryan Smith, but uh, there's no rain falling at the moment. Mercedes now looking to chase down Oliver and Jenkins. Let's see what the gap is to David Jenkins in front as uh, Martin Gibson under fire there from uh, John Newell. The gap for the lead is just under one and a half seconds now. The gap between Jenkins and Smith is just over four seconds. So he's got a bit more work to do here, Ryan Smith, to catch the leaders. The Division two leader is now Adam Bintz. What's happened to Stephen Powell? Stephen Powell over the line. He lost a few seconds on that lap. He's down to fourth in Division two, so he must have made a mistake somewhere. So Stephen Powell is down to fourth. It is Bintz who leads Division two. So we watch the Division 1 battle. Martin Gibson up the inside has just taken John Newell there. Where's Jock Borthwick and John Powell together? There's the Division 2 leader we just caught a glimpse of. Still Stuart Oliver from David Jenkins. There's Smith closing them down. And then the battle for fourth. Tom O'Rourke, Martin Gibson and Mark Taylor's got ahead of John Newell now nearly tangled with Martin Gibson earlier in the lap just under nine minutes to go so Smith is five seconds off the lead he's just over three seconds off second place as Martin Gibson nearly goes into the pit lane exit there trying to pass Tom O'Rourke Smith's just done the fastest lap 110.739 so he's certainly on the pace in fact, he's the only driver to have lapped under 1 minute 11 so far, Brian Smith. Gibson all over Tom O'Rourke. Then we've got Mark Taylor. He's got ahead of John Newell. Pick up Division 2 shortly. It's still Adam Bint leading Jock Borthwick in Division 2. So the Powell's hitting problems. And uh, Stephen Powell's lost another place to uh, Craig Evans further back. He must have a problem with the number 3. Thought he'd made a mistake earlier on, but uh, it looks like he's slowing down. Still the fight for fourth goes on in Division 1. Bradley Smith's not far away either, driving uh, his dad's number 45 MAN. We heard earlier that the Reed family are currently rebuilding Tony's Sisu, so we should see that back out next season. Great to see entries on the up again in the British Truck Racing Championship. Two seconds in it for the lead now. Ryan Smith is 2.2 seconds further back. He's uh, taken over a second out of David Jenkins on that lap. So it may be three for the lead soon as John Newell tries to make a move on Mark Taylor in the number 81. Second earlier on. 
Meantime, there's uh, been a change in Division 2 again. Craig Reed is now up into second in Division 2 behind Adam Bint. He's got past John Powell and Jock Borthwick. Now, there is our Division 2 leader, Adam Bint. This would be a welcome change in fortune, but he's under fire from Craig Reed, who is flying back up the order. Remember, he spun on the first corner and ended up at the back of the field. Third place behind them is Jock Borthwick. Then it's John Powell. Stephen Powell is uh, back up and running uh, at speed again. He had a couple of slow laps. He's now at the tail of the field. Last of the 14 runners, of course, Simon Faulkner has retired. Craig Reed putting Adam Bint under pressure. Looking for win number three this weekend. And talking of under pressure, David Jenkins is now under pressure from Ryan Smith. They are deadly rivals, these two, and there's almost contact there as they come out of Hatchet's hairpin. Here they come towards the crossing. Swing their way through the left-hander. Jenkins holding that second place. And they're closing on Stuart Oliver slightly now. Smith with another fastest lap of the race last time through. 110.625. He could go for it here into uh, Senna, but David Jenkins moves to defend. He said there's a big rivalry between these two, and there's contact there coming out of centre. Smith up the outside. Jenkins, the championship leader, coming into this weekend, hangs on. Smith almost pushing him as they come out of Brooklyn's corner there. Smith will go to the inside at Carter's. No, he's not close enough to the Digraph Transport Morris Lubricants MAN. Mercedes chases on. Meantime, this is allowing Stuart Oliver to build up his lead again in the number seven Volvo. Just under five and a half minutes of this race to go. Smith to the outside on the run down towards Hatchet's hairpin. Now side by side, Jenkins will be later on the brakes on the inside. Swing their way through Hatchet's hairpin. There are the leaders in Division 2. Bint from Craig Reed. Keep an eye on the Division 2 battle as well because Craig Reed is trying to catch Adam Bint here for the lead and make it three wins for the weekend and uh, eight wins in the last two meetings. Hard to know where to look at the moment because we've got this battle for second developing. The lead is back up to four seconds now for Stuart Oliver because David Jenkins does not want to let... Uh, who does that belong to? Either Craig Reed or Adam Bint, I think. But again, Smith clips the back of Jenkins. We said there is a deadly rivalry between these two. Jenkins, he, he's not bothered about catching Stuart Oliver, look, he just does not want to let Ryan Smith pass. Smith's getting impatient now, this could get interesting, let's hope it doesn't get ugly. He's pushing David Jenkins there through Carters. Now what's going to happen into the hairpin this time? Which side's Ryan Smith going to go? We've got four minutes remaining. It's all about these two at the moment. Ryan Smith down the outside. Jenkins holds the inside. We saw this at Donington earlier this year. David Jenkins defending as hard as he could to not let Ryan Smith through. Meantime, flick back to Division 2. Craig Reed up the inside takes the lead of the class at Carter's. So Reed is through in the Avico. Takes the lead from Adam Bitts. So for the third time this weekend, Craig Reed up front. He won the two races yesterday. He was just beaten in this morning's race by John Powell. Now Jock Borthwick and uh, John Powell himself in the DAF closing in now. Four of them for the lead in Division 2. Stephen Powell, I thought he had a problem. He has pulled into the pits, so the number three is out of the race. It looks like he is going to lose his title this year to Craig Reed. And meanwhile, oh, there's Powell. He has rejoined, in fact. I thought his race was over, but he's just come back out of the pits. Stephen Powell in a rather hobbled MAN. Meanwhile, David Jenkins has, is still holding back. Ryan Smith. Smith to the inside. He drops back a little there. Sizing up his next attack on David Jenkins. Stuart Oliver's escaped in front, so they're not going to catch him. They only care about defeating each other, these two. Look out, Stephen Powell. They're bearing down on you. You can see a bit of damage on Ryan Smith's uh, left front corner there. A bit of the bumper dislodged. And again, he clips the back of Jenkins just to let him know he's there. Craig Reed, meanwhile, starting to pull away in the lead of Division 2 now. Bint still in second place. It's uh, Borthwick third in the white truck. Then John Powell, Craig Evans, the other runner in uh, Division 2. And then Stephen Powell, who has been lapped. They've got past uh, the number three. OK. What's he going to try this time, Ryan Smith? 
Coming up towards Brooklyn's corner. Again, he's pushing David Jenkins almost there. I reckon Ryan Smith would make a decent stock car driver. As I look to the inside again, Jenkins doesn't leave him any room. He's forcing him over almost onto the grass there into Carter's, but Smith keeps his foot in and he's got it. Finally gets through. Taken him several laps, but the pressure paid off. And uh, has, has Jenkins slowed up there? He's dropped back quite uh, a few lengths. Now, did Jenkins miss a gear or something as a result of uh, that? He's going to try and close back up again. We've got 90 seconds left on the clock. Meanwhile, there's been a change in uh, the Division 2 battle. John Powell's got past Jock Borthwick for third in the class. First two have got away. Okay, it will be uh, last lap this time around for our race leader Stuart Oliver. We've almost forgotten about Stuart Oliver. He's nearly eight seconds ahead in the number seven Volvo. There's the leaders in Division Two. So Stuart Oliver is going to win this. It's going to be his first win for a while. So we're in the closing stages now. Stuart Oliver. 10-time British and one-time European truck racing champion is heading for the victory there is Ryan Smith in second and coming into the final lap this time with less than a minute left on the clock there is Stuart Oliver last lap board is out the way they've been uh, swinging about down the pit straight there that marshal is a lot braver than me Away goes Oliver, one of the all-time greats of British truck racing. Ryan Smith is still second, he's two seconds clear of David Jenkins now. Things calming down in the closing stages, meantime the battle for fourth is now headed by Mark Taylor. We haven't uh, been able to concentrate on that because there's so much going on elsewhere. It's Mark Taylor up to fourth ahead of uh, Gibson, Newell, O'Rourke and uh, the 45 of Smith and is there a I thought Craig Reid lost the lead of Division 2 there no, there was a delay, delay on his transponder on the uh, timing screen there is Mark Taylor ahead of uh, Martin Gibson but Stuart Oliver's coming up towards the chequered flag it's a win for the number 7 Stuart Oliver that's his first win in a few meetings Ryan Smith number one comes home in second place following a uh, rather bruising battle with David Jenkins who takes third certainly entertainment all the way Mark Taylor a good fourth he's having a good weekend fifth goes to Martin Gibson sixth place it is John Newell Stephen Powell finishes a lap down after a trip to the pits then Tom O'Rourke in seventh well done Bradley Smith in 8th place first time in Division 1 today and then who's going to come home to win Division 2 it is Craig Reed 3 wins this weekend and surely now he's close to sewing up the Division 2 title Adam Bint comes over in 2nd John Powell will take 3rd in Division 2 Jock Borthwick 4th oh we've lost um, Craig Evans he pulled into the pits with uh, a lap to go so we've lost the number 10 MA and there it is in the pit lane behind the pace truck so he's a non-finisher so the only other finisher will be Stephen Powell a lap down because we lost Simon Faulkner at the end of lap one congratulations Stuart Oliver statistically the most successful British truck racer of all time that's another win to the list here at Pembroke and we'll await for them to head back to Park Fermi two races to go on our coverage this uh, weekend at Pembroke let's check out the provisional result then Stuart Oliver the winner just under seven seconds clear of Ryan Smith in the Mercedes who fought his way past David Jenkins for second place Ryan Smith got the fastest lap as well I think his quickest lap time half a second quicker than anyone else managed Mark Taylor a good fourth he's having a good run in the MAN of late Martin Gibson in fifth Although uh, finishing behind Smith and Jenkins, that won't help his championship challenge. John Newell in sixth, ahead of Tom O'Rourke.
well done uh, Bradley Smith it was not Tony as we later learned in number 45 in eighth place Craig Reed wins division two finishing a couple of seconds ahead of Adam Bintz up and down weekend for him continues John Powell in third in the class then Jock Borthwick Craig Evans we saw pull into the pits so he won't be classified as a finisher Stephen Powell will albeit a lap down after making a pit stop and we lost Simon Faulkner after one lap So the truck's pulling into the pit lane. The truck's been pulled up in pit lane. We'll uh, wait for them to join our uh, interview crew, Pointy and Co, down in... Um, Park Fermi. Yes, the pace truck will now head them uh, through. Of course, they all have to be controlled by the pace truck at all times, except when racing, as a safety measure. Well done to all our drivers there. Some robust tactics there from Ryan Smith once again, just as we saw in the earlier race. As we said, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing Ryan Smith have a go at Formula One stock car racing. He'd be a, a fair driver in those, I think. They're up at Skegness this weekend. OK, I think we can now head down to uh, Pointy and Company down in Park Fermi to hear from our winners. Well, lots of action happening down in the paddock. We just had a little girl fall over where Stuart Oliver is about to pull in to get weighed up. My goodness, it's all action packed here at Pembury Circuit. We can see behind us now the number seven Kelsa and GT sponsored uh, Team Oliver racing truck driven by Stuart Oliver takes first place. He truly was a rocket man on this race. Uh, let's quickly go and have a chat to him in the cab. Stuart Oliver, what a fantastic result. We had the kids up on the uh, on the bank here, dancing like tiny dancers. Uh, it was absolutely brilliant. It just goes to show that you're still standing. I'm still standing, you're right there. <laughs> and if we move on to the jammy dodgers, that's the secret. <laughs> absolutely fantastic result. I mean, we saw you early on making those moves in the first lap. You really stuck it in. I mean, what happened behind you? Did you, did you, did you notice anything? No, I just saw the gap was getting bigger and bigger, so I was quite happy with that. I did think Dave would uh, create a bit more of an issue, a problem, you know, because he was he got past uh, Tom, and uh, I thought, oh, well, you know, we'll have to get a wriggle on. But uh, I was pleased when the race was ended because I, I think I didn't have much tyres, much tyre or brakes left. But it was uh, it was a very enjoyable from where I was sitting. You held your own through the entire race. Really, really great result. Uh, we had a bit of contact between Ryan and Jenkins behind you, actually, which obviously saw them two slow considerably uh, through the race. But anyway, thank you very much for that performance. Fantastic show for all the crowd cheering around up and down the banks. So thank you, Stuart Oliver, and congratulations on your first place. Yeah, thank you very much. Look forward Fantastic. to another one. Indeed, we'll have to find some more Alton John puns. Uh, let's quickly pop over now. Uh, and see who have we got where is he see if we can find him ah. where's he gone where's he gone it's at the back typically lots of action someone who just missed a, uh, a result here John Powell taking a fantastic third place but uh, we need to get a <laughs> <laughs> is this is this yours? Is this <laughs> is this <laughs> we've got a we've got a Tunnock's caramel bar. You weren't eating these whilst you were going round, were you, Jack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep these in here for special occasions for you. <laughs> so you don't so be eating like, it today. I'd like to present this to you. Oh, thank you so much. And you'll buy them forever more. Will I ever? Will I? I, 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 I this is the one with the coconuts on the outside. You can dunk them in your water. I can dunk them in my water. In my water. Oh goodness, no. We'll find some non-alcoholic beer to dunk that in. I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, really, uh, you know, uh, commiserations for the result there. You were so, so close. I know, it was tough. Eh? Um, done a bit with the back end, went the wrong way, lost a bit of drive and 
difficult to drive here. It was so tight. I mean, to be honest, we saw you and John Powell coming together on this first bend. It looked very tight. Uh, you know, he just shut the door on you. Oh, it, it's racing. There wasn't anything bad about it. Like, it was just yeah. racing. And, um, no, I thought I had the truck to begin with, but as the race went on, it just got worse and worse to hang on to. And, um, it's a long race when it's like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's just going yeah. backwards. And yeah, you just keep looking behind you, oh, geez, hunting you down so. the entire time. Yeah, well, you did very well to stick where you were. We'll go uh, try again, eh? Still, you got points. Uh, yeah, you definitely yeah. weren't last, so that's yeah. a bonus. <laughs> and you've also provided us with snacks for the walk back to the paddock, so it's very good of you. Thank Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Borthwick, thank, thank you very much. much. Uh, right, I think we'll go and find some more drivers to talk to. One more? Fantastic. Let's go now and have a word with Adam Bint, I believe, if we can find him. Because Adam Bint, obviously, earlier on this weekend, having some technical difficulties with his steering box, uh, meant that he actually missed the uh, second race of tomorrow. So if we can get him out of the cab, uh, we'll be able to have a quick chat to him. Very daintily holding my uh, caramel tonics bar. Never been gifted a tonics but a caramel bar before. So we can see here actually the truck's getting weighed as we speak. This is to make sure we didn't have not enough weight on during the race. So we have a quick word with Adam Bean. Adam, fantastic result. What a comeback for the weekend. Yeah, it's starting to perform as we should do. We still ain't got enough corner speeds to keep Craig behind us, but we can try again in the next one. Well, it's fantastic you made it out on this race. I was just telling the audience how you missed out on race two on Saturday. I take it you've got no issues now. I'll be back out for race three. Yeah, wash it up, Dean's eleven to go again. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much, Adam Bin. A man of few words. That's it now down here at Park Ferme. We'll hand back to Dave in the studio. Thanks, Pointy. What on earth is this? A truck race meeting or a stand-up comedy gig? Always great entertainment from Pointy. Fair play to him and uh, biscuits all round. Fair play to Jock Borthwick as well. Anyway, there's going to be a short break in the action now over the next couple of races. Our next race scheduled for about 20 past three on our coverage, which will be uh, the Junior Saloon cars. And then we've got the trucks coming up uh, after that a bit later on for the last race of the weekend. So we're going to take a break now and show you some action from earlier in the season on uh, the ARC at TV. Hope you're enjoying the action. We're back at around 20 past three, but it's uh, it may run ahead of schedule. It may run uh, behind schedule. So. Uh, Keep uh, an ear to the ground. As we say, schedules can be fairly fluid at uh, UK national racing events. But uh, hopefully we'll be underway on time at 3.20pm with our next race of the Junior Saloon Cars. In the meantime, some uh, highlights of previous events on BARC TV 2021. Hello and welcome to Red Bank Corner here at Donington for your first British Truck Racing Championship race of the weekend. I'm of course Pointy and uh, we do welcome you. The weather at the moment is looking pretty good. We had some showers earlier on this morning but hopefully the track has had a few more races on it since then uh, and the uh, the surface has started to dry up a bit. Uh, we can see as we look across Red Bank now uh, a huge number of spectators which is absolutely lovely to see. A lot of people making the effort to come out and see some great British motorsport this weekend. That's enough from me. I'll head back to Dave in the studio now and let's see what happens. The first race here at Donington. Right, here is the grid then for the first truck race of the day and it's Martin Gibson, number 11, who has set pole position with his MAN alongside number 69, David Jenkins. John Newell's new MAN, the race winner at Thruxton a few weeks ago on the second row alongside number one Ryan Smith the five-time consecutive champion with his new Mercedes Aptros. Row three number seven Stuart Oliver ten times champion alongside returnee number 33 Steve Thomas and on row four number 81 Mark Taylor and 86 Tom O'Rourke completing the division one 
runners is number 157, Jonathan Willis, newcomer this year with his MAN. Then there's a gap, and we've got the Division 2 runners, and it's uh, number 32, Jock Borthwick from Scotland, who's set a surprise and welcome pole position. His first season as a truck racer, he's on pole alongside championship leader, 68, Craig Reed. Second row in Division 2, number 5, Adam Bint with the Volvo White, and 41, Simon Cole with his team hard Mercedes. In the third row, number 3, Stephen Powell, and number 12, Michael Oliver, son of Stewart, in his Scania. Next on the grid, 46 Bradley Smith and number 16 Brad Smith. Commentator's nightmare there. 16 Brad and 46 Bradley is how we tell them apart. Then row 11, we've got number 10 Craig Evans and 6 of John Powell. Appeared at uh, Brands Hatch at the start of the season, I think. No, that was uh, Brad Smith. Apologies, John Powell is on his first appearance of the season. And Paddy Mack, number 99, Paul McComsky in his Volvo rounds out the grid of 20 trucks. In terms of where they stand, Craig Reed. Pace truck leads them round, he will pull off into the pit lane and then we will be ready to rumble. This is going to be a cracker, the first of five truck races here at Donington Park. Convoy in the park, 2021, celebrating all things trucking at the home of motorsport in the Midlands. The pace truck is into the pit lane when the red lights go out, we will be underway. David Jenkins on the outside, Martin Gibson on the inside, away we go. The first truck race of the weekend is underway down towards Redgate Corner for the first time. Martin Gibson holding the inside line. He'll just about try and hold the lead there. David Jenkins trying to go round the outside in truck number 69. The two MANs together. There's a little bit of rubbing there. Somebody running wide. That's 86 of Tom O'Rourke over the kerb. It looks like they are all going to get round Redgate for the first time. Down to the Crater Curves and Jenkins has got the lead around the outside from Martin Gibson. Third is John Newell. Ryan Smith in the Mercedes in fourth ahead of Stuart Oliver swing their way into the old hairpin one truck dropping back a little at the back that's uh, Paul McComsky in his Volvo Brad Smith side by side with Stephen Powell in the midfield but it's David Jenkins who leads the way the man from Stafford in, car num in truck number 69 car racing comes later Jenkins from Martin Gibson John Newell in third not the easiest of circuits for the big rigs to overtake on here at Donington. They go past the infield paddock there, full of uh, show trucks on display. We'll have some uh, truck parades on the circuit uh, over the course of the weekend. Through Coppice onto the exhibition straights. Down towards the Robert Chicane for the first time. This is where things can get interesting. Tight Chicane this one, the right, then the left. Jenkins from Gibson. Newell, Smith, Stuart Oliver, Steve Thomas, Mark Taylor and the Division 2 trucks you can see ke keeping up with Division 1. It's Jock Borthwick who's got the early lead there. Stephen Powell trying to make a move on Brad Smith. They've been side by side for the whole of the first lap. Jenkins leads by one second ahead of Martin Gibson in the GC Tyres MAN. It's MANs 1, 2 and 3. Then we've got Ryan Smith in his Mercedes. The man going for a sixth consecutive British title in fourth position. Then the Volvo of Stuart Oliver. Gap back to Steve Thomas next then. Mark Taylor, Tom O'Rourke. I think uh, we've had a change there for ninth. Yes, Jock Borthwick, the Division 2 leader, I think has got ahead of um, Jonathan Willis. Then Craig Reed in the red Iveco. And then we've got Sir Michael Oliver in his Scania, number 12, the blue and white machine. Along the bottom of the course. The bridge used to go across the circuit, the old bridge here at Donington as they come out of the old hairpin. The leaders are up at McLean's. Nice, steady start to the weekend. There is Mark Taylor, number 81. He started uh, his life in truck racing as a sponsor for Ryan Smith before deciding to take up the sport for himself. There's one trucks coming down to the chicane for the second time and David Jenkins starting to pull away slightly in his MAN. Martin Gibson in second. Ryan Smith is biding his time at the moment in fourth, looking to uh, launch an attack when he can. Down the straight make up. Two laps completed. Fastest lap of the race for David Jenkins. 126.761. He's increased his lead by just a couple of tenths of a second. Oh, a little bit sideways there, a bit late on the brakes into Redgate for Jenks there. He's uh, gathered it up again. That's going to allow Martin Gibson to close in slightly. And a big cloud of smoke there. A blow up for Brad Smith, number 16. Bit of flame there as well. He's pulled onto the Melbourne loop out of harm's way. Very much out of the race there. Brad Smith, the Unity recovery truck. And uh, Paddy Mack is slowing up as well. That's Paul McComsky with his uh, Volvo. Truck racing veteran in the number 99. 
So no change among the leaders so far. Then a gap back to uh, number 81 of uh, Mark Taylor. Steve Thomas, sorry, is next, then Mark Taylor. And then it's Tom O'Rourke before we've got Jock Borthwick, the Division 2 leader. I think Jonathan Willis in the more powerful 157 truck has got back ahead of him now. Martin Gibson defending here from John Newell for that uh, second place. Jenkins still leads, just under nine minutes of this race to go. The lead gap is still six tenths of a second. John Newell three tenths back in third place. And then Ryan Smith is two seconds off the lead, one second off Newell. Battle is on for sixth place with uh, Steve Thomas being caught now by Mark Taylor for sixth position. Is Paul McComsky still running at the back? I don't think he is. So they've lost him, Simon Cole and Brad Smith. 17 trucks still running though. And here's the first three of them. Through McLean's. Leader getting away very slightly. There's Steve Thomas in the number 33. Half yellow, half white. Reverse livery of Stephen Powell's truck. Chased by Mark Taylor in number 81. That's the battle of the sixth place overall, sixth in Division 1. Down towards the uh, Robert Chicane once again, and the uh, three leaders almost line astern now. Ryan Smith looking on from behind. A slightly subdued start to the day for Ryan Smith. Watch for John Newell here. He's got a run on the inside coming down into uh, Redgate. He has to move back across because Gibson moves to defend into Redgate corner, the first corner on this Donington circuit and Gibson has held that second place but Newell looking pretty determined here, the number 18, the man from uh, near Barnsley in South Yorkshire, Tom O'Rourke in trouble, he's pulled up, that's on the run into Coppice, the MV Commercial MAN. Here comes the second place battle and John Newell has got through, up into second on the entry to the Craner Curves there. Ryan Smith in fourth place. Good to hear from uh, Pointy giving us uh, some of his points of view from trackside there up at Redgate, enjoying the action. The first three have uh, pulled away quite Oh, we've got a spinner there. That's Stephen Powell. Now, I wonder if there's been some contact there because there was a bit of bodywork missing from the left front corner of the number three MA, and that's lost Stephen Powell a couple of places. I wonder if there was contact with Adam Bint because those two are battling. Try and pick up Binty's truck when we can, see if there's any damage to that. Tom O'Rourke out of his truck, out of the race at Coppice. Here's the battle for the lead in Division 2. Jock Borthwick is being reeled in now by Craig Reed. And Craig is lapping a few tenths of a second faster in his Iveco, looking to keep his championship lead, looking for his first title. Here come the leaders. David Jenkins still leads up. Simon Cole's back out in the team hard Mercedes Beast. Let's hope he doesn't get in the way of our race leaders here. You can see Jenkins has pulled away a little bit. There's a bit of bodywork in the middle of the road there. That's probably from Stephen Powell's truck. Jenkins is going to have to lap the number 41 Mercedes here. Simon Cole, the man from Dartford in Kent. Not giving way there at um, Redgate. I don't think he's, he's realised the leader's there. He will do now. Here's Jenks up the inside. And a little bit of... Is that smoke or steam from John Newell's truck? He's lost second place. I think John Newell's got a problem. He's, seen, he's lost second place there to Martin Gibson. Oh, and uh, the battle in Division 2 coming to a head, and Craig Reed lost it. He's going to go round. Round he goes. Mind the pit wall. Nice recovery by Craig Reed. A full 360. Michael Oliver avoids him there in the number 12 and gets through. That's for second in Division 2. Goodness me, a scary moment there for Craig Reed as he attacked into the chicane on the back of Jock Borthwick. The truck came around on him. He got onto the grass. 360 and he was able to save it luckily we've got just over two minutes of this race to go so it's looking good for David Jenkins but has John Newell got a problem here where's the battle in division two Michael Oliver trying to hunt down Jock Borthwick for the lead can he take a win on his comeback for number 12 Scania there here are the leaders Jenkins clear of Martin Gibson now oh we got somebody off that's Stuart Oliver Stuart Oliver is in the gravel now where's that I think that's at McLean's. Yes, he's gone straight on there. I don't think he's got as far as the tyre wall. The gravel has arrested the progress of that truck. And Ryan Smith's up to third. Yeah, it looks like we've lost John Newell. 
There's Newell, he has got a problem and I think he's coming into the pits. That's uh, smoke from the uh, engine of John Newell's MAN. It is a new truck for this year. So John Newell is going to be heading pitwoods, I think. There's a yellow flag in sector two. That's because of uh, Stuart Oliver off. He's trying to get going again. He's creating smoke. Goodness me. Stuart Oliver looking more like a steam locomotive heading uh, along the outside of McLean's there. I don't know if he'll get going again. So that's going to put Ryan Smith up into third. Steve Thomas will be in fourth. And look at this, John Powell charging uh, down the inside of Adam Bint there. The DAF gets past the Volvo into the chicane. There he is, number five, Adam Bintz, the Oxfordshire driver. It's back ahead of John Powell in the uh, blue number six DAF LF. First time we've seen John in action this year. This is a battle for uh, fourth in Division 2, an 11th place overall now. So the order is now Jenkins, Gibson, Ryan Smith, Steve Thomas, Mark Taylor is up to fifth. It's uh, Jonathan Willis in sixth overall, number 157, the ex-hot rod racer on the short ovals, as we heard from Pointy. Then we have got Jock Borthwick. This is the battle for the lead in... in Division 2, excuse me. There's the two Mercedes together. Ryan Smith a lap ahead of... Uh, well, a couple of laps ahead of Simon Cole, because he's been into the pits. And now the battle for the lead is joined. We're going into the last lap, and here comes Martin Gibson. The uh, clock is counting down to zero, so it will be chequered flag this time around. Can David Jenkins hang on ahead of Martin Gibson? They're well clear of Ryan Smith. I wonder if everything's all right with that Mercedes, you know. Ryan Smith is a long way back, nine and a half seconds back on our leaders. There he is. I reckon there's something amiss with that Mercedes, you know. He's not on the pace at all here. Here come the leaders. Down into the old hairpin. Looks as though David Jenkins may well have done enough ahead of the GT tyres MAN of Martin Gibson. But it's a race of attrition behind. Doc Borthwick is heading for his maiden win in Division 2 in his first season of truck racing because Michael Oliver has got his mirrors full of Iveco. Craig Reed is going for second place, recovering after his spin when he tried to take the lead. Here they come into Coppice. Is Martin Gibson going to make a move here then as they come into the Robert Chicane for the last time? I don't think he's going to be able to. He's not going to be close enough. Our first winner of the weekend here at Convoy in the Park is going to be David Jenkins in truck number 69. There is the chequered flag and Jenkins in the Digraph Transport. Morris Lubricant MAN takes the win. Martin Gibson comes over in second in the GT Tyres MAN. And they are well clear of the championship leader, Flying Ryan Smith, who will take third place. Here comes number 32, the uh, MB Commercial Fact. MAN of Jock Borthwick. He's going to be heading for his first victory in Division 2. Michael Oliver and Craig Reed bearing down on him. I don't think they're going to catch him here. Here they come into the chicane for the last time. Jock Borthwick from Hoyk in the south of Scotland. He's heading for victory. Michael Oliver trying to hang on for second place on his return to racing after a couple of years away. Jock Borthwick slides out of the chicane for his first ever Division 2 victory. Well done, Jock Borthwick. A win for Scotland. Michael Oliver second, just ahead of the recovered Craig Reed after his spin a couple of laps from home. We'll have the uh, results confirmed then of uh, truck race number one. David Jenkins, your race winner, completing 11 laps in a time of 16.13.599, just under a second clear of Martin Gibson. Well back in third and struggling, it seemed, in the closing stage. He lost uh, a lot of time in the uh, last few laps. Ryan Smith in third, then Steve Thomas on his return taking fourth. Mark Taylor was fifth, and Jonathan Willis a fine sixth, the newcomer this season in his MAN. Jock Borthwick, a first ever Division Two win for him. Well done to the Scotsman in seventh overall. Michael Oliver on his return, eighth in the Scania. Ninth for Craig Reed, recovering from a spin, and Adam Bint rounded out the top ten in the black Volvo. Stephen and John Powell, 11th and 12th, then Bradley Smith in 13th place, and the final finisher was Craig Evans. We lost John Newell as we saw into the pits while on for a podium place in the number 18. MAN. Now behind him would have been uh, Stuart Oliver. We lost him into the gravel up at uh, McLean's, that was. Uh, Simon Cole was still running at the finish, but a few laps behind, so we'll wait to see if he's going to be classified. 
Uh, we also lost Tom O'Rourke, Brad Smith, number 16, suffered what looked like an engine blow up, and Paul McComsky was also uh, an early casualty. Paddy Mac in the number 99, the older Volvo FM12. All right, and with the two winners, Division Two and Division One, two very, very happy gentlemen, two very, very wet gentlemen as well. Jack, we'll start with you. Congratulations on the Division Two win. Uh, point you mentioned in the presentation there, it's been a little bit of time coming, improving every week. How do you feel? Great, fantastic. We've had a, a journey out uh, between problems, teething problems, building the truck. Dave's helped us no end with the truck, and uh, just great to get that result. Like, uh, good, loved it. And how special is it to have a presentation in front of quite a few people, get a bit of champagne on you as well? Missed that, haven't we? Yeah, it's that long since I don't know how to open the champagne bottle. <laughs> That'll <win. laughs> I'm sure you will. Uh, Dave, if we can bring you in, congratulations. You, we spoke to you before the race. You said the mission at the start of the weekend was five, five wins. One out of five, not bad going so far. Yeah, we don't want to get too cocky yet, do we? But that was really great. It was great racing with Martin in turn one. And then, you know, we had some good speed at the start of the race. I had a couple of fairly big moments on some oil that was down and two big saves, uh, one in Redgate halfway through the race and uh, one on the way into the chicane at the end of the race. But uh, no, we were all right. It was obviously tough luck for some of the people around me, but we, you know, we need to take our good luck when we can. Yeah, John Newell and Martin Gibson kept you honest for a lot of that, didn't they? They did, yeah, but we had enough pace to drive away from them. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm sure it's going to be a long, long, tough weekend, but the best way to start. So, um, no, we're great. We're so happy to be back here racing at Donington Park in front of the live audience. And I'd like to um, dedicate this win to all the dads in the world, especially mine, because it's been two years um, since he's been to see us. So, uh, brilliant. And uh, I've got my family here supporting me. I've got my engineer here. He's got his family here supporting me. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we're so happy happy to be back and back where we belong. Well, we saw you up there with the kids as well, David. I know it means a lot to you. Congratulations, mate. Thank you very much. Trucks coming up to the rolling start then. Race number two of the weekend over 12 minutes. Jonathan Willis and Mark Taylor on the front row of the grid in their MAN. Steve Thomas and Ryan Smith on row two. No Stuart Oliver after problems in race one. We're also missing Brad Smith and Paul McComsky, although he may be starting from the pit lane. We'll wait and see. This will be a 12-minute race for the British Truck Racing Association Championship on a slippery track here at Convoy in the Park 2021 at Donington Park. Away they go and a super start from row two by flying Ryan Smith in the Mercedes. He's going to try and slot in on the outside into the first third. He's not got the room there though. Jonathan Willis in the Dawson Direct MAN. Oh, he's gone straight on there. He's been caught out by the wet track. I think there's been some contact further back there between John Powell and Adam Bint. They come together on the outside. Trucks going everywhere on that first corner. It's 81, Mark Taylor is taking the lead here. Yeah, John Powell involved there with Adam Bintz. I think we may have lost uh, Jonathan Willis there as well. Yeah, he's got going again. Powell rejoins at the back. It's Mark Taylor that leads. Ryan Smith in second. Martin Gibson's come through already into third place. Steve Thomas is fourth. Paddy Mack has joined in from the pit lane, number 99 in his Volvo. He's at the back of the field. Simon Cole's back out as well. We are missing Brad Smith number 16 and we're also missing Stuart Oliver problems for him in race one start to sort themselves out then around the first lap there's Jonathan Willis he slid wide on the first corner in the Dawson direct MAN his first season in truck racing bit different to short oval hot rods but he certainly acquitted himself well there's Steve Thomas so welcome back to him the other Birmingham based driver here at Doddington today three more races coming from the trucks tomorrow and Ryan Smith is attacking for the lead he got the better exit from Coppice Corner there he's up alongside Mark Taylor number 81 and surely the Mercedes at cross is going to take the lead here on the inside yes he's done so into the chicane third place is Martin Gibson then we've got Steve Thomas David Jenkins the race one winner is up into fifth position and 86 of Tom O'Rourke then we've got John Newell and the Division 2 leader is Jock Borthwick, but I think he's slowing there, coming off um, the chicane slightly, is he? No, he's OK now. Craig Evans is up to second in uh, Division 2. He's going well. And Bradley Smith, number 46, in third. So a bit of a sort out. Oh, and a bit of bodywork. Let's uh, come off somebody there. I think that was off either Stephen Powell or Steve Thomas's truck there. 
sideways there. Look at that, Mark Taylor. I think he's uh, trying to enter the truck drifting out in the uh, Fueltopia Arena next to the circuit with sideways action like that. He could lose out here to Martin Gibson. Tries to defend the line, and it's Thomas Jenkins and the rest of them. Engine Division 2 leader, number 32, Jock Borthwick, who's come through from the back of their grid already. It's Ryan Smith who leads the way, the five-time Division 1 champion. Followed by Mark Taylor up there in second place. Bit of a lock-up there from Mark Taylor. Under fire from Martin Gibson. And the number 11 GT tyres in there. It's a good run by Craig Evans, number 10. His first full season in British truck racing. He's third in the uh, Division 2 points, more through consistency as Mike Oliver locks up, hits the back of Stephen Powell, goes over the gravel. Is he going to recover it there? Sideways off the chicane, Simon Cole trying to get involved as well in the Mercedes. Slip and slide their way round, Borthwick still leads Division 2, ah, Adam Bintz, I wonder where he'd gone, he stopped in the uh, pit lane exit there, the black at number 5. He's out of the race, and again Mark Taylor drifting his way down the crane of curves, it looks spectacular but it's not helping his lap times. And Martin Gibson's right there on his tail. Through the old hairpin they come. Ryan Smith going clear and Martin Gibson did get through into second place there. Fourth place is Steve Thomas, then it's David Jenkins. Tom O'Rourke up there in sixth position. So Martin Gibson now going after our race leader, just as he did to David Jenkins in race one. This time though it's Ryan Smith out in front. Here come the leaders down the exhibition straight. Martin Gibson has closed in on Ryan Smith here. This is a good run by the Warwickshire based driver. Mark Taylor still third ahead of Steve Thomas, David Jenkins, John Newell. Jenkins a little bit wide there into the chicane, O'Rourke behind them and then Borthwick. Very impressive here, the Division 2 leader, keeping up with the tail of the Division 1 pack. John Newell up alongside Tom O'Rourke. He won't get through though because the yellow light is on there. That's uh, no passing in this zone. For safety reasons. Orphan's away and gone at the front of uh, Division 2. Looking uh, down at the timing there, he's, he's nearly nine seconds up on Craig Reed. It's sensational from Borthwick. Martin Gibson, meanwhile, all over the back of Ryan Smith. Now, he did another fastest lap of the race. 138.475 last time through. That's nearly a second quicker than Ryan Smith. Is he still having gremlins with that Mercedes, I won't? He didn't seem happy in race one. He slowed over the last couple of laps and dropped back in third place, Ryan Smith. And now he's having to defend from Martin Gibson up the outside yeah Ryan Smith's got a problem he's slow coming out of McLean's I thought he was having trouble there and his gremlins have struck again Martin Gibson takes the lead well this is rare indeed it is not often we see Ryan Smith hit trouble he's dropping down the order there second place is now Mark Taylor in the 81 and Steve Thomas up in third Ryan Smith in real trouble he's gonna have to try and make it back to the pits he may not even make it that far I can't remember the last time I saw Ryan Smith fail to finish a race but he is out of this one. So Steve Thomas up to third. Jenkins is fourth. And Tom O'Rourke up in the fifth place. He's going well. As I say that, he gets a bit sideways at the chicane ahead of John Newell there. Then we've got Jock Borthwick. This is a great run by Borthwick. He's keeping up with the Division 1 still here. John Newell draws alongside. Gets ahead of um, Tom O'Rourke there. Here's a battle further back between Simon Cole. John Powell and behind them Jonathan Willis. First time he's raced a truck in the West, just getting uh, used to his very smart Dawson Direct MAN. Father Dave and uh, brother Andrew, also short oval racers in hot rods for many years. Swing their way through the old hairpin, the leaders. And the red flags are coming out, we're told. The red flag is coming out, I suspect. Yes, it's because of Ryan Smith being parked up. He's parked on the inside of Coppice, couldn't get the truck any further. So the red flag comes out. Of course, no uh, such thing as safety cars in truck racing. It is a red flag if there is a problem. So the race is going to be stopped. There were 2 minutes 50 seconds left on the clock. I suspect that's going to be a declared result. 
A provisional uh, result then. Win for Martin Gibson by 2.3 seconds ahead of Mark Taylor with Steve Thomas in third. David Jenkins, the race one winner in fourth, ahead of John Newell and Tom O'Rourke. Jock Borthwick, the Division 2 winner, way ahead of Craig Reed. And then Craig Evans, a fine third in that division, ahead of Bradley Smith and Stephen Powell, a quiet race for him. Michael Oliver next, ahead of Simon Cole. John Powell recovering from a spin on the first corner. Jonathan Willis completing the finishers. We lost Ryan Smith, Adam Bint and Paul McComiskey. Yeah, you join us down in Park Ferme. Mike Gibson, second and a first on the weekend yeah, yeah. back at Donington. You've got to be absolutely delighted. Yeah, yeah. I love these conditions. It uh, makes it really interesting and mixes it all up. There's a lot going on out there, but happy to bring it back. Was it what you expected out there? Because obviously we've seen the rain pour at Donington for the last few hours. It's dried up a little bit. No one really knew what we were going to get, but what was it like compared to what you expected it to be? I expected it to be really slippy and really wet, but it was actually quite grippy. When you went offline, then you knew about it, but uh, no, it was a lot better than expected. And talk me through the race as well, because as you say, thrills and spills, as there always is in the trucks, but you've ended up on top in the end. Talk us through it. Yeah, I just making my way through. I got a lot of places on the first lap, and unfortunate for Ryan, it looks like he's had a problem, but it's a shame we could have had a good race. Cheers, bird. And there's the big boss in to say now. congratulations. It's been a fantastic weekend for you already. Still three races to come tomorrow. Forecast doesn't look like it's going to change. You must be feeling so confident. Yeah, feeling good. Um, we want more results to bring Stu's, one of Stu's trucks back in this position again, so let's do it. I wish you all the very best luck for tomorrow. Congrats on a fantastic Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, welcome back down to Park Firm. We've got the winner of Division 2 with me, Jock Borthwick. Second time lucky after you put it on the first first place in the first race, taken off you, but this time you made absolutely no mistake. Congratulations. How, how does that one feel? Great. I mean, the track was slippy, uh, tricky truck was good just steady away get the traction where he can and and just get the thing home like uh, I can imagine that wasn't the easiest task though with conditions like that no definitely no and I'm just learning there third meeting that out and it just getting the the whole grip level and and how it handles it eh? and what's it been like you, you mentioned their third ever meeting it's it's I'd imagine every single meeting you feel like you've learned an encyclopedia's worth of knowledge to take on to the next one what's the process been like for you it's huge learning but we've had a load of turbo problems and teeth we've just built the truck getting teething problems um out testing on Thursday I got six laps done the turbo again so Dave Jenks went away back and got a van loaded turbos at his shed and we made a turbo up on Friday and fitted it and it's a it's a Scania turbo running just now um, got a bit of lag on it um, but with these conditions it's, it's maybe okay because it's just torquing away so I'm just glad to get a finish eh, and finish some races eh. and what does it mean to you to get first place on, on the podium because obviously you say not been doing it a huge amount of time but to, to get a win must feel absolutely amazing fantastic yeah I just got the break there got away and um, got up through the middle at the start into the first corner a couple of boys run wide I kept it in tight and, and then just tagged onto the the back of the the group one boys and try to run with them for a little bit like yeah, so it just keeps you focused on the and it's no falling asleep man. well a big congratulations on the win you. get your first place hat in champagne again <laughs> and hopefully you keep this one this time thanks very much appreciate it yes the uh, reason that uh, jock borthwick's first win was taken off in there we didn't get the notification through until that second race was underway unfortunately he got a 10 second penalty for jumping the start in race one so Jock Borthwick penalised 10 seconds on his race time and that put him down to third behind Michael Oliver and Craig Rigg. The big rigs ready to rock and roll and rumble then here at Donington Park. 15 minutes of racing from the British Truck Racing Championship. Race three of the weekend here at Donington Park. Jonathan Willis on pole. John Newell alongside David Jenkins looking for his second win of the weekend as is Martin Gibson in the black and yellow MAN. Jock Borthwick and Michael Oliver are winners so far in Division 2. Here we go then. The pace truck pulls into pit lane. Waiting for the red lights to go out. They do so. The power comes on. And here we go. Watch for Ryan Smith trying to get down the outside in the Mercedes from the back of the Division 1 grid. It's Jonathan Willis on the inside, side by side with John Newell. will try and get round the outside into the first corner. John Powell's got the advantage in the DAF as they go, as Division 2 go into the first corner. We've got a collision further back. That's um, 
Mark Taylor involved. Uh, who's that facing the wrong way? Is that Ryan Smith that's gone in there? Uh, what has happened there? We've got uh, David Jenkins. It is Smith who's been hit. Oh my goodness, look at the uh, state of the Mercedes. Disaster for Ryan Smith, the reigning champion. There's broken suspension there. David Jenkins has got going again. Smith, I think, was hit by Mark Taylor, number 81. It was either Taylor or Tom O'Rourke, and David Jenkins with a lot of damage as well. So a number of the favourites involved there in Division 1. That, so with Ryan Smith's truck standed there, that is surely going to be a race stoppage. With Ryan Smith stuck at Redgates. There's damage there to David Jenkins, who's trying to limp it back round into the pits. It's John Newell who's got the lead ahead of Jonathan Willis and Tom O'Rourke. So it was Mark Taylor involved, but surely they're going to have to stop the race. Yes, the red flag is coming out because Ryan Smith struck his stranded there. Now, is his suspension broken? I don't think he's able to get going again there. He's having a terrible weekend, Ryan Smith. We heard he had electrical problems yesterday. Second attempt then with our first race of the day for the British Truck Racing Championship here at Convoy in the Park at Donington Park. This will be a 15 minute race. Jonathan Willis and John Newell head the Division 1 trucks. Second row, Tom O'Rourke and David Jenkins. Watch for Ryan Smith in the Mercedes. Jenkins and Smith involved in the first corner tangle with Mark Taylor at the first attempt. They're okay to continue. No Taylor on track. Division 2 are headed up by John Powell and Simon Cole. A truck will pull into pit lane then. 15 minutes of racing to come. Here we go then up towards the red lights. Ready for take two with British Truck Racing Championship. Race number three of the weekend. Away they go. Here we go down towards Redgate Corner for the first time. John Newell's made a good start. So has Ryan Smith up the outside. It's Newell who's got the lead into the first corner. Jonathan Willis holding second on the inside side by side between Jenkins and O'Rourke for third place. Ryan Smith goes out wide over the kerb. It's John Powell who leads uh, in the number six DAF in uh, Division 2. Craig Evans dropping to the back in number 10. Down the crane occurs. John Newell, the Yorkshireman, leads in truck number 18 with his new MAN. Willis has held second place. And it's Tom O'Rourke from Scotland in third in the number 86 MAN. DAF from Scania from Mercedes in Division 2. Fourth in Division 2, the defending champion Stephen Powell, the man from Kent. Along the bottom of the circuit they go then. Michael Oliver running well in Division 2 in the Scania, but it's Newell who leads the early stages from Jonathan Willis. Ryan Smith on the tail of his uh, rival for several years now, David Jenkins. David, a former champion. Faced by Ryan Smith looking for title number six in a row this year. Steve Thomas behind them, returning after a couple of years away in his... Uh, MAN there, he's got Martin Gibson all over his tail, winner in the, the second race yesterday, it was David Jenkins who took race one, down into the chicane they come, John Newell with the lead, Brian Smith dodging all over the tail of uh, Jenkins there, Martin Gibson making the move on uh, Steve Thomas, he's got through into sixth position, over the line they come then, John Newell with a lead of just over a second ahead of Jonathan Willis in second, good run here by the Birmingham based driver, the newcomer two truck racing this year in number 157. Tom O'Rourke in third. Got just under 10 minutes of this race to go. There's the Division 2 battlers. There's Stephen Powell. Almost the reverse livery of that on Steve Thomas's truck. His uh, MAN, the yellow and white halves. So here come the leaders. We see Michael Oliver leading Division 2 in the background there under the bridge. And into the pits has come Simon Cole. So he's had a problem with the Mercedes. Had a retirement yesterday as well. David Jenkins still defending from Ryan Smith and they're being closed down by Martin Gibson. Let's hope those electrical gremlins don't return for uh, Ryan Smith that he suffered yesterday. Failed to finish the second race. I can't remember the last time before that that Ryan Smith had a retirement. The new Mercedes Actros built uh, in Hungary by uh, European Truck Racing Championship star Norbert Kiss. There's John Powell going well second in uh, Division 2, his first appearance of the season. Jock Borthwick is up to third now as David Jenkins up the inside is going to take Tom O'Rourke as they come through Starkey's and Schwantz curve. Good move by David Jenkins. He's up into third place. Let's see if he can hold it as they come up to McLean's. Yes, he has. And Smith's got through as well. 
And now Tom O'Rourke defending, trying to defend from Martin Gibson. They're absolutely side by side as they go up towards Coppy. It's a spectacular sight there as they barrel their way into the right-hander. O'Rourke trying to hold the inside. Now Jenkins under fire from Smith. He's got to defend into the chicane here. Ryan Smith trying to get alongside the five-time British champion in the Mercedes Aptros. Jenkins defends. Now Smith moving back towards the inside. No, you don't, says David Jenkins. Tom O'Rourke still side by side with Gibson. They've been side by side for half a lap. He's lost that bit of momentum coming out of the old hairpin. He's forced wide over the curbs there by Martin Gibson, who goes through and up into fifth position. This is allowing Steve Thomas to close up as well in the 33. John Newell still leads ahead of Jonathan Willis. The gap just over two seconds now. And they're five and a half seconds clear of this scrap between Jenkins and Smith. O'Rourke's lost three places down into sixth position. Here's a battle in Division 2. Craig Reed alongside Jock Borthwick. He gets through, forces him wide over the kerbs. Borthwick nearly loses it. Steve Powell says, thanks very much. I'll go through as well. And so does Bradley Smith in the 46. All change on this lap then. Still your leader is John Newell ahead of Jonathan Willis. And they'll be hoping that the rest of them continue fighting each other behind. And they're able to pull away. Borthwick back up the inside. Retakes Bradley Smith in the Iveco. Bradley's father, Tony Smith, raced in this series for a number of years. He raced at a Finnish-built Sisu truck a few years ago, I remember. Up alongside David Jenkins, once again goes Ryan Smith, but he'll be on the outside for the right-hander at Coppice. Jenkins sticking rigidly to the racing line in his MAN. Six, six minutes, 20 seconds remaining. Smith tries to go for the inside again, down to the chicane, but Jenkins... Just not leaving in the room there. So it's good defensive driving by David Jenkins. Of course, it is letting Newell and Willis get away at the front. New fastest lap for John Newell that time through. 127.559. Willis over the line in second. He's dropped back from John Newell now. 4.7 seconds is the gap. Here comes Smith and Jenkins. They're soon going to be on the tail of Jonathan Willis for second place, I think. They've got Martin Gibson closing them down. This is a good run by Martin Gibson. Had a win yesterday in race two. Here come the leaders. You can see John Newell has pulled away now in the number 18, looking for win number two for his new MAN. Had a win at uh, Thruxton earlier this year, down in Hampshire. David Jenkins defends again. He's determined not to let Ryan Smith pass. Four and a half minutes to go. Here comes Martin Gibson. He's got a run on Smith and possibly Jenkins as well. Look at Martin Gibson. Great exit from the chicane. He's saying, well, if you're going to try and stick to each other, I'll get past both of you if I can. He's up on alongside Ryan Smith. He's going to have to be very late on the brakes. I don't think he's going to get round the outside into Redgate. Look at this. Three of them almost on top of one another there. Smith's going to try and go through the middle here. Jenkins again defends into the Craners. Crowd are loving this. Smith still holds fourth. He's got to defend at the same time as attacking now because one false move and Martin Gibson will be through. Down to the older hairpin once again. Four minutes to go. Still Newell from Willis. They're separated by four and a half seconds, those two, and further back by nearly six seconds now with these three. They're losing time, and Tom O'Rourke's closing back up again, and Steve Thomas. Could be five of them battling for third soon. Jenkins is the cork in the bottle, if you like, here. He's not giving way. Ryan Smith's getting wound up here. He's having to be careful. There's Gibson in the number 11, having a look as they go up towards Coppice as well. With a bit of luck, out of the chicane, he could get past both of them if you can get the uh, exit correct. There's the leader. Newell from John Willis. There is the 157, the Dawson Direct MAN. Great run for him in second place. Here comes the third place fight. It's soon going to be five of them because O'Rourke and Thomas are towing up onto the back of them now. Tom O'Rourke, who had a non-finish yesterday in the MV Commercial MAN and now Smith again to the inside Jenkins moves across Smith almost onto the grass swings back out to defend from Martin Gibson this is more like catering racing than truck racing through Redgate they go Smith out wide Gibson follows him now you can see the gap to Jonathan Willis ahead of them there's only two and a half minutes to go so there'll be a couple of laps to go this time, and here's the battle in Division 2. Jock Borthwick under fire from the defending champion Stephen Powell. He goes through. That's a move for third in the class. Michael Oliver still leads Division 2. There's the Scania. The Uvico of Craig Reed second, and the MAN's battling for third. Michael Oliver, son of Stewart. 
busy with his show trucks now and now he's out of racing for the weekend and Martin Gibson's got through he's got ahead of Ryan Smith that was to happen down at the bottom section of the circuit while we were looking back at division two I don't think they're going to catch the top two here you know there's only two minutes to go they might get two more laps out of this we'll wait and see Steve Thomas has got ahead of uh, Tom O'Rourke behind them and here comes Martin Gibson he's leading the attack on David Jenkins now he's thinking well Ryan Smith you couldn't get past David Jenkins I'll try and show you how to do it Smith seems to be struggling this weekend oh and uh, there goes the front bodywork look at that all over the home straight there bits of uh, bodywork everywhere off Ryan Smith is that a legacy of clipping the back of David Jenkins Look, he hasn't, got a, hasn't uh, punctured a tyre doing that because he ran over his own front bumper. Look at the state of the Mercedes. Jenkins still third ahead of Gibson. Tom O'Rourke seems to have slowed. Yes, he's dropping back. Is that a repeat of his problems from yesterday? He's down in seven. Now, how far behind is Michael Oliver, the Division 2? Yes, he's quite a way back. Less powerful with Division 2 trucks. Through to the bridge. Then up towards McLean's. Still the battle for third goes on. The lead gap is up to nearly six seconds now. John Newell is heading for victory. Jonathan Willis is nearly six seconds ahead of these three. He's going to take his best ever finish in second. There is Newell. It looks like he's going to have one more lap to go this time because there's 30 seconds left on the clock as he comes down towards the chicane. In the NWT Container Services, MAN comes up over the line to start his final lap. Look at the debris from... Uh, the truck of Ryan Smith. There's Willis in second. Great run by him. Here comes the third place fight. These trucks looking increasingly battered and bruised. Ryan Smith is going to run over his own debris there if he's not careful. Don't punch your tyres, Ryan. Up on Martin Gibson. It's still Jenkins holding third. He's held on in front of this group all the way. Steve Thomas sixth. Tom O'Rourke in seventh place. Down the Craners for the last time. Ryan Smith determined to get ahead of Martin Gibson now. Such a frustrating weekend for the British champion. Jenkins has pulled away a couple of truck lengths there. Smith tries again. There is John Newell meanwhile. He's heading for the second win for his new MAN this season. Has led all the way. Probably wondering where everyone else has got to. They're too busy fighting each other. Out of coppice for the last time. Jonathan Willis still in second. Still the third place fight goes on. Here he comes into the chicane though for the final time. The man from near Rotherham in South Yorkshire. Number 18, John Newell. A return to truck racing after several years away. A couple of years back comes in for win number two this season. The win goes to John Newell, and well done Jonathan Willis, a superb second place, his best finish of his debut season so far. Excellent stuff from the 157, David Jenkins does hang on for third, Ryan Smith's got back ahead of Martin Gibson for fourth place, Gibson fifth, Thomas sixth, and seventh place will go to Tom O'Rourke. Next three we will have the Division 2 pack a little bit further back and it's going to be Michael Oliver. Or he has been reeled in by Craig Reed in the OK Trucks Iveco for Reed Freight and Reed Truck Sports. It's going to be the GT Tyres Kelsa Truck Products at Scania of Michael Oliver for his second win of the weekend. Accelerates out of the chicane ahead of Craig Reed. Michael Oliver wins Division 2. Craig Reed comes over in second. Who's going to be third in Division 2? It's going to be Jock Borthwick ahead of Stephen Powell. That protects Craig Reed's championship lead. Bradley Smith in his uh, Iveco. He's got a little bit of damage to the bumper there. Comes over in fifth place. <laughs> we'll confirm the results of that uh, second of that uh, first truck race of the day, the third of the weekend. John Newell the winner by seven seconds ahead of Jonathan Willis. A brilliant second place for the 2021 newcomer. David Jenkins holding on for third. Half a second ahead of Ryan Smith with Martin Gibson having the settle for fifth. Although he did get the fastest lap. 
Sixth place went to Steve Thomas, number 33, ahead of Tom O'Rourke. Then we have the Division 2 trucks. Michael Oliver wins Division 2, finishing a second ahead of Craig Reed. Jock Borthwick third in that division and completing the top 10 overall. Stephen Powell was next home ahead of Bradley Smith. Then Craig Evans, John Powell, and a non-finish, sadly, for Simon Cole. He pulled the Mercedes into the pits after three laps. Fermi with the winner, John Newell. John, you made that look very, very simple, mate. Composed right from the start, let it out, took him home. Uh, didn't feel that way at the start, but once we got going and settled into a routine, I could keep pulling the gap and the gap and the gap. And then towards the end, they told me to put some quicker times in, trying to get a fastest lap, but we were just slightly off. So, But we had a good race, it was good fun. Yeah, and you were setting those fastest laps through the middle of the race as well. I think it helped you out that there was a fire raging behind you. Were you aware of that battle for third place? Yeah, I seen it all going off behind, but I could see how I keep pulling the gap, so I wasn't interested really. I was just concentrating on what I was doing. It's been a great weekend for you so far, hasn't it? Yeah, it's getting there. A bit of a bad day yesterday, but hopefully today will be better. Still two more races to come. Wish you the very best of luck with those. Thank you very much. And I'm going to grab a word, if I can, with the man in second place. Here we go. In front of the truck for his, uh, his first ever podium, I believe. A, 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 an amazing result for you, mate. I, Thank you so much. Second place. Yeah. I think it's only your third ever race, am I right in second thinking? Race, second race, brand action this one today. So, second ever meet, you're yeah. on the podium. It must feel absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing feeling. You know, there's a hard drive. There's some fast drivers out there. I tried my hardest then when we got there. So, congratulations to my team, my sponsors. You know, without all them people, we wouldn't have done it. It's an incredible achievement. What does what, what's it been like? Because obviously you're the newest one on the grid in terms of to this sport. You've had only two meets too, but it's it's a really exciting sport to be a part of, isn't it? A real family yeah, it's, feel. It's, it's completely different. Everyone's really, uh, how can I put it? They're really welcoming. They help you out. You know, um, it's 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 a hard thing to drive. It's going from car racing to this. It's completely different. You know, but we're getting there and we're learning. So really pleased with today's result. Well, let's see what we can do in the next race. Yeah, you are learning quickly, mate. Best of luck for the next Thank ones. Congratulations. So Thank you. All right, we're going to head on over here. Do stick with us because we're going to try and get the words from the men who are battling away in third place. That crazy, crazy battle between Dave Jenkins, Martin Gibson and Ryan Smith. We're going to try and just get a word. I can see Martin Gibson over here and Dave Jenkins. So let's, uh, let's see if we can bring them all in. Martin, Michael, can I bring you in? All right, Michael, we'll come see you in just a minute, winner of Division 2. Martin, we'll start with you because that battle for third place is one of the most entertaining races we've seen in a very, very long time. Talk us through it from your perspective. Yeah, that was brilliant. So much manoeuvres and everything, but it's all clean, it was all proper racing, it was brilliant. That's what you do it for, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. If we can have another one of those, then bring it on. Uh, talk, uh, talk about the... Uh, about the battles though between between Ryan, Dave and yourself because at one point you looked like you were out of it, you brought it back in, then all of a sudden you were the man ch challenging Dave. It was it was all over the place wasn't it? But I mean how well did Dave do to hold you two off because you were going at him pretty hard. Yeah well I, I sat back a bit because I thought these guys are going to take each other out and then it wasn't happening so I thought I'd better get involved and I got involved and cocked it up so I ended up at the back anyway. Uh, Michael, we're going to bring you in if we can. An another victory for you, mate. Three years out, you're on top of the podium oh, once again. You, it's going all right, isn't it? That's too easy, man. I, I tell you, I could barely look left and right. My neck's killing us. So, so it was a good job. I got, I got a good lead because Craig would have got us like foot. It, it does take a little bit of physical getting used to it, doesn't it? Because I know you've been in the paddock all this time, but sitting in the front front seat, that's a little bit different, isn't it? You're trying to stay on fit, like. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. I know it. It does take it out. Yeah, I tell you, your arm muscles are working. And bloody hell, I, there's a belt comes right up past your groin, that you've got to be careful of that one and all. <laughs> I bet you do. Right, we're going to let you get off. Oh, Best man. luck in races uh, four and five. We're going to try and find uh, Dave Jenkins and Ryan Smith. Uh, Ryan's just over here, so I'm going to grab him. Ryan, need to talk to you about that one, mate. That was, that was a hell of a race. What was it like to be a part of? Dave Jenkins' mum and dad must have fed him with a catapult, because I tell you now, it was that slow in that race, the pace truck overtook me at one point. I've never raced with anybody so defensive in more my life and defended for one point like he'd won the Formula One Grand Prix Championship at Checkered Flag. He wants to be ashamed of himself and his team wants to be ashamed of himself. The, the spectators come here for overtaking. From the word go, he spun me into turn one when I'd gone by him and for the rest of that race, he drove that slow, honestly. 
we've got an electric truck that does five mile an hour could have overtook him i'm just disappointed in myself that i didn't get by him but onwards and upwards to the next race will be more fireworks yeah i don't doubt it for a second so we're through that first term because obviously we spoke to you before the race and you want a big improvement on on yesterday were you worried at all that you might not be able to get out for that race uh well it's, the truck still wasn't right, we've still got a fuel issue, but you know, you make the best of the situation you can. Just so annoyed with other competitors doing that for one point and you know, stopping racing. You know, I enjoy racing if somebody's fair, but he was doing 20 mile an hour in some corners and I was crashing him up the rear, as you can see with my bar, because I couldn't go any slower. And I just said to him, Dave, he went, Well, I had to do what I had to do. What for third, fourth? You know, some people race that way. I race to win. I race to put a good show on for the spectators. I don't defend for 15 minutes. He obviously wanted to. That's his choice. Onwards and upwards. Onwards and upwards. Wish you the best luck for races four and five, Ryan. Thanks for talking to us. We're going to try and find a word with Dave Jenkins. Give him that little right reply. He's over there, I think. So uh, we're going to head on over to get our final interview after a really dramatic truck race here at Donington Park. Dave looks like he's having a bit of a debrief with his team. And uh, we're going to put some questions to him. Uh, Dave, if I can grab you a quick word with you, mate. I, I enjoyed watching that race <laughs> immensely. Some people didn't enjoy being part of it as much, I know. How, how did you it, react to that race? Because that battle for third was, was enthralling. It uh, felt like 30 laps of somewhere. Um, no, we, we, the first corner was a mess. There was a bit of a jump start and a bit of misfortune going on. I got a tap from behind, unfortunately, tapped Ryan. Seemed to agitate him somewhat. And then, uh, you know, I had to just defend from him until I got myself a bit of clear space and then get away from there. But we'd got a little bit of walking wounded with the truck and it was too little too late in the race to challenge um, you know the other two guys but we'd have never caught John Newell and John Willis a well deserved first podium for him so uh, all in all an enthralling race just spoke to Ryan he said he spoke to you a little bit earlier he says he could ne he could never do what you didn't defend and defend and defend what what do you say though because for, for you I guess it's more points in terms of the championship and you did what you could yeah it was the you know it was about the championship battle wasn't it and uh, I wouldn't have needed to defend if he hadn't have got, you know, physical. So if we'd have been going together, I could have gone forwards. But, you know, it was just one of those sort of stalemate situations where, you know, I'm not being, you know, at all smug, but there's winners and losers in every situation. And, you know, this particular time we got the result, he didn't. Next time I'm sure the boot will be on the other foot. Well, race is four and five. If, if this race is to go by, it should be a cracker. What are you expecting from it? Yeah, more, more uh, Ryan's going to be like a coiled spring now, clearly, you know, and then it will stop him again. Uh, but we need to, um, you know, we need to make some changes to the truck, get some tyres around it, get it straightened out and uh, see what we can do. We're looking forward to it. Oh, so are we. We cannot wait for it, Dave. Best of luck for races four and five. Lining up behind the pace truck men for race number four of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship here at Convoy in the Park at Donington Park. Tom O'Rourke in his MAN on pole on the reverse grid. Ryan Smith, after a 10 second penalty in the earlier race for over speeding, starts alongside him in Mercedes number one. Steve Thomas and Martin Gibson on the second row. Mark Taylor after his uh, collision in the earlier race starting at the back. Doc Borthwick heads up Division 2 alongside John Powell. Jock also with a penalty in the earlier race. Here we go. 15 minutes of big rig racing. The uh, pace truck about to pull into pit lane. Watch for the red lights going out. Then we'll be underway over 15 minutes of racing. The convoy will head down to red gates. Wait for the red lights to go out. And here we go. David Jenkins with a good start from row three. Ryan Smith from the outside the front row should get the overlap on uh, Tom O'Rourke. He's done so. Jenkins are on the inside rubbing shoulders with Steve Thomas into the first corner. Martin Gibson in there as well. It's Ryan Smith who's got the lead. Bit of contact there. Jonathan Willis goes wide, wide over the gravel. Just uh, forced out wide. There wasn't any room there to get all the Division 1 trucks through together. Now who's on top in Division 2? Looks like it's still John Powell from pole position. And uh, Jonathan Willis has dropped back a bit as a result of that. Um, looks like some damage for Steve Thomas. I think he's got a puncture, the uh, number 33. Adam bent over the grass there at the Craner Curves. Yes, Steve Thomas in trouble. He's got a flat tyre. That'll be the uh, end of his race. That contact uh, with, uh, I think it was Jonathan Willis, has punctured the front tyre. So he'll be out of this one. 
Ryan Smith, as expected, out in front from the outside of the front row from Tom O'Rourke. He's under fire from Martin Gibson. Fourth place, number 18 of John Newell. He's come through already in his new MAN, looking to follow up his win from earlier on. Martin Gibson takes a lot of curve there on the inside as he chases the Scotsman Tom O'Rourke for second. But this is going to allow Ryan Smith to increase his lead in the Mercedes Actros out in front. Behind them, David Jenkins, and it's Mark Taylor's repaired MAN after that first corner wallop in race three earlier on. They gap back to the Division 2 leader, which is John Powell of the DAF at number six. Really wide, look at this out of the chicane, John Newell up the inside, something flew off, I think that was from uh, Martin Gibson's truck there, the number 11, he now goes back to the inside, three into one into Redgate, this isn't going to work, here they come. Martin Gibson has got through into second as a result of that, Tom O'Rourke in third, then it's John Newell. Ryan Smith increasing his lead, saying, well, if you're all going to squabble, I'm going to clear off in front. There's the Division 2 leader, John Powell, in the blue daff ahead of Jock Borthwick. Number 11 of Martin Gibson getting away in second place. The lead was 5.2 seconds last time through for Ryan Smith. Third place is John Newell, starting to uh, close up then. David Jenkins under fire from Mark Taylor. They collided, of course, in the earlier race as well on the first corner. Division 2 lead battle heading down into the chicane once again. We've lost Steve Thomas, of course. He's pulled off with a burst tyre. Bit of a lock-up there from Tom O'Rourke into Redgate. David Jenkins not close enough to challenge him, though. Here they come down the crane occurs. Ryan Smith is now six and a half seconds up on this group. Here's the Division 2 battle. Powell from Borthwick. Willis in there as well in the Division 1 truck, having a good race with the Division 2s, trying to make his way back up the order. Then we've got Stephen Powell. Michael Oliver has got a bit of damage to the front of his truck. Then Craig Reed and Bradley Smith. You can see there, the front bumper hanging off Michael Oliver. Hopefully that won't uh, damage his tyres. John Powell leads the way, the DAF LF. It's good driving by John, looking for his first win of the season. Oliver dragging that front bumper underneath the front of the truck, chased by Craig Reed in the uh, Iveco. John Willis in the more powerful MAN trying to move up past these uh, drivers. There's Adam Bint still going towards the back. Simon Cole and Craig Evans rounding out the field. It's close here in Division 2. There's a Division 1 interloper in with them, the Dawson Direct MAN of uh, Jonathan Willis. Big cloud of dust there. Is that dust or smoke? Whether somebody's run wide coming off coppice there in the Division 1 battle or whether that's smoke. Yeah, I think it's just dust. Somebody has run wide there. John Willis trying to get past John Powell. He wants to get back up with the Division 1 train ahead of him. He's past Powell. Borthwick moves in to attack the number 6 in turn. That's for the lead in Division 2. Willis now saved the end of them. I think it must have been Tom O'Rourke who won, ran wide because he's lost a couple of places to David Jenkins and Mark Taylor. So he must have gone wide there, coming out of coppice, out of our view. There's the lead-up. Three-pointed star glistening in the sun there on the front of the Mercedes. Through the uh, Robert chicane comes Ryan Smith on his local circuit, the man from Nottinghamshire. He's fired up after... Uh, that battle in the first turn. Somebody else has run wide there. Now, in front of this group is Jonathan Willis, so he may, may have run wide there at McLean's. So there is Willis. There's the Division 2 battle. One, two, three, four, five, six of them line astern. Now, Jock Borthwick is trying to slipstream John Powell here down into the chicane. Powell holds the inside. It's good defensive driving. He must have been watching David Jenkins earlier on. Stephen Powell in third in the half and half livery in MAN, half yellow, half white. There's number 12, Michael Ivers. Scanny looks like he's had a, had a tooth knocked down, doesn't it? That damage to the bumper. There's David Jenkins. He leads the battle for fourth place in Division 1 ahead of Mark Taylor. Powell almost side by side there with Michael Oliver down the Craner curves. I don't think Oliver's going to get through there. Try though. <laughs> Tries to move Stephen Powell, the uh, 
reigning champion aside. He's on the grass there. I think he's going to have to give best to uh, Michael Oliver. I didn't know you could get two trucks side by side through there. Oh, you can't. Michael Oliver goes wide. It's going to be three wide. Look at Craig Reed up there. He knocks into uh, the uh, truck of Powell. And Oliver's lost out there to Powell and Reed. That's allowed these two to get clear. John Powell ahead of um, John Borthwick. That bumper's now uh, come off the front of uh, Michael Oliver's truck. With um, that trip over the grass. He's gone wide there, Borthwick, onto the grass. That'll lose him a bit of momentum. I love this uh, comment on uh, YouTube. Is that what, is this what Amazon delivery drivers get up to on their day off? Well, probably a lot of these drivers are uh, HGV drivers on the road during the week. A lot of these drivers have connections to the road haulage industry, so you're probably fairly accurate with that comment. So Stephen Powell takes a shortcut, nearly spins. Look at the way these three are going at it. Stephen Powell, Craig Reed, and Michael Oliver. They go three wide out of the chicane. This is brilliant stuff. Reed's come, ahead, come out ahead. Adam Bint's not far behind them either now, he's closing in in the Volvo. And it's still John Powell who leads Division 2. The lead gap has come down, in fact, Ryan Smith lost some time on that last lap. With the Mercedes, oh, Bradley Smith's pulled off. The Yaviko is out. Side by side, in, uh, you don't know where to look in this race. Side by side between David Jenkins and Mark Taylor. Has Jenks got a problem because Taylor's going round the outside? Now, has Ryan Smith got problems returning? Because his last lap was a 1.34, his best lap of the race a 1.26. That's well off the pace. Yes, look, he's been caught. Ryan Smith's in trouble, I think. Now, here comes Martin Gibson. Ryan Smith's got a problem, I think, with the Mercedes. He can't get this truck to run right this weekend. He's had repeated electrical problems. As uh, I think that's Mark Taylor's gone wide there. Yeah, Ryan Smith in real trouble. Look at the smoke. Oh, dear, Ryan Smith's in real problems. Now, he's got... Um, He's got 1 minute 37 of the race to go. He's going to try and hang on. Now it's Ryan Smith's turn to defend. You can see the smoke there. He's in real trouble here, Ryan Smith. But I don't think he's going to be able to defend. He's got uh, just over two, just under two laps to go, I think. He's not going to be able to keep going like that. He cedes the lead to Martin Gibson. Could we see a weekend where Ryan Smith doesn't get a single race win? I can't remember the last time that happened. Look at the smoke from that Mercedes. He was so far in front. Can he make the finish? He's going to try and get... I hope he's not dropping any fluid there. Smoke everywhere. Whether that's a turbo problem, I'm not sure. We've lost Bradley Smith. We saw him pull off. Mark Taylor ran wide at Coppice. He's dropped back from David Jenkins by about five seconds now. And it's Martin Gibson going for win number two this weekend. John Newell could win this. He could have a second win of the weekend. All the champions, major championship contenders in both classes seem to be hitting problems this weekend at Donington. Here comes Newell now. He's ready to attack Martin Gibson for the lead. This is not over yet. I think they'll get one more lap out of this. And Newell is ready to attack. Here comes the Yorkshireman. Two MANs together. Martin Gibson in the GT tyres truck. Ryan Smith, I don't think he's even going to make it. No, he's pulling off. He's pulled off on the exit of Coppice side by side across the line and Martin Gibson having to defend here look at the way Newell's going up the inside Martin Gibson defends his lead and still in division two still John Powell is out in front well there's so many shot results here this weekend David Jenkins is in third place but the red flag is going to have to come out I think because Ryan Smith has stopped on the track on the exit of Coppice and we've got Jock Borthwick in the gravel trap what is going on out there? So, that's going to give John Powell the Division 2 win. I think the red flags are coming out, though, because of uh, Ryan Smith stopped on the track at Coppice. Right, Jock Borthwick's gone off up there as well. Yeah, the race is being stopped, so that'll be... Uh, now, I think the result, will it be declared um, at lap 10 or at lap 9? We're going to have to wait and see on that. I think that means Martin Gibson has won, but we'll confirm that shortly. What a chaotic race that was. So we'll confirm the, uh, well, the unofficial results at the moment then is a win for Martin Gibson completing nine laps just ahead of uh, John Newell, 9.6 of a second. David Jenkins third ahead of Mark Taylor and uh, Tom O'Rourke. Six for Jonathan Willis completing the Division 1 runners and well done John Powell, a fine win in Division 2.
Jock Borthwick uh, shown in second, but as he was in the gravel there, I'm not sure. Or did he go off after the end of lap nine? Was it the uh, next lap around that he went into the gravel? I'm not sure. So we'll wait to see whether he's going to be classified second. Behind him, Michael Oliver, Stephen Powell, Craig Reed, then Adam Bintz and Craig Evans. We lost Simon Cole a couple of laps from home again. Uh, of course, Bradley Smith was also a retirement, and Steve Thomas, an early casualty with a burst tyre. Yeah, welcome down to Park Fermi with first and second Martin Gibson and John Newell. Guys, every race feels like it's got a story in it this weekend. I don't know about you. Uh, Martin, you, you've got the win. At some, some points during that race, you must have been not expecting that at all. Can you talk us through it? Why wouldn't I expect it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it went well. Uh, the surface was so slippy, so you just didn't know what to expect at the next corner. And then John was creeping up behind me, making me nervous. With steering problems, I couldn't go any quicker. So I'm happy to bring it back. Yeah, I bet you are, John. It was it was a frantic finish in the end, wasn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. Starting eighth on grid and then coming through and getting up to fourth and then third. And I'm thinking, right, now second. And then we're closing on Martin and then red flag. I thought, no, just give me a couple of more laps. Yeah, it was it was a strange finish, wasn't it, when that red flag came out? I'm, I'm guessing you just signed, signed some relief. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't have been easy in a couple more laps, but uh, thank God for that. Yeah, John, you've been you've been flying today for sure. Like you obviously had that great win earlier on, second here from from eighth in the second race. Absolutely flying. Yeah, brilliant. Couldn't be happier to be honest with you. The truck's amazing. And I've seen you as well in the paddock. You, you've got lots of visitors to the uh, to the new old truck sport yeah. paddock as well. You really enjoying your Sunday here at Donington, aren't you? Yeah, you've got to do. You've got to put a show on, haven't you, for everybody? Yeah, certainly doing that. And we've still got one more race to come. You two are going to be in the midst of it, I'm sure, again. We're going to have any more drama, do you think? Well, we're at the back, so it's going to be drama for us getting through. But that's how I love it. So bring it on. It's how we love it as well. Congratulations, boys. Thank you. Thank you. Forming up behind the uh, DAF pace truck then for our final British Truck Racing Championship race of the weekend here at Convoy in the Park 2021. Jonathan Willis on pole, Tom O'Rourke alongside him. A weekend of surprise and uh, unexpected results. Crown Oil DAF leads them round. Mark Taylor and David Jenkins on the second row. No Ryan Smith, a blown turbo on his Mercedes in race four, putting him out of this one. Division two headed up by Craig Evans and Adam Bintz. This is going to be a cracker in very damp and slippery conditions following the rainstorm earlier on. Ready for the rolling start. This will be a 15 minute race. I'm looking forward to this one. Here we go then. Let's get ready to rock and roll. The big reeks about to get underway as the convoy heads down towards Redgate. The red lights are out and here we go. The power comes on and Tom O'Rourke sliding all over the place already. Here they come then, the flag goes down to set Division 2 underway. It looks like Jonathan Willis is going to hold his lead on the inside as they head through Redgate for the first time. Willis leads it, trying to get around the outside is Tom O'Rook. Taylor's there on the inside. Everybody else taking it very, very carefully behind. Sliding wide, Craig Reed a bit sideways in there in the red. Iveco, here they come then. What a sight that is down the crane of curves. Martin Gibson's got away well. Those GT tyres on his truck must be working well. He's up into fourth place, chasing David Jenkins. They've got past O'Rourke. It's Mark Taylor up into second, but Jonathan Willis has the lead. Local man from Birmingham. Leading Division 2 is Craig Evans, number 10 in his MAN. Adam Bint getting a bit of a push there from Craig Reed, who moves across. They're side by side through Starkies. Then it's Michael Oliver. I think there could have been a change for the lead there. I think Jonathan Willis lost out. We've got a spinner at the back. That's Jock Borthwick has gone for a spin, exiting the old hairpin onto the grass, try and uh, recover there, let's do a three point turn there to rejoin, Steve Thomas's doors flapping open again, he may be flagged in for that, Craig Evans leads Division 2, got his uh, best ever result in Division 2 yesterday with uh, a third place, here are the leaders, Jonathan Willis has uh, lost out to another pair of MANs, Mark Taylor and David Jenkins side by side, Martin Gibson trying to come through as well, then we've got Tom O'Rourke in fifth, number 86, John Newell in sixth, Steve Thomas in seventh, as Jenkins up the inside will take the lead into the chicane, looking for his second win of the weekend, he won race one yesterday, Taylor second, John Newell has had uh, a win as well, two wins for Martin Gibson. 
And Newell and Gibson, could they mount a challenge for the championship this season? It would be great if they could try and close down on uh, the luckless Ryan Smith. Steve Thomas coming into the pits to secure that door, no doubt. That's David Jenkins leads. Here comes Gibson. Could he complete a hat-trick for the weekend? Through the standing water at Redgate, he clips Mark Taylor. Nothing he could do there. Slid into the side of him. O'Rourke is fourth. Willis fifth. John uh, Newell goes gravel-bashing on the outside there in sixth. Steve Thomas is in the pit lane. So seventh overall is Craig Reed. He's taken the lead in Division 2 from Craig Evans. Here comes Martin Gibson, chased by the number 81 of Mark Taylor. Oh, Adam Bintz in the gravel. He's gone off. Losing in Martin Gibson. Now, the gap was 1.9 seconds between Jenkins and Gibson last time. Through. Just under 10 minutes of this race to go. Through the chicane. I think Gibson's going to be closer this time through. Here's Mark Taylor, third. O'Rourke fourth in the high up cranes and MV commercials MA. John Willis still there in uh, he's in fifth place. Where's John Newell? Ah, he's made a mistake somewhere. He's dropped behind Craig Reed, so uh, Newell has had a moment somewhere. A bit of dirt on the front of the truck there, he's been off so. Over the line they go. The lead gap is in fact increased to 2.2 seconds. John Newell will get back ahead of um, 68 of Craig Reed goes through. Second is still Stephen Powell in Division 2, and third is Michael Oliver Scanion. Over the standing water at Redgate. Stephen Powell under fire from Oliver. There's John Powell in the number six, then Bradley Smith. Craig Evans has dropped behind them. There's the number ten. Now, Jenkins continues to lead. He's pulling away from Martin Gibson. This is looking good for the uh, MAN pilot. Lead in the Avico Stralis. Continues to set the pace in Division 2. Seventh overall. Minor Stern still for second. Reedy's getting away now. That's the gap this time in the uh, overall lead. 4.6 seconds between uh, Jenkins and Gibson. Taylor third. Tom O'Rourke still running well in fourth. The man who had that huge crash at Druxton last year. A bit battered and bruised, and uh, nearly battered and bruised there, John uh, Newell over the gravel at the chicane. And that's dropped him back again behind John Willis. Still ahead of Craig Reed, though, sixth overall. He's had a couple of moments in this race. John Newell had a win earlier in the weekend. Steve Thomas scrabbling through the chicane there as well, trying to make his way up the order again. There's been a change behind in Division 2 there. John Powell's got ahead of Michael Oliver third in Division 2. Five and a half minutes to go. In this final race of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship here at Convoy in the Park. Sliding their way down the crater curves there. There's Chuck Borthwick. He's still going at the tail of the field after his earlier spin. Took him a while to rejoin on the wet grass. Here's the battle for second in Division 2. Stephen Powell, John Powell, Michael Oliver, Bradley Smith. And they're being caught by Steve Thomas after his pit visit earlier on. Craig Evans and Jock Borthwick still further down behind them. Still Craig Reed. He's uh, nearly three seconds up on uh, Stephen Powell now in Division 2. There's Powell. Defending from John Powell, the number six. He'll be fired up after that penalty earlier on. He'll be a bit angry if I know him. Frustrated with uh, that uh, ten second penalty he got for overspeeding. He's lost him his advantage. Here we come then down into the chicane. Watch for Bradley Smith up the inside there in the Evico number 46. Or oh, Stephen Powell a bit sideways there. Oliver holds off Bradley Smith. There was a bit of a shove there, I think, on the back of Stephen Powell, who gets his foot down and gets away. There's Martin Gibson, still second. The gap's up to nearly six seconds now. David Jenkins making this race his own. Mark Taylor third. Tom O'Rourke is fourth. And look at this in Division 2. Michael Oliver trying to go around the outside. Stephen Powell sideways again. John not able to take advantage. 
out here comes Steve Thomas. He just wants to get through this lot. He's in a quicker truck, of course, being in Division 1. And he just wants to get uh, around this little lot without any incident. See if he can catch the rest of the Division 1 field ahead of him. I think he might run out of time for that, though. It's just over three minutes left. Their way down, John Powell a bit sideways, being uh, almost pushed there by Michael Oliver in the Scania. Scania P11000. There's Jenkins out on his own, heading for win number two for the weekend. Through the chicane. Right to the left. There's Craig Reed, still leading Division 2. The main battle is for second. There's the interloper, number 33, Steve Thomas. Good to have him back. He's been away for quite a while from truck racing, the boss of Thomas Transport, based in Birmingham. There's the battle for third. Is that coming down? Just over two seconds between Taylor and O'Rourke, similar to MAN's. Side, John Powell and uh, Michael Oliver posing on Stephen Powell. They're all over him. Mirrors full of truck there. John Powell side by side with Oliver. He got to the outside. He got the inside with the second part of the chicane. He goes through. Steve Thomas says, OK, I'll speed past as well. I've got the power advantage. I may as well. Now we're seeing double. See what I mean about those two liveries. We've got them together on track at last. So they can make the comparison. We'll go past Michael Oliver shortly as well, I would think. Steve Thomas. The Division 2 boys are going to be getting uh, a bit frustrated with Thomas because he's getting in the way of their battle here. They want him to just go through and uh, get away from them. Bradley Smith moving up on uh, John Powell now. Is he going to lose another place? No, Powell holds on into the craners. 90 seconds left, so David Jenkins is going to be coming up to start his last lap this time. Steve Thomas up on uh, the back of Stephen Powell. To mirror, mirror image MAN. Let's try saying that after a few drinks. Steve Thomas now gets through. He's got past the Division 2 battle except for Craig Reed. Coming up to uh, the right hander at McLean. Stephen Powell still second in Division 2. There goes Craig Reed. David Jenkins is into his final lap now. He's just uh, gone over the line. Fastest lap of the race for Martin Gibson. 143.053. He's still nearly six seconds back on Jenkins. So it looks like Jenkins is going to take the win. Yeah, Tony Jenkins was a successful truck racer as well. There is Craig Reed heading for another win in Division 2 to extend his title lead. Michael Oliver staking his claim with three wins this weekend. There is Jenkins, Staffordshire driver in the Digraph Transport, Morris Lubricants, MAN. Through the old hairpin, what will be the last time? 20 seconds on the clock. There's the gap in uh, Division 2. Craig Reed leads Michael Oliver up to second now. He's got ahead of Stephen Powell by um, about seven seconds. Craig Reed is heading for victory in Division 2. Through McLean's for the last time goes the leader. Martin Gibson in a lowly second place. A great weekend he has had. Two wins, it's going to be two wins for Jenkins as well, and a win for John Newell. Are we seeing a changing face in British Truck Racing Division 1? Clock has counted down to zero. Our final winner of the weekend is going to be David Jenkins, who the second victory of the weekend. He's into the chicane at the wheel of the Digraph Morris MAN for the final time. He comes out of the chicane, up towards the checker flag, slides it sideways. It's a big 10-4 from David Jenkins as he crosses the line to win the final truck race here at Convoy in the park. Second goes to Martin Gibson, a great weekend for him, some brilliant results. And they're well ahead of... Oh, and Tom O'Rourke has cut the chicane, they've come together on the final turn, Taylor spins! Oh, the battle for third comes to a head. On the final bend, Tom O'Rourke takes third. What on earth happened there? That was like a scene from the movie Convoy, wasn't it? Fourth goes to Mark Taylor, slides his way home, and well done Jonathan Willis. Some great results this weekend as well. Fifth place in only his second ever truck race meeting. There's a stack of tyres in the middle of the road there creating an extra chicane. Craig Reed negotiates them. He comes through to win Division 2. 
John Newell taking sixth overall, Steve Thomas eighth overall, the final Division One finisher. Reed takes Division Two ahead of Michael Oliver. Third in that division, Stephen Powell. Well done, Bradley Smith, a fine fourth place in Division Two. The other finishers will be John Powell and Craig Evans. We lost Jock Borthwick, he pulled up a few laps from home, and Adam Bint, you can see in the gravel there in the background. David Jenkins, the winner by six and a half seconds in the end, ahead of Martin Gibson, with uh, Tom O'Rourke stealing third in that contretemps with Mark Taylor on the final turn. John Willis, another great result in fifth, ahead of John Newell. Craig Reed, seventh to win Division Two. Steve Thomas, having uh, called into the pits to fix his flapping door, made it back up to eighth. Michael Oliver, second in his class in Division Two, ahead of Stephen Powell. Then the other finishers, Bradley Smith, John Powell and Craig Evans. We lost Jock Borthwick and Adam Bint. Well, welcome down to Park Ferme, Dave. That was, that was a fantastic drive from yourself in really difficult conditions. That must be a really satisfying win. Yeah, it might not have been the race the crowd wanted, but it was the one that we wanted. We've had a very tense afternoon. We had a brilliant day yesterday, great first race today, technical difficulties in race two. And that one's for the team, the best team and the best family in the paddocks. Thank you so much to everybody. Absolutely phenomenal. Talk us through Redgate, because I'm going to ask a few drivers this, but we knew from drivers in other races before this one that Redgate was going to be a little bit dicey. You got across the Nile and the Amazon down there. What was it like? Yeah, no, I spotted the river on the outlap, fortunately, which was quite attentive for me. And uh, I knew some of the less experienced lads just wouldn't know how bad it was going to be when they got down there. And sure enough, it was. I got it round the white line and held on. And then after that, thank goodness, I got myself some breathing space on the first lap because I think if you'd have been in battle down there, your, your, your ego would have overtaken your talent and you'd have been off without a question. You know, you had to really, really stop it and just drive. And we've got so much speed in the rest of the lap, there's no need to take any risks down there. Yeah, it seems to me that first lap in particular, off the start, everyone seems to be a little bit knowledgeable of that. No one was, no one was silly. It was, it was sensible enough. Yeah, sensible as we get, I'm sure. Yeah. No, I, I, I you know, I had a look round in the first lap and uh, decided where it was dry, where we were going to push, and where we definitely weren't going to push. I did have one big scary lock up into the chicane one lap. After I divided, it was all right up there. So, you know, you're not always right. But uh, no, great race and great weekend. You said to me at the start of the weekend you were looking for five wins. It's not quite five, but you've not had a bad weekend by any by any account. Uh, how do you sum up your, your, your Donington weekend now or at the end of it? Tough, and I was glad to get here at the start of the weekend, and now I'm glad to go home. <laughs> yeah, just tough. Great weekend. Great to see the fans back. Great to see the trade support back. And, uh, yeah, onwards to Snetterton. Onwards to Snetterton. Sounds good to me, Dave. Best of luck for that one. Thank you very much. Convoy in the park uh, 2021 gets a big 10-4 from me and we'll see you next time. Okay, uh, back with the live action here at Pembrey Circuit. Then good to see some action from Donington there. Now let's have a look at uh, our final race of the weekend for the Junior Saloon Cars. Two wins so far for Charlie Hand. He's on a hat trick coming into this one, looking for win number 11 for the season. Let's see if he can do it. Here's the grid. Charlie Hand in pole position in number 55, alongside 42 of Will Redford. Second row, 600, Reuben Hayes, alongside 54 of Harvey Caton. And then we've got uh, row three, Alfie Jeekins, 754, 28, Louis Hansel. Row four is Aaron Walker, number 80. Alongside him will be 91, Jack Meakin. Uh, the reason for the gaps there, a couple of cars, transponders weren't working in qualifying. They are here. Row five, 322, Jamie Petters, alongside triple three of Adam Harding, as they move off for the green flag lap. Uh, row six, 46, Harry Hickton, alongside 40, Matthew Cripps. 58 Harvey Dent on row 7. He got a warning for some contact in uh, race 2, so we'll have to mind his P's and Q's here. Alongside 871 Jensen Bell. Row 8 Oliver Cottam in number 98, alongside 63 Chloe Grant. Row 9 Jacob Heap, number 16, and 29 of Scott Sumpton. Behind them, we've got number 22 Ashley Gregory, alongside 77, which is Travis Chapman. Row 11 57 Ben Carter, and uh, 59 CJ Morgan. Row 12 should be 19, 19 of Reese Blakely and 33 Jacob Baldry. The 13th row 
number 10, Harry Smith, and 92 of Adam Parker. And Cole Lynch, number 7, should be at the back of the grip. But a couple of cars suffered damage in uh, the earlier race, of course, in a couple of tangles. There's Jacob Baldry towards the back. Let's see if everybody's there uh, behind him. Ah, Cole Lynch is there. Well done to uh, her team who've repaired the car. So I think we may have a full complement for this uh, final race for the junior saloons. So Charlie Hand on pole then. Will Redford alongside him. His best ever result with third place in race two earlier on. Only just moved across from sim racing to try the real thing. What a story it would be if he could take his maiden win here. Ruben Hage, Alfie Jenkins, and Harvey Cate. They're all looking for their second win of the season. As is Ashley Gregory from further back. The highest placed driver without a win in the points is Oliver Cotter in fifth place. He hasn't had the best of weekends. 15 minutes plus one lap will be the distance. Don't think we're missing anybody. Coming up to the grid then for the third and final race this weekend for the Junior Saloon Car Championship. Charlie Hand, number 55 on pole. He got a hat-trick in the previous round at Silverstone. He's on a hat-trick going into this race. 15 minutes plus one lap. Will Redford, number 42, starts alongside him. Ruben Hage on the second row alongside Harvey Caton. Alfie Jenkins on row three. Those three have been scrapping all weekend. Louis Hounsell, the leading rookie in the points, is on the outside of row three. Looks like one car we might be missing is Aaron Walker. He picked up some damage earlier on. Green flag is waved at the back of the grid. So can Charlie Hand make it six wins in a row over the last two meetings? And we're about to find out. Waiting for the red lights to go out. They do now. And away we go. Good start by Charlie Hand. Decent start once again by Alfie Jenkins. But he can't find a way past Ruben Hage. Aaron Walker is there in number 80. And look at Will Redford. He's got ahead of Charlie Hand into Hatchet's hairpin for the first time. Will Redford leads for the first time in his JSCC career. Harvey Caton goes a bit wide on the first corner. And Aaron Walker is in there attacking Louis Hounsell who attacks Harvey Caton in turn. Jack Meekin up the inside and they tangle up. Hounsell's taken out onto the grass he goes and uh, just avoided the tyre wall I think there. There's damage there to uh, the side of Louis Hounsell's car. The Jenkins prepared car rejoins further back. So it is Will Redford, number 42, who leads. Charlie Hand is headed for the first time this weekend, I think. And up into third, it is Jenkins. He's got ahead of Ruben Hage. Harvey Caton fifth. And as a result of that little contretemps, there's uh, a bit of a hole in the field already. The first five have been able to break away slightly. They start to sort themselves out. The 29 there on the attack. Uh, that is Scott Sumpton on the back of Travis Chapman further back. There is uh, Aaron Walker, number 80. He got a bit bashed about earlier on. Jack Meakin is uh, just behind him. There is Ashley Gregory, number 22. A winner at Knock Hill earlier this season, but she struggled a bit this weekend. She's in a backup car. That's uh, one reason why Harvey Caton having a go at Ruben Hage there. And here comes Charlie Hand attacking for the lead. He's going to try and get up the inside into Hatchet's hairpin. No, you don't, says Will Redford. He wants his first win. Alfie Jenkins, the ex-rally crosser in third place. Ruben Hage fourth, under fire from Harvey Caton in the Maximum Motorsports car. Behind them we've got uh, Aaron Walker. Frantic first lap there as we always see in the Junior Saloon Car Championship. Looks like uh, Jack Meakin has got through into sixth position. The blue and red car there ahead of Aaron Walker and uh, behind them Oliver Cotton. Here comes Will Redford leading the way through the Senna S and up into Brooklyn's corner. He's loving this out in front. Oliver Cottam attacking Aaron Walker. Behind them, Petters and Matthew Cripps. And then a solid scrub of Saxos behind them. Ashley Gregory trying to go side by side with Chloe Grant. She goes out over the curb. That's going to allow Harry Hickton, number 46, to go through up the inside. They door handle together. Oliver Cottam having a better run this time. And Ashley Gregory defending from Jacob Heap there. Uh, somebody nearly losing it at the back. That's uh, Cole Lynch in her repaired car. 63, Chloe Grant. 
good uh, little rivalry with Ashley Gregory to be the leading lady in the series. Across the line they go. Your leader is Will Redford. 0.3 of a second clear of uh, Charlie Hand, number 55. Is his winning run going to be brought to an end? Aaron Walker under fire from Jamie Petters, number 322, the ex short oval. Matthew Cripps up there behind him in number 40. Here come the leaders, and Charlie Hand is closing in on Will Redford. He wants to make it six wins in the last six races. His last defeat was at Brands Hatch. There is Cole Lynch, number seven. Nearly lost it halfway round the first lap. She's learning all the time. One of the newcomers to the series. Here's the fight for third place. Jeekins, Hage and Kate. And these three have been battling each other all weekend. First two breaking away slightly. Will Redford continues to set the pace. The battle behind as well for six. Jack Meakin heads that ahead of uh, Oliver Cotton. Then we've got Aaron Walker, Jamie Petters, Matthew Cripps and next Adam Harding in the uh, triple three car. Cripps has a look up the outside. Redford continues to lead. They go over the line. Charlie Hans done the fastest lap. 117.40. And he's going to have a look here into the hairpin. Under braking. Is he going to get the line away from Will Redford? Redford turns in very close between the two of them. I think Hans going to get him on the exit here up towards the right-hander at Spitfires. They are side by side. Redford will try and keep his foot in. Keep the line for the left-hander at Debeni. And I think Will Redford's just going to hold on. Yes, that's good driving by Will Redford against the 10-time race winner this year and he's held his lead They're side by side as they come through the crossing up towards Senna Hand isn't giving way they're still side by side he'll have the inside for the next right hander he's surely going to take the lead at the Senna S here Charlie Hand this is great racing between the two of them championship leader and the relative newcomer they're still side by side on the run into Brooklyn's neither of them giving an inch now Redford goes wide over the curb. Can he keep his foot in? And that's allowing the next three to tow up to the back of them as well. There's nothing between those two. They've been side by side for a whole lap virtually here. This is magnificent racing. Inches between the two Saxos. Redford on the outside. Hand on the inside. Redford tries to fight back. This is going to be interesting into the hairpin. Can Will Redford get the better exit there from uh, Honda? Can he get back in front at the line? Impossible to tell between the two of them. Three hundredths of a second in it. It was Redford who was in front of the line, but Hans got the inside line for the hairpin, and he's surely going to take the lead. Yes, he's got it. Goodness me, an overtaking manoeuvre that lasted exactly one lap. Incredible. Will Redford down to second, then now Charlie Hans going to get his foot down, get his head down, and try and pull away. Harvey Caton, while that was going on, has got up into fourth place ahead of Reuben Hage, and he's going to have a go at Alfie Jeekins for third place but Will Redford is not finished yet Redford is only 22nd in the points this is only his third meeting in junior saloon cars and the uh, battle for third rather coming to a head there Jeekins under fire from Harvey Caton who's gone through into third place I think there's a bit of contact in there as Jeekins ready to fight back he'll go back up the inside this is like David Jenkins and Ryan Smith in the trucks earlier on between these two and uh, Cole Lynch is out of it the car you can see repaired after that heavy damage from uh, race two the uh, team have done well to get it back out but uh, sadly she is into the pits Harvey Caton in third place ahead of Alfie Jeekins Hage has dropped back a bit in fifth then the battle between uh, Meakin and Cotton now what's Alfie Jeekins going to do here he's ready to attack Harvey Caton Quite a rivalry developed between these two, fighting for third place. Hand leads by 0.7 of a second from Will Redford. Ruben Hayes having a look as well. Things calming down just a little now after that frantic first few laps for the junior saloon cars. Already coming up to halfway in the 15 minutes. Of course, when the clock goes down to zero, then the last lap board will go out. Meakin and um, Cotton there, if anything, are catching Reuben Hage. Behind them, Aaron Walker in the white car. Chandler Motorsport Run Machine. Then Matthew Cripps. And J Jamie Petters was 10th. He's just lost out there to Adam Harding, number triple three. Another nice little battle there. A little bit of push and shove. Uh, Harry Hickton, Chloe Grant, Ashley Gregory is in there. And there's another car on the back of them as well. Four of them together. That's the uh, number 58 car of Harvey Dent. 
Harry Hickson heads this little group. Ashley Gregory. She mentioned uh, yesterday she's in a backup car this weekend after an accident in testing. Somebody with the headlights hanging out there. That's number 16 of Jacob Heap. Battling with CJ Morgan, number 59. This battles everywhere you look down the order. 77 Travis Chapman is there. 29 in behind them is Scott Sumpton. Then we've got Jacob Baldry and Louis Hansel recovering from that off on the first lap. Here's the fight for uh, fifth position and they have got past Ruben Hage now. So Hage relegated by Meekin and Cottam. Uh, Meekin got him coming out of Honda and then it was Cottam up the inside into the hairpin. Charlie Hand leads by 1.6 seconds now. He's pulling away from Will Redford having uh, been side by side with him for exactly a lap and Aaron Walker's coming through. I think Ruben Hage has got a problem because uh, Walker's come through there. Matthew Cripps goes through as well. Now that number 600, is there a problem with it? Here comes Matthew Cripps now, number 40. Son of Steve Cripps, who races uh, an Escort RS2000 in classic touring cars. He's going to go through. Can't see any damage to the 600 car, so whether he's uh, got a problem, we'll wait to see if he heads for the pits. We lost Cole Lynch earlier on, of course. Uh, Louis Hansel, the reason he's uh, at the back of the field, he made a pit stop as well at the end of the first lap just to um, check the car over. Nearly two seconds in it now for the lead. We watch the midfield battle between Aaron Walker and Matthew Cribbs. Walker back ahead into the hairpin. His mirror hanging off there. A little bit of rubbing as they came through. So the aura is hand from Redford. They're clear of Caton in third, then Jeekins and Meekin. Then Cottam, Cripps and Walker battling for seventh. Oh, we've got a spinner. Scott Sumpton has tangled with Travis Chapman. Another Jeekins prepared car there. Scott Sumpton, uh, number 29. He's got damage to the uh, right-hand side. So uh, I reckon that was a dive down the inside that went wrong there from Travis Chapman. Didn't quite uh, see what uh, actually happened there, but uh, they've been able to rejoin. There goes the fight between Walker and Cripps. That's for seventh place. Who does that belong to? Well, the Marshals now, I suppose. Reuben Hage continuing to fall down the order. There's uh, something amiss with the number 600 sack, so... Well, eight laps completed then by our race leader with just under four and a half minutes to go. There's third place, Caton. Jeekins fourth. And there's the battle between uh, Meekin and Cottam for fifth place. So Alfie Jeekins rather on his own in fourth, now ahead of them. Cripps still seventh ahead of Walker. Then Jamie Petters and... Um, no, it's um, Adam Hardy in ninth place. His transponder isn't working, so he is there in ninth place ahead of Jamie Petters. under four minutes to go the front of the pack has calmed down a bit now with Charlie Hand over two seconds clear there he goes in the foreground ahead of Will Redford looking for his best ever results the uh, debris flag is out there the red and yellow stripes as uh, Reuben Hage continues to tumble down the order there he is just behind uh, the battling pair of Ashley Gregory and uh, who's that behind her Harvey Dent I think yeah, Ruben Hage is slowing right down now. Well, he is fourth in the championship, took the win in an absolute belter of a race at Brands Hatch. But I wouldn't be surprised if you see him pull into the pits here. He's trying to keep going. Here comes the fight for fifth between Meekin and... Oh, who's that getting sideways? That was Matthew Cripps in the background. Actually, Gregory holding off the 58 of Harvey Dent. Jacob Heap giving chase. There's Louis Hounsell. He's a couple of laps behind after uh, calling into the pits at the end of the first lap to check some, check the damage. Ashley Gregory currently in 14th place. Yeah, Ruben Hayes uh, lapping about 10 seconds off the pace. Whether it's a misfire or an electrical problem, we uh, don't know. That's a great shame for one of the contenders, well, I say one of the championship contenders, uh, 
it's uh, pretty much contenders for runner-up, I would think, at this stage, because uh, I don't think Charlie Hand is going to be caught for the championship this year. He's heading for win number 11 here at uh, Pembray today, and his sixth in succession. He scored a hat-trick at Silverstone. He's going for a hat-trick here as Oliver Cotton finally makes his move on the Westbourne Motorsports car of Jack Meakin, or does he? Meakin holds it round the outside. Terrific race between these two. They've been almost glued together all race long. Down the straight they come, and Cotton gets the move done. He'll defend into the hairpin. Meakin trying to drive back around the outside, but it's Oliver Cotton up into fifth position. Lead gap is up to 2.6 seconds for Hand ahead of Redford. Similar gap back to uh, Harvey Caton in third place. Jeekins on his own in fourth, and they're the heart of these two battle and a bit of a lock up there from Cotton. He's going to run wide. Clips the grass on the outside. He's got right over the grass on the outside. Bit of rally cross there for Cotter, but he's undone all his good work because through has come Meakin, through has come Cripps, through has come Walker, through has come Adam Harding. Oliver Cotton's lost four places. It's not been his weekend at all. Now here comes Matthew Cripps. He's the big winner out of all that because he's going to pass Meakin as well. That's going to put um, Matthew Cripps up into fifth position. He's going really well here. Side by side with Jack Meakin in the Westbourne car. Look at this coming out of uh, Honda. Meakin, Cripps, here comes Aaron Walker as well. He wants a piece of this. They can't go three wide into the hairpin, surely. Walker up the inside. He's going to go past both of them. What an opportunist move that was by Aaron Walker. And he's up into fifth position now. Five of them together. This is superb. We're in the closing stages now. I think it'll be last lap this time around for Charlie Hand. He's over three seconds clear now. He's got this race won. He's heading for six in a row. We concentrate on this stunning battle for fifth place. Five cars together. A lock up from Walker. He's going to go onto the grass or almost there. And now he done does all his good work. I wonder if there is a bit of fluid down there. We saw the red and yellow stripe flag out. So maybe that's what's catching them out. Now it's Cripps into fifth place. Yeah, Walker's going to go to the back of the line because Adam Harding's going to get through there as well. Four places lost with that momentary uh, lapse for Aaron Walker. Starting the last lap now are our leaders. Charlie Hand from Will Redford by over three seconds now. Harvey Caton on his own in third. There is our leader, Charlie Hand. Well, it took him a few laps to get past the fast-starting Will Redford. It took him a whole lap alongside him to get through. But once he did get through, he has pulled away once again. It's going to be a hat-trick here at Pembury for Charlie, the man from Sussex. Now, let's wait to see what's going on further back. The battle is still going on. Caton's closing in on uh, Will Redford. But we'll wait to see what's going on in the battle for fifth. The order at the line was Cripps, Meakin, Cottam, Walker, Harding. There go the first three. I think that's fairly clear cut. Alfie Jeekins on his own in fourth. Now, where's this battle for fifth? There they are. It's actually broken apart a little bit. The first two are pulled away. And look at this now for seventh. All right, it's Cripps fifth, Meakin sixth, and then uh, the next three going for seventh. Cottam up the inside at Senna. Gets past Walker and Harding. Oh, this is superb. Well, the leaders are heading for the line then. And uh, Aaron Walker goes off. He goes rally crossing. Could lose that to Jamie Petters as well as a result of that. Poor old Aaron Walker. He's been yo-yoing up and down the order in all three races. Meantime, the chequered flag has gone out. The win goes to hand ahead of Redford, Caton and Jeekins. And who's going to be fifth after all that? It's going to be Matthew Cripps. Well done, Matthew. Meek in sixth, Cotton seventh. Eighth place goes to Harding, ninth for Petters, and poor old Aaron Walker, tenth. Eleventh behind him, Jensen Bell. I think it was uh, Chloe Grant who came through for twelfth. Harry Hickton, thirteenth. Fourteenth, Harvey Dent. And the rest of them come through. 
breathless racing once again from the junior saloon car championship but it is six in a row for charlie hand and even with two rounds to go at donnington and brands hatch he is surely going to take the title this year 11 wins in a season for charlie hand sponsored by orange projects original result then the win for hand ahead of will redford by 3.4 seconds in will redford gets his best ever result in second harvey Caton third clear of uh, alfie jeekins in fourth and then that amazing battle for fifth won by matthew cripps great drive by him up and down the order jack meekin in sixth place then cotton seventh oliver cotton ahead of adam harding in eighth jamie petters ninth and poor old harren walker with that grassy moment on the last lap ended up tenth having been uh, as high as fifth at some points 11th place uh, went to Jensen Bell, 12th Chloe Grant, first of the ladies' home, then Harry Hickton, Harvey Dent and Jacob Heap rounding out the top 15. Ashley Gregory took 16th ahead of Jacob Baldry and then uh, CJ Morgan, Reese Blakely and uh, number 92 Adam Parker rounding out the top 10. Harry Smith was next ahead of Travis Chapman, Scott Sumpton recovering from his tangle with Chapman to finish behind the number 57 of Ben Carter. Uh, Reuben Hage did manage to get to the finish. His car rather hobbled by an issue. He ended up in 25th place ahead of the other finisher, Louis Hansel, who was a lap down after making a pit stop. And uh, we lost Cole Lynch, sadly, early on. Well, well done to the uh, youngsters in the junior saloon cars. Then remember, some of those drivers as young as 14 years old. And they have put on a superb show here this weekend. We've got one race to come in a couple of races time. About 4.25 will be our last race for the British Truck Racing Championship. Well done to Charlie Hand and well done Will Redford. Only his third meeting in junior saloons and his second podium of the weekend with a third and a second. It could have been more, but the contact on the first lap in yesterday's race forced him to make a pit stop. He has driven brilliantly this weekend, Will Redford. It's not bad for a recent convert from sim racing. I'll be handing over in a moment down to the uh, Park Ferme for interviews. And then there'll be a short break before our final race of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship. Bit of a sweep up needed at Hatchet's Hairpin once again. I think that's mainly wing mirror glass that's been uh, deposited there. We did see a few wing mirrors hanging off. Okay, we can now hand down to Park Ferme, where you and Dunlop will be talking to our podium finishers. We are here in the pit lane with um, Charlie Hand. Charlie, we've got to stop meeting like this. When, when are you seriously going to give somebody else a chance? Uh, well, that's not the point, is it? You want, you want to win, so... Very honest. So, um, yeah, uh, really happy with that. <laughs> and, uh, it's another good race. Does it ever get boring? Well, no, that race definitely wasn't. Um, obviously, Will was side by side for, I'm pretty sure, was a whole lap. So, yeah, that was, that was proper fun. I mean, we were watching just by the, the side of the track here, and there was a point. I mean, something strange happened in that race that doesn't happen usually. You were behind for a little while, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, I just got a, a poor start. I managed to miss second and third, which was um, nice. and new for me. So, yeah, that was fun. And obviously, uh, uh, he got in front, and I didn't want to send it down the inside, obviously, as my teammate as well, so just stuck behind him for a couple of laps and then went for a move. But yeah, it was, it was a really good race. And when you say stuck behind him, I mean, I was watching from the side. You couldn't put a bit of paper between your bonnet and his boot. Well, yeah, but um, <laughs> uh, just trying to build a gap, obviously, to the, to the people in the back. It's, uh, it's good for the team to have both cars up here. So, yeah, it's a really good result. And as a young racing driver, what do you do now with the rest of your week? And not much left, but do you go back to school on Monday or college? What are you up to? Yeah, I've got uh, obviously got to drive back tonight and then college on Monday morning. Oh, I'm really looking forward to that. It's, it's a tough life, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Two races, two wins. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Lovely. Thank you very much. Well done, I'm going to try and grab Will Redford now as well. 
So, Will, two races, two podiums for you. Now, we spoke after the first race, and you said Charlie was giving you some tips. What did he say? Because it worked. Uh, well, he didn't really give me much, but uh, to be honest, what it was is he had a poor start. So I, I saw that and I went for it because it's the only chance I'm going to get. That's my clip will go. <laughs> and um, yeah, I tried to keep it, kept him behind for a few laps and he eventually got me around the outside of the chicane. So, but yeah, it's good to race with him, good to get in front of him. I think I'm, I'm the only one to do that this weekend, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, we've just said to Charlie, we were sort of right behind him and literally he was touching your bumper. What does it feel like as a racing driver, knowing you've got probably the, the fastest man on the grid that close behind you, teammate or not? There's, there's definitely pressure there, you know, but you, you just focus on yourself and you, you drive your lines, you drive your braking zones, you, you try and keep it on the track. And, um, you know, eventually he's going to get by because he's faster. But uh, Eventually, no, not always, no, because you held him off for a good few laps. Yeah, I tried my best. Well done. Great weekend. And we'll see you at Donington. Thank you. And we'll try and get also Harvey Caton, if you'll chat with us. Harvey. Last interview of the weekend for you, mate. Um, another racing driver, fantastic weekend. It's two races, two podiums. How do you sum it up? Well, this weekend's been pretty good for us. We've reeled in a lot of points and good uh, racecraft for me to learn, especially hanging it on the outside of first corner and having some close battles with multiple cars, which is really good for my experience. I mean, Pembury's a fairly short track. There's not that many overtaking spaces. Um, what is Pembury like as an education for a racing driver? Uh, it's a good track because obviously it's quite old track and it's uh, very abrasive to the tyres. So over the whole race, you've got to like kind of see how your car alters through the race and change your lines and speeds into the corners to do with that. So. And as it's the second race and last race of the day, are you a bit more aggressive because it doesn't matter if you have a bump or an accident, etc, etc? Um, I need to keep calm in the race, especially when it's the last, because obviously if I lose my call, cool, uh, I'll lose the whole race and then that'll just ruin the championship for me. So I've got to keep my calm. It doesn't matter where I finish on the podium, as long as I'm on the podium, it should be good. Young driver, very mature approach. Great weekend. Congrats. Thank you very much. So that is the end of our Junior Saloons for the day. We've got one more race today. That is the fifth and final race of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship. It's coming up very shortly. I'm going to throw back to you, Dave Goddard. Cheers, Ewan. Yes, the uh, fans here at Pembrey still uh, up on the banking enjoying the action. I've got a bit of news actually from uh, the British Truck Racing Championship Race 4 that we saw earlier on. Truck number one, which is Ryan Smith, has been docked one place in the results for gaining an unfair advantage. Probably something to do with uh, contact on David Jenkins in that battle for uh, second place. So that the two places have been reversed there. So David Jenkins now second and Ryan Smith third in uh, race four earlier on, of race four of the weekend for the trucks earlier on. So their feud continuing. And that's going to uh, probably liven up again in our final race. We'll have the grid for you a little later on. So we've got a short break in action now. We'll also have some... Uh, interviews from our man pointy down in the paddock and probably a few probably a few more puns and a few more biscuit related quotes as well let's see what pointy's up to join me here in park Ferme uh, on a very sunny day here in south wales uh, with uh, craig evans now craig you're currently third in the division two championship we are <laughs> <laughs> you sound so surprised well there's a lot to be said for us being third in the championship um I suppose the only thing we can say about it really is that reliability is key. Yes, it, it really is. Because, as I say, to finish first, first you must finish. Well, I suppose that is a good theory we can work with. Yes. Um, and at the minute, I'll go with that one. Because we good. certainly aren't getting the results on the track, but we are fairly consistent to finish it. Well, exactly, this is it. I mean, the, the way that the point system is built in the British Truck Racing Championship is that essentially we start at 15 points for first place and you work your way down for 14, 13, 12, you get one extra point for fastest lap, which means over the year, because you've essentially touched wood, not missed a race, you're clocking up some serious points. We've got up there, obviously, it's helping with the small grids in our class at the minute. Um, but, again, yeah. if Fantastic we finish, it's... It's great. great. Are you enjoying yourself out there on the track though? Because of course, you know, in, in the British, this is definitely more uh, supposed to be an enjoyable sport rather than a job. Uh, are you experiencing that with your career so far? Oh, it's great. It's, it's a laugh. It's what it well, Like I say, we're running around at the back, but we're gaining time today. We've been getting faster through the weekend. Uh, and we're getting closer to the pack, which yes. is what we're aiming for.
It's, it's all experience and it's all, it's, yeah, it's getting that momentum. Uh, and very quickly, uh, I don't know whether you've heard around the paddock this weekend, we're asking drivers what biscuit best describes their driving style. Biscuit? Yeah. I'm probably a jammy dodger. You know, the jammy dodger is a popular one. It's very good. I like jammy dodgers. Although, have you noticed they're putting less jam in them now? Yeah, probably. Not they good. aren't as big as they used to be. Half the size, <laughs> I'd say. Half the size. Story of our lives, though, eh? Right, well, thank you very much for joining us, Craig Evans. Good luck in finishing race three, wherever that may be. Thank you. Cheers for joining yeah. us. Uh, let's go find some more drivers now down here in Park Burr, maybe before they all disappear off for some trophies. So back down again here uh, in the assembly area with none other than Craig Reed, uh, current leading the championship in Division 2 and another fantastic result, race 2 Sunday here at Pembury. Yeah, yeah, good. To be honest with you, that was a bit of a scary first uh, first corner, but um, I had too much water on and basically I had sort of no brakes, so uh, I had to get spun round pronto and then I think the rest was all on adrenaline. We, we noticed you coming together with Simon Faulkner, now he actually came off after that. Do we think it was technical or do we reckon yeah. he needed some new trousers? No, no, just technical, just technical. <laughs> I, I was just showing him how you turn the trucks around, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, during the race. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's so, it. Uh, so obviously we're doing very well in the championship. Um, we'll, we'll be starting from the back again I think that's more the the most entertaining thing with the spectators is that you start from the back each race and smash your way through the pack yes that's it that's it to be honest with you I really really enjoyed that and uh, I'll be honest with you I was like a man possessed to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> well your driving style was fantastic very clean and very entertaining uh, Craig Reed thank you very much and good luck with your last race of the weekend thank you cheers thank you the malted milk man himself Craig Reed down here in Park Ferme uh, and the assembly area uh, we're going to go and find some more drivers to have a chat with now uh, just before the last race of the weekend. So you join me now down in a very sunny paddock here at Pembury South Wales at Tom O'Rourke's race tailor and uh, behind us of course you can see the uh, MV commercial sponsors uh, I have MAN uh, just uh, fresh back from the second race of Sunday. Now we've actually been given special access to go and see Tom inside the race trailer and see how these teams actually live whilst they're here on the weekend so follow me if you will we'll go and have a little look inside. So, as we can see straight away, we've got lots of room here for gear, for storage. This is where all the tools go. Everything that you see behind me gets packed away in these two vehicles when they leave here. The team have had a bit of pre-warning and are frantically trying to clean the trailer from the weekend's debauchery. Uh, lots and lots of side access here. And the trucks actually, if we just come a little bit further down, get stored on the back of the trailer here. So this will be the rear wheels uh, of the truck when they're reversed onto the back. And that's how they get transported, well, this one in particular, even over to Europe when they're racing in the FIA. So let's just pop upstairs now and hopefully we'll be able to find Tom O'Rourke in between races and we haven't actually had a chance to speak to Tom today so very very snazzy uh, there we go I've got him this is this is serious I mean he didn't even need a steady cam unbelievable Tom might I sit down with you sir of course there we go and the, the microphone will reach if you want to sit there or lean so Tom thank you very much for uh, having us uh, the hospitality is, is, is very kind of you um, how's your weekend been going though I've had a bit of an inconsistent weekend, to be honest. Um, uh, I've had trouble with the water, controlling the water temperature of the brakes. So the last two races, you know, I've had too much water in the front end, which in real terms, you're creating your own rain, you're creating your own storm. Yeah, yeah. And, and we don't like driving in rain, do we? So yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah creating your own rain to drive on isn't really good for your racing conditions. I, I quite like driving in the rain, to be honest, because um, uh, I, I seem to have a bit more of a chance in the rain. But um, uh, so, no, really enjoyed it. I mean, look at this, look at the weather for Pembury. Mm. Normally, when you, when you come here, it's a dull, miserable place. Oh, yeah, know? it is. It is very unusual weather for any yeah. time of the year in Pembury, let alone it, October. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, so, no, it, it, it's been a bit of an inconsistent weekend, but that's racing, you know. Um, uh, now you're actually racing in the Europeans at the moment as well, aren't you? So, what what kind of experience has that been in comparison to the British? Well, I've only had one meeting, which was in Hockenheim. Ah. Uh, so I, I, I must apologise, the Hungaro Ring. Um, uh, it's just a different level. Uh, it's a lot more disciplined. It's it's uh, 
Um, the British is getting quite professional, but it's run by the FIE, so it's it's very kind of disciplined. Very Formula One. -y. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. And if you do anything wrong, you get fined. You know, as I learned to my to my cost. You know. So that's cost you a pretty penny so far. Yeah, if you go over a white line, you would th you would think you shot somebody, you know. So so it, it's really uh, um, you know it's a bit like that, but it's dead professional. And Luke, to be fair, has done quite well. Yeah, previous Division 2 driver Luke Garrett's actually on your mechanics team here, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, The idea was that Luke was going to have um, a, a year out of racing to look after his kids go-karting and he was going to come and support me because we run, well now, two reasonable sized businesses and I, I'd, I've got a bandwidth problem with time so I need somebody I can only drive, I don't have the time to do anything else. So, and because he is a Division uh, 2 champion three times um, uh, and he knows how to set the truck up, it's been a great find to be mm. honest. And him and the rest of the boys have been great. Um, I think he probably thought he was going to do better than he's done in Europe, but I think, I think the gulf is up there. I mean, you're looking at professional teams that yeah. with budgets of millions oh. and full-time professional drivers. Yeah, well, this again. is what I've always said. It's like over here, it's an expensive hobby, whereas yeah, over yeah, there, yeah. it's a job. Yeah, I'm turning up on a Friday night with your head <laughs> full of lorries all crashing into each other and you have to switch off um, uh, and get into race mode. So I suppose if you planned a lot better for it, the results would be better. But I still need a bit of seat time. This is only my 12th event. Um, uh, and I'm disappointed this weekend. I thought I would have done better. I led two races there for a significant period of time, but with the water problem, it made me slower. I didn't have any grip, and the faster guys get faster than the catchy, you know. So. Yeah, it's very true. I mean, you know, we saw uh, earlier on this weekend, Ryan Smith pulled an eight second lead by the end of the race. Now, it doesn't take long, even if you do start at the beginning, for that kind of pace to edge a bit closer to you every single part of the lap until eventually the inevitable happens. Well, I think he's a clear exception. I, I do. I think when you study drivers, their mindsets, etc., I think I think he's in a different league to, every, to, to everyone else. I do. There's something just special about what he does. Um, uh, so, uh, and to be honest, I mean, Ryan helped me. You know, I've never raced in my life in, until three years ago. You know, so and it's a wee bit unusual at 56 year old to take up a, ho a hobby like this. But <laughs> you only live once, you know. So. Oh, too right. It's never too late to start racing. No, no, it's no not, indeed not. not. But you've done it's it awesome. very well as well here. So I mean, we're we're looking around at this this fantastic race trailer. Yeah. I mean, can you show us a little yeah, bit more yeah, about yeah. it? Uh, if we if we have a quick look, we've obviously got some a cooking area here, yeah. Uh, yeah. electric hob, sink, and just behind us here is the sleeping quarters as well. How many people fit in there? That's the three guys, Big John and the other two mechanics. So they literally are like li living on shelves essentially, if you can see in there with the lighting. Yeah. Uh, it's this uh, mood yeah. lighting as well. Yeah, exactly. And where do you stay? Um, I don't stay in here because I snore. Ah. You know, so so and, the team uh, have, have banished you from your own trailer? <laughs> I snore like an old bull, so that would just um, yeah. I, I, that would bring the house down. So <laughs> I sleep in the motorhome and I normally sleep in a hotel or whatever. But the guys sleep in there. I've got a TV for doing all the data. Yeah, lots um, of room to hang out on the so evening nice as well. Fitted out. Well, listen, if you're, if you're coming away racing, you want to be as comfortable mm. as possible. I mean, this it's, is an it's old a different trailer. set up to some people's here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a tent yeah. and an old van, you know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're, in the, we're in the truck business and we develop trucks, if you like, you know, so we build probably a thousand trucks a year. So our own guy's done all of this work internally. Oh. So. So it's testament to them, you know. And yes, it's, you've uh, done this yourself. It's an old trailer, so... Oh, um, well, it doesn't uh, look old. Yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, good yeah, on the yeah, inside, yeah, good yeah, on the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And down here as well, an we've got... Shoes, yeah, yeah after you, sir. Uh, we, we've uh, we've actually got a, a, a shower room and toilet built into the place. Now, I'm going to have to hold him down the stairs. It's quite tight. There we go. Put that there. This, obviously, it's still quite snug in here, yeah. as you can see. Yeah, yeah. But the shower room is ample, really. There's yeah, plenty yeah. of room in there. Yeah, I take it the three lads don't shower together, though, even no, though no, there's no. room. No. <laughs> Not that I'm aware of, no. <laughs> and a sidewaysy toilet. Is that an on-purpose thing, or is that no, just to make it easier to use? I think if you look there, if you turned it that way and you look at the size of Big John's legs, he wouldn't go on the toilet. You he know, wouldn't fit said, on yeah. the toilet. He'd be sat on the shelf on the back, wouldn't he? So it's a wee bit odd, but it's the only way we could do but, it. So know? sink, toilet, shower. I mean, plenty of the home comforts that you would yeah. expect from your own house. And then obviously a team area here, again, for, for working on things, going over... Um, data yeah, data and telemetrics. Yeah, a bit of cupboard here for... Um, uh, 
you know, keep it in a... Uh, this is an interesting thing here. When I bought this race suit, it's got a wee kind of pipe on it that you put in. And uh, you connect it to the outside of the truck and it's supposed to keep you cool. <laughs> but the air was actually hot. Oh, man. And I, was, I couldn't understand why I was overheating as much. I was cooking like a chicken, you know. So, so we've abandoned it, you know. So that's, that's what this so, is for. So you've got a hose on your suit for keeping you cool. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, so uh, obviously someone's uh, been playing around with that machine and put that to hot setting, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, which exactly. is yeah, not not inducive to a relaxing drive. When and then you, when you get older, you heat up a wee bit, you know. Oh, so. you're know, going through the menopause, are we, Tom? <laughs> Very carefully back down then, Key's the cameraman doing a fantastic job of going all terrain uh, on, on this occasion. So we've got the truck behind us now, obviously this is where all the action happens uh, out under the tent. Um, not all teams have got tents, have they? Um, I think everybody, d truck, racing, truck racing and some, to some guys it's a bit of a working class motor racing type sport. Some guys have got low budgets, some guys have got more budgets, so there's, um, there's the Division 2 and the Division 1. I think the guys do quite well. What I like, everybody puts their heart and soul in it, yeah, you know. Very so, true, very and, true indeed. Uh, um, uh, so, yeah, I think as well that being in the business, um, uh, we have to have a bit of an image, you know, mm. so. Yeah. So, um, there's two reasons for me being here. First of all is to develop our business. Yeah. And you of course from MV Commercial. Of course, yeah. Yeah. And and secondly, for me to have a bit of fun racing the truck. But um, Well that is a very important question. Do you have fun racing? I do, I do. I'm probably a wee bit harder on myself when I don't possibly, do it. Possibly, possibly. Yeah, yeah. But if you're enjoying yourself, that's that's it. almost winning in its own right. When you come home at the end of the weekend, there's always something happens in the weekend that makes you want to come back again. Yeah, it's got that kind of effect. I believe on it's called addiction. You, you yeah, can get help with that, especially yeah, yeah. the cost of this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I've got an addictive personality. There's no yeah, question. Haven't we all? That. Yeah. yeah. Glad don't, don't let me anywhere near the uh, the checkbook for the truck racing. And one more question. Some might say the most important question of the weekend so far is uh, what biscuit would best describe your racing style? Uh, a turnip scammer wafer. You're the second. I'm not saying it's a Scottish thing, but I'm not saying it's the first time we've heard that either. Uh, unbelievable. Well, obviously, uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic biscuit. In fact, Jock, uh, Jock gave me one earlier on. He, he took it around the entire race and handed it to me in part firmo. <laughs> so that's very nice. Well, thank you very much for your hospitality. You. Tom, it's been a pleasure to meet thank you and chat to you. Thank, thank you very much. You. And uh, good luck with your last race of the weekend. Okay. Hopefully we'll bring home a wee bit of silverware, you know? Yes, hopefully, you never know. Well, I've got one waiting for you. The glass ones would be good, definitely. You're going to step okay. over the cable, yeah, yeah. don't trip, because we don't want that on camera. It's very easy for the lawsuit. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom O'Rourke, thank you very much for joining us down here in the paddock. And let's see what else we can find. Well, fair play to uh, Pointy there. Great entertainment in the paddock. And how impressive was that transporter of uh, Tom O'Rourke's? could live in that couldn't you Ooh. right so there's going to be uh, a few minutes pause before our next action which is the final truck race uh, of the weekend the uh, next race will be uh, lining up very shortly after uh, a red flag so there's a slight delay at the moment so we'll uh, take some more highlights and be back with you for the final truck race at uh, the end of this next race so we'll be back with you a little later on Let's have a look at the grid then for our first race and it is Ryan Smith, the reigning champion, who's qualified. Back in his Evico, the pace truck is in pit lane. 
Waiting for the red lights to go out and the race will get underway. The trucks are unleashed down towards Hatchet's hairpin for the first time. It's Ryan Smith in the Mercedes who goes into the lead. Stuart Oliver slots in behind in the Volvo. David Jenkins having a look up the inside. It's going to be interesting into the hairpin. John Newell charging up the outside. Are they all going to get through this contact between Jenkins and Oliver? Now, has that damaged either of those two trucks? David Jenkins has almost come to a dead stop in the middle of the truck, the track there. They're all going wide. 32, Jock Borthwick is on the grass. Disaster for David Jenkins. The championship leader is only a point ahead of Martin Gibson. It's Smith that leads. Newell second, Oliver third. Tom O'Rourke is up into fourth place. Then Tony Smith and Mark Taylor. Jenkins has stayed ahead of Gibson, the two championship contenders. Craig Reed heads Division 2. As they head out onto the back of the circuit for the first time. Great uh, start by John Newell there down the outside. He avoided the contact on the inside between Oliver and Jenkins. Craig Evans running wide there onto the grass at uh, Senna. Loses the position to John Powell in the number six in the Dutch built gaff. I think there might be a bit of rain in the air. I can see the wipers going on a couple of these trucks, so it's going to get slippery out there. Through Honda Curve they cut to complete the opening lap. It is Ryan Smith who leads across the line. He's already two seconds clear of John Newell. He's got Stuart Oliver closing him down. So the Volvo man survived that clash with Dave Jenkins. There is Jenkins. He lost three places there to the MANs of uh, O'Rourke, Tony Smith and Mark Taylor. Smith side by side with Tony Smith. Been a few years since we've seen Tony in action. We say last time he was uh, in action at Pembrey was in a Finnish built Sisu, a bonneted truck. Ryan Smith leads then, looking to close in on our two championship leaders. Only 11 points covers the top three. There's another meeting to go at Brands Hatch in Kent in November after this to decide the championships. Here comes Dave Jenkins. He's on the way back up. He attacks Mark Taylor, goes through at centre, up the inside into sixth position. Martin Gibson, after those brake problems, put him out of qualifying early, trying to fight his way up the order. Trying to challenge Dave Jenkins, only a point apart in the championship. There's that spectacular Volvo of Stuart Oliver, chasing now John Newell. Ryan Smith's getting away at the front of the field. Two laps completed, he's done the fastest lap, 110.536. He's over three seconds clear of John Newell in second. Then it's Oliver, O'Rourke, Smith, Jenkins and Taylor. Next through is Craig Reed. he leads the Division 2 field behind Martin Gibson. Second in Division 2 is Adam Bint and third Stephen Powell. You can see the lead that Ryan Smith has eked out here over the first couple of laps. Here's the battle in Division 2. Craig Reed, the man from Stoke-on-Trent in the Reed Freight Iveco, won all five Division 2 races at uh, Snetterton in Norfolk in the previous round. Martin Gibson having a go there at Sir Mark Taylor for seventh. It's Adam Bint second in Division 2. There's Stephen Powell third. Then we've got Jock Borthwick, John Powell, Craig Evans. And further back in the order we'll have Simon Faulkner just learning his craft here at Pembroke. Quite a fast-paced circuit for the trucks here in uh, South Wales, not far from uh, Clanetley and Port Talbot, near the South Wales coast home of Welsh motorsport for many years now. John Newell is really under fire here from Stuart Oliver for second place. MAN versus Volvo and David Jenkins has closed up as well. He's got past Tony Smith. He's having a go at Tom O'Rourke for fourth place. Who had its hairpin. John Newell goes in very deep there. This is Stuart Oliver's opportunity up towards the right-hander at Spitfires. He's going through. Oliver into second place. The lead is now over five seconds for Ryan Smith. Flying Ryan out in front, looking for his, his sixth consecutive title this year. Tom O'Rourke under fire there from David Jenkins. There's Tony Smith, then Taylor Gibson, and then we've got the Division 2 boys, headed by Craig Reed. His lead over Adam Bint about one and a half seconds. Tom O'Rourke contesting the European Championship this year on the continent with that MAN. Sadly, the European Championship doesn't visit the UK anymore. David Jenkins all over the back of Tom O'Rourke, the head of MV Commercials, based in southern Scotland. Until MV Commercials had a display of some of their road-going vehicles at Donington a few years ago, Tom O'Rourke had never been to a truck race. Saw the sport, instantly fell in love with it, and now here he is competing. 
Tony Smith heads the next three. He's got Mark Taylor and Martin Gibson behind him. Now Jenkins is going to go to the inside. Down towards Hatchet's hairpin. Tom O'Rourke moves across. Good defending there from Tom for fourth place. Jenkins trying for the outside. He won't get round the outside as Hatchet's hairpin, I don't think. Tom O'Rourke holds the place. Reed is nearly seven seconds now for Ryan Smith, ahead of Stuart Oliver and John Newell. This little lot six seconds back on uh, John Newell in third. We've got uh, nine and a half minutes of this 15 minute race to go. Five MAMs together for fourth place there. Then we've got Craig Reed in the Avico leading Division 2. Tom O'Rourke under real pressure here from David Jenkins. There's the battle for fourth coming through Brooklyn's corner. There's Reed leading Division 2. Almost side by side here for fourth now, and Tom O'Rourke is really rigorously defending now from Jenkins. But Jenkins can take comfort in the fact his championship rival, Martin Gibson, is still behind him. There's Stephen Powell, he's third in Division 2 ahead of Jock Borthwick. Then we've got John Powell and Craig Evans. Simon Faulkner a little further back in the Division 1 Evita. Down towards Hatchet's hairpin, it's getting busy here, here comes Martin Gibson up the inside, O'Rourke holding the inside on Jenkins, they exit the hairpin side by side, now is Gibson going to get through here on Mark Taylor, I think he might, Tony Smith still side by side, Taylor could have a chance here at uh, Debeni to get past Tony Smith and he's done so into the left hander, good driving there by Mark Taylor. One or two of you wondering what the uh, steam coming from the wheels of these trucks is. The, these uh, trucks have water-cooled brakes, so as the water heats up it uh, boils off as steam. So that's what you can see coming from the wheels. It's not a problem, it is normal on race trucks. Tony Smith starting to drop back through goes Martin Gibson under braking for Brooklands. And now Craig Reed has caught the Division 1 battle. They're so busy fighting with each other, they're losing time to the Division 2 boys. We're just coming up to half distance then in this first truck race of the weekend. Craig Reed, well he's uh, looking set to win the Division 2 title this year unless uh, a miracle happens for Stephen Powell. He wants to play with the more powerful boys here. Coming up on Tony Smith in the 45. Seven and a half minutes to go, nearly eight seconds in it for the lead now. Smith pulling away from Oliver. There is Craig Evans towards the back in the number 10. Brown Recycling MAN, third in the Division 2 points through consistency rather than out and out speed. Still all 15 trucks who started the race still running, of course Paul McComsky and Bradley Smith did not start. And your leader is Ryan Smith, we concentrate on the battles further back, this is the fight for four. Now held by David Jenkins, he's finally got past Tom O'Rourke. Here comes Martin Gibson again up the inside on Mark Taylor. Mark just about gives him room at Brooklands and Martin Gibson now really starting to get into his stride. I suppose early on he needed to bed in the new brakes they put on the MAN. But it's Mercedes that leads. Ryan Smith, the Nottinghamshire driver. Stuart Oliver is still second. John Newell, quite a long way back now in third. He's rather on his own in his MAN. Then it's Jenkins breaking away from O'Rourke. Then Gibson's got ahead of Taylor, Smith, and here comes Craig Reed. He wants to take on the Division 1 drivers. Have a look on the inside there, down to Hatchet's hairpin. Martin Gibson desperately needs to make progress, and O'Rourke's run very deep there into the hairpin. It is Gibson's opportunity, and they bounce off each other into Spitfires. Through goes Gibson. He's up into sixth position now. Mark Taylor now attacks Tom O'Rourke. The two white MANs together. They lead on each other coming through towards um, the crossing there. I thought uh, Mark Taylor was going to go off into the barriers, but he saved it there over the grass, over the uh, old runway here at uh, Pembrey, you can see there. Mark Taylor sliding over the grass there. I thought he was going to lose it going to the tyre wall. He saved it. He's got behind Craig Reed. He's got Adam Bint on his tail now. The Oxfordshire driver in the uh, older... Volvo White Aerodyne, used to be in the blue and white colours of CMG Recovery but now in that more menacing black and orange livery. Well, there goes our leader Ryan Smith, he has lapped Simon Faulkner, six minutes to go. At the speed of these trucks, they are electronically limited to 100 miles an hour. 
race trucks, of course, on the road, HGVs can only do 56, but race trucks are limited to 100 miles an hour. If you are found to have exceeded that speed, if anything goes wrong with your limiter, then you will get a penalty. Tony Smith under fire from Craig Reed now. Great to have Tony back in the championship, man from Gravesend in Kent. Final round of the series is on his local circuit, so hopefully him and his son Bradley will be racing at Brands Hatch. Craig Reed heading for another Division 2 win here. What's his gap to uh, Adam Bint? It was over three seconds last time through. There is Binty in the background in the Volvo. Mark Taylor in between them now. And Stephen Powell, number three, third in the uh, Division 2 classification. He will be moving up to Division 1 next season with an MAN, a more powerful MAN. So good luck to Stephen Powell. Craig Reed still having a go at the 45 of Tony Smith. They're coming up on Tom O'Rourke as well. Nine laps completed by race leader flying Ryan Smith. What's his gap back to Stuart Oliver now? It was 7.8 seconds last time through. It's 8.2 seconds now. John Newell in third place with uh, his MAN. He's a further four and a half seconds back. Rewatch the midfield battle. Craig Reed absolutely flying in that Iveco. He is loving this. Tom O'Rourke has been caught by Tony Smith. Through hatching, it's up towards Spitfires. Probably the name given to that corner because of Pembrae's uh, aeronautical connections. Swing their way then through Dibeni and over the crossing into the paddock. The gap for second in Division 2 is coming down. Stephen Powell is catching out of bits. His last lap was a couple of seconds quicker than uh, the Volvo. Bint did a 116, Powell a 140. Fastest lap of the race of all done by Ryan Smith, 1 minute 10.416. He's completed 10 laps, 8.5 seconds clear of Stuart Oliver. Made no secret of the fact Ryan Smith, he wants to match Stuart Oliver's record of 10 British titles and then try and beat it, but he wants to do the European Championship budgets commit committing as well. Here's the fight for second in Division 2, Bint from Powell in the HGV Direct and Dines Recovery MAN. It is half and half livery, yellow and white. Over the line they go, two and a half minutes to go. Well, the race wind's looking fairly uh, clear cut here. And a bit running on HVO fuel. It certainly improved the performance of that Volvo, one of the older trucks in the field. Now Simon Fault they're getting on, he's still going, he's a lap down to Ryan Smith of course. Stephen Powell a bit sideways there, coming out of Spitfires. Really is trying to monster up onto the tail of Adam Finn. Behind them we've got Sir John Powell, he's got ahead of Jock Borthwick. Craig Evans towards the back of the field. Simon, uh, Stephen Powell rather. On the tail of Adam Bint now, this is for second in Division 2, remember? Well, Ryan Smith's got the race won, he's nearly nine seconds up on uh, Stuart Oliver. Coming round to start his last lap very shortly. John Powell being caught again by Jock Borthwick. Battles all the way down the order, a great circuit for truck racing is Pembrey. A fairly flowing layout, except for a couple of hairpins wide enough for them to race down the straights. Here's Craig Reed, still on the tail of Tony Smith. Great to see the Avico keeping up with the Division 1 boys. Still ahead of Mark Taylor after he's off at the crossing earlier on. Less than a minute to go now. Ryan Smith uh, will be, uh, I think, starting his last lap this time in the Mercedes. Bit of smoke there from uh, Craig Evans, his MAN. There's the leader coming up to lap Evans. He goes into his final lap. There's the last lap board from the marshals. Say a thank you to all our volunteer marshals, as always. You could not go racing without them. The Orange Army, as they're known. Keeping a safe distance uh, from trackside for safety reasons, of course, with the trucks out there. Ryan Smith still leads. There's David Jenkins. He's made it back up to fourth after that little collision on the first corner. Simon Faulkner gets out of the way, lets Martin Gibson through. He's now fifth. It's four and a half seconds off David Jenkins. 
Ryan Smith heads up towards the Senna S for the last time. Coming up to lap Craig Evans. And he's going to start the weekend as he means to go on to try and uh, kick his season back into top gear. Still Tom O'Rourke holding six ahead of Tony Smith. The podium places are pretty much set now. Smith, Oliver and uh, John Newell, who we've hardly seen, the Yorkshireman in his, in his uh, MAN. Here he comes up towards the final corner, then it's going to be a win for flying Ryan Smith in our first truck race of the weekend. Here he comes out of the final corner, up towards the chequered flag. It is victory for Ryan Smith in the Mercedes Actros. He wins by a clear margin ahead of Stuart Oliver. Oliver will come over in second, there's Martin Gibson. See where he's going to come in. John Newell in third. David Jenkins will be fourth. There he is over the line. And Martin Gibson will take uh, fifth position. Simon Falk for a lap down. Finishes his uh, first truck race with no damage. I'm sure he'll uh, be pleased to have achieved that. Stephen Powell has come through there while we were watching the leaders. He's got second position from Adam Bint. John Powell having a go as well. Stephen Powell comes home second in Division 2. It's going to be a photo finish. Adam Bint just holds on ahead of John Powell. Then it's Jock Borthwick. We'll confirm the full results um, in a moment then. As the air horns go off at the end of the race. They enjoyed that one. sure everybody else did too. Okay, we'll confirm the uh, results in a second then. Here it is, Ryan Smith the winner by seven and a half seconds ahead of Stuart Oliver in our first truck race of the day with John Newell taking a rather lonely third place. David Jenkins racing back through for fourth, ahead of his championship rival, Martin Gibson. Tom O'Rourke was sixth, ahead of Tony Smith. Craig Reed wins Division 2 in eighth overall. Then Mark Taylor was ninth. Stephen Powell coming through for tenth place, just ahead of Adam Bintz. They were second and third in Division 2. Then it was John Powell, Jock Borthwick, Craig Evans, and well done to Simon Faulkner in his first ever truck race. Got to the end in 15th position. minutes we will uh, be bringing on the trucks for our final race of the weekend here at Pembroke. Hopefully we'll see a full grid for this final race. So we know that uh, Bradley Smith will be out in his dad Tony's Division 1 truck. Hopefully we'll see them out together next year. Just one round to go, as we said, for the trucks this year. It is looking fairly likely that Craig Reed will win this year's Division 2 Championship. See if he can take a fourth win of the weekend. It'll be 9 out of 10 if he does so in our final race here at Pembroke. Well, still a three-way fight in uh, Division 1. Ryan Smith has caught up some points this weekend with a couple of wins. David Jenkins and Martin Gibson together at the top of the championship just ahead of him coming into the weekend. be interesting to see how things uh, stack up when we go to Brands Hatch once the points have been tallied. Great to see Stuart Oliver take a win. He's had a fairly lacklustre year by his usual standards. enjoying the warm weather. It's been a great day here. That's the Pembrey circuit, the home of motorsport in South Wales. 
Don't forget we go to Mallory Park next Sunday. If you like your saloon car racing, we've got the final rounds of the classic touring car racing championships at uh, Mallory Park. Cars from the 1960s up to the present day in action there. Titles to be decided. We've got the pre-66 touring cars and the pre-83s. Mark 1 Escorts normally we see to the front of the field in that one pre-66. It's Minis, Anglias. American machinery as well. A couple of Hillman Imps too. Pre-93 touring cars. Uh, BMW is the dominant force in there. Pre-03s as well. Mainly Honda Civics we'll see fighting for the wins. So we've got the uh, Blue Oval Saloon Series for everything Ford. Close fight for the title in those. And the classic Thunder Saloons as well. The big spectacular V8s will be on top in that one. The Australian supercars and so on. Some big, powerful BMWs in that as well, some M3s. That's all coming up at Mallory Park. We've got the Jaguars as well, of course. The Jaguar Championship running with the Classic Touring Car Racing Club this year. Close fight in their championship. That's all coming up uh, next Sunday from Mallory Park in Leicestershire. And after that, we're at Donington Park. We've got uh, the final rounds of the Goodyear Brick Car Endurance Championship plus plenty of support races I believe we've got the Mini 7 Racing Club there as well they're always extremely spectacular the Junior Saloon's out at that one as well we've already seen what they can do Bonfire Weekend the trucks have their big finale at Brands Hatch and then a week after that we've got uh, the uh, night races at Brands Hatch for the Brick Car Trophy Championship Include our season on our BARC TV live coverage. Highlights broadcast on TV as well. Okay, so we're almost ready for our uh, truck race. They'll be on track soon then. I believe Pointy's been up to. Uh, some uh, more fact-finding down in the paddock. Jamaica! <laughs> okay, I love that, I love that. Right, we ready? Yeah. Three, two... Back down here in Park Ferme at Pembury Wells with uh, race one of Sunday, position one in Division Two. John Powell, massive congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, we, we had a great start. Uh, you kept that lead. Uh, a couple of seconds gap uh, for, for most of the race, in fact. Yeah, I mean, Craig's a little bit quicker in any case, so we've just got to play a bit defensive on it, and uh, hopefully I could just keep my nerve, and then the uh, red flag come out, so it's like, thanks, Adam. Yeah, <laughs> sigh of relief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go so do you reckon, how, how many laps do you reckon it would have taken Craig to catch you? Would he have caught well, you? Well, he was on me, but, you know, obviously I'm going to try and make it a little bit difficult within reason to get mm. past me, so, but he's a fair driver, he wouldn't take a lunge and... Uh, you know, I mean, he's challenging for the championship in yeah, any case, yeah. so I've got to be mindful of that. I felt like he had a lie in this morning, actually, Craig Green. He, he waited his time at the back quite a while. Yeah, well, we had a little pep talk, you know. So uh, yeah, give him a chance. I'll need the points. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very nice of him to do so. Uh, now, just before we went on camera, you said you'd had a rethink on yesterday's biscuit question. Yeah. Uh, and, and now you are... Jamaican wafer. A Jamaican wafer. And if you could just explain to the camera what on earth that is. Well, it's a, a wafer that comes from Jamaica. Well, there you go. I mean, if you need any more explanation you need yeah. to google it i think ladies and gentlemen well thank you very much for joining us john fantastic result let's go and hand out some silverware shall we Lovely. thank you very much cheers, cheers john thank you. thank you right that's all from us now down here thanks for that pointy so the pickups head back to park fermi You had a red flag at the start of their uh, race. Probably had to stop and pick up a few bits. I've been trying to resist making that pun all day as well. Okay, so the trucks will be out on track uh, very shortly then. Almost on schedule here at uh, Pembroke. As we say, we had that amended result earlier on with Ryan Smith docked one place from second to third in Division 1 for uh, gaining an unfair advantage, is the official reason. It was for uh, 
a bit of Morse code on the back of uh, the truck of David Jenkins, I think, as their feud rumbled on. Heavyweight rivalry. Forget Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. We've got Ryan Smith and David Jenkins. Heavyweight, I'm talking about the vehicles, of course. Ah. We've got a stuck pickup truck. That's um, out at Brooklyn's again. Who's that? Can't see the number on it. They've uh, taken the door panel off. The Land Rover in position for the recovery. As soon as that's complete, so we've got another pickup uh, in the background there, over to the right of your screen, being recovered as well. They've certainly had a bit of a destructive day, the pickup trucks. Can't quite work out who those are. We did lose Matt Simpson in the uh, early stages of that pickup truck race. At the uh, former British touring car racer, of course. Now back in uh, pickup truck racing. So as soon as the circuit is clear, we'll be back underway with our uh, final truck race of the weekend. I'd like to say a quick hello to uh, Sean Taylor, who's watching our coverage. You've seen him uh, around and about the paddock at our truck events in the past. He's even driven the pace truck once or twice. He's watching on, so hello to you, Sean. So we've got a rather stuck pickup truck at the moment uh, being cleared. Got some, uh, looks like some fluid being uh, treated there as well from it. A bit bogged down in the grass at the moment. Land Rover with a tow rope will sort that out. See the uh, blower just being brought in there by one of our marshalling team just to clear the circuit away. Couldn't quite see the number, unfortunately, on that uh, pickup truck, so we don't know who it is. That's fair play to our marshals once again. See them in action here, just putting uh, a bit of powder down on uh, an oil spill, by the look of it. And their final one ahead of their last race meeting of the season. And once everybody's back in position, we'll have our final 15-minute truck race of the weekend. We'll give you the grid in a few moments.
There we see our trucks in the assembly area. Good to see Simon Fulton is back out, our newcomer. He will start from the back of the grid once again. Hopefully we'll see him out again at uh, Brands Hatch as well. A bit uh, less distance for him to travel, based near Portsmouth in Hampshire. Yeah, racing the uh, ex-Simon Reed truck. Sitting behind Craig Reed there, Simon's brother. Alongside them, Craig Evans. So Marshall's on the grid, that's a good sign. Ready to greet the trucks out onto the grid. OK, we'll have a look at the lineup for our final race of the weekend then. Pole position. Well, we know it's not Tony Smith, it's Bradley Smith in the number 45, though I suspect he'll start behind the other Division 1s. It's his first time in Division 1, so we'll probably have Tom O'Rourke on his own on the front row. Second row, John Newell, number 18, Martin Gibson in 11. Third row, 81, Mark Taylor, and number one, Ryan Smith. And then we've got 69, David Jenkins, and number seven, the earlier winner, Stuart Oliver, rounding out the Division 1 field. Heading up Division 2, number three, Stephen Powell, had problems in the previous race, had to uh, call in at the pits, finish the lap down. He starts alongside 32 of Jock Borthwick. Then we've got six, John Powell, and number five of Adam Bintz. Craig Reed, 68, is next. Craig Evans, a late retirement in the previous race on row eight and Simon Faulkner starts behind them we haven't got uh, Paul McComiskey once again number 99 hopefully he'll make it to Brands Hatch but we'd like to see him uh, get a few more racing laps in last couple of events he hasn't got past qualifying they're now out on track headed by the uh, Martin Oliver Transport MAN there is Tom O'Rourke John Newell Martin Gibson, Mark Taylor, there's Ryan Smith, David Jenkins, Stuart Oliver. Is Bradley Smith there? Yes, he is. Further back with the Division 2 lot at the moment. Just warming their tyres on the way around. There will be a rolling start, of course. So we've got the full complement of Division 1s. I think we've got everybody in Division 2 as well. We'll just make sure as they come round. There's Stephen Powell, the yellow MAN. John Borthwick is there. John Powell, Adam Bint, Craig Reed. There's Craig Evans. It should be Simon Faulkner at the back. It's there he is. The only truck missing is uh, obviously Bradley Smith because he's racing Tony's truck and uh, Paul McComsky, a non-starter. So John Newell is going to be looking to get a run down the inside into Hatchet's Hairpin for the first time. He's had a fairly quiet weekend so far. Based near Rotherham. Runs a container and tanker lorry business. Rook, the owner of MV Commercial, based in Scotland. It was uh, three years ago, as he mentioned earlier, that he started racing. He'd never even been to a truck race up till uh, that point. He saw the sport was while uh, displaying some of his vehicles at uh, Donington Park, a convoy in the park, was instantly hooked, decided to have a go himself. Quickly moved up into the British and the European Championships and uh, Survived a huge accident at Thruxton last year. And was back and ready for the start of this year. He's also brought in uh, Jock Borthwick, another Scottish newcomer to truck racing. There's been quite a few Scots appeared in the uh, sport, despite the fact the sport is not run in Scotland. Um, we've never seen truck racing at Knock Hill, Scotland's race circuit. I remember Archie Argo racing... Uh, in the late 80s, early 90s. He was based up in the north of Scotland. The nearest circuit that ran the sport to where he was based was Donington Park. Think how many hours and how much diesel he had to use to uh, get down to race there. John Newell alongside Martin Gibson looking for his second win of the weekend. 
With one win each for the two GT tyres trucks. Stuart Oliver's got to do it the hard way this time. Ryan Smith penalised one place in the earlier race for contact. He'll resume his rivalry with David Jenkins. Mark Taylor in there as well. He's had a good weekend. Okay. Away we roll. The convoy rolls for the final time here at Pembrey this weekend. A little bit of smoke there from Martin Gibson. Can Ryan Smith make it three wins? There's Bradley Smith, the youngest man in the championship, number 45. His first time in Division 1. Tony raced that machine yesterday. Bradley got this one Division 2 race yesterday in his own uh, Iveco after a shunting qualifying. They repaired it and he did get out for the second race but failed to finish. There's the Powell brothers. So Tom O'Rourke should lead them off here. Fifteen minutes of racing coming your way then. Trucks have been superb this weekend at Pembroke, as they always are here in Wales. We're ready, we're ready to finish with a cracker. Or a biscuit. <laughs> Getting ready to rumble with the final race of the weekend here at Pembrey for the British truck racing championship Tom O'Rourke on the front of the grid for division one Stephen Powell and Jock Borthwick lead division two John Newell in a good position as well two wins so far for Ryan Smith this weekend in division one one for Martin Gibson and one for Stuart Oliver Craig Reed with three wins in division two the other's gone to John Powell who's it going to be this time the revs are up and we are ready to get underway with our last race of the day here at Pembrey. Away they go. Tom O'Rourke moves across to take the lead down into the hatchet's hairpin for the first time. Chased by John Newell. Ryan Smith trying to get down the outside into the hairpin. He's already up alongside John Newell. He'll try and get ahead. He's gone too wide. He's onto the grass. A little bit over ambitious there from Ryan Smith and everybody's going to go back up the inside he's sliding all over the place that was more like truck rally cross from Ryan Smith and look who he's rejoined behind David Jenkins so battle is joined once again between those two here we go then John Tom O'Rourke leads the way from John Newell Martin Gibson in third Mark Taylor is in fourth looks like Jock Borthwick has taken the lead of division two so it's the Scots leading both classes at the moment I think yes Borthwick's outpaced Stephen Powell we know he had uh, some issues with his MAN in the earlier race had to uh, make a pit stop but Borthwick's run wide there coming out of um, Senna he's still got the lead so has Tom O'Rourke here comes John Newell on the attack with his MAN Gibson is third then Taylor MAN's holding the first four places here's the battle in division two Adam Bint under fire from Craig Reed for third place in that category they had a good scrap earlier today behind them John Powell in the number six the uh, leaders coming up towards Hatchet's hairpin for the second time a line astern into it John Newell ready to attack for the lead as they go towards Spitfires he's got the inside line away they were side by side up towards the uh, crossing who's it going to be it is Newell who's got the lead he's through at the crossing so John Newell takes the lead for I think the first time this weekend we've seen him lead a race second place is uh, O'Rourke third we've got the 81 of Mark Taylor then it's the two GT tyres trucks of Martin Gibson and Stuart Oliver and John Newell's gone wide there coming through centre he's under the grass he's dropped back it's 86 O'Rourke retakes the lead I, I think John Newell's got a puncture yeah I think he's left front tyres punctured he's slowing down so disaster for Newell just as he took the lead there the uh, yeah the uh, left front tyres blown so uh, he's in trouble 
That'll be his race over with. So your leader is O'Rourke. Mark Taylor, where's he going? I thought he was going to go straight on there at Carter's. Goodness me. He's got Martin Gibson up alongside. They clash together. You can tell it's the last race of the weekend, can't you? O'Rourke from Taylor, side by side across the line. We'll give you the gap in a moment. 1.4 seconds is Tom O'Rourke's lead. Gibson's going to go through on the inside into second place. Side by side for third. Stuart Oliver's tucked in there on the inside of Mark Taylor, who moves to try to cover. Jenkins is next. He's concentrating on holding off Ryan Smith. So John Newell has headed into the pits with a puncture. That's a great shame as he'd just taken the lead when that's happened. Maybe there was some contact there as he uh, tried to battle for the lead. OK, O'Rourke looking to hang on in front this time then. Here comes Mark Taylor. He's having a great run here at Pembrey, attacking Stuart Oliver for third place. He was second, nearly went off at the end of the previous lap. Martin Gibson got through. Oliver followed him into the hairpin. David Jenkins behind. Then it's Ryan Smith. He's had a bit of smoke, I see, coming from the Mercedes. Had some engine trouble at Donington early this season. He's up on the grass there again, trying to pass his great rival. Bradley Smith behind them. Then we've got the Division 2s, led by Jock Borthwick, number 32. Second, Stephen Powell. He's got um, Craig Reed on his tail. Adam Bintz dropped back behind John Powell. Well, it's getting closer at the front of Division 1. Fastest lap by Martin Gibson, 112.421. He's on the tail of O'Rourke now. Steam coming off the front wheel. That's from the water cool brakes. And Martin Gibson pushing Tom O'Rourke almost there. He's got a long time to defend. Nearly 11 minutes of this race left. Through De Benny and towards the left at the crossing. Mark Taylor still fourth behind the GT tyres trucks. Through Senna. David Jenkins still in fifth place. Martin Gibson is hungry here for a second win to keep his title hopes alive in Division 1. He's had by far his best ever season in British truck racing. He's a relative newcomer to the sport. Still David Jenkins. I wonder we've had a change for the lead, have we, there in Division 2? I saw Jock Borthwick run wide, or was that Bradley Smith who was uh, ahead of them there? Two white MANs possibly throwing me off. We'll wait and see who crosses the line first in Division 2, because we keep an eye on the Division 1 battle. Martin Gibson is getting ready to make a move here. O'Rourke moves to cover down into Hatchet's hairpin for the fifth time. Gibson tries again. He's weaving about there. O'Rourke from Gibson, making the MAN as wide as possible, but possibly not wide enough because here comes Gibson up the inside into Spitfires. Oh, he nearly clips the back. He does clip the back very slightly. He's dislodged the wheel arch there on Tom O'Rourke's rock. He goes for the other side, bash into the back as they uh, go into the crossing. Nearly spun him out there, I thought. So that's the other wheel arch as dislodged. Well, at least they match now. Second place is Martin Gibson. Oliver under fire from Taylor still, and Ryan Smith, meanwhile, while that was going on, has got ahead of David Jenkins. That was at the end of the previous lap, I think, so he's now going to attack into uh, Brooklyn. He's up the inside of Mark Taylor's 81 MAN, the Mercedes. Through he comes. Here comes Flying Ryan. Now he's on the charge. They're going to have to watch their mirrors here. Borthwick is still leading Division 2. My apologies for the confusion there, ahead of Stephen Powell and Craig Reed. All the actions in Division 1 at the moment. David Jenkins puts a wheel onto the grass there. Runs a little bit wide. Ryan Smith, his next target, is the 10-time champion, Stuart Oliver. Martin Gibson getting ready for another move, or attempt at a move here on Tom O'Rourke. That wheel arch flapping behind him. Still the Scotsman hangs on. Gets a little kiss on the bumper again there from Martin Gibson, who goes for the inside. He won't get alongside this time. David Jenkins being leaned on there by, uh, I think that was Mark Taylor. I thought they were heading for the grass there. This is allowing Bradley Smith to close up as well. He's going well. O'Rourke, Gibson, Oliver, Smith, still the order. Then we've got Mark Taylor fifth. Here's the uh, battle in Division 2. That's Stephen Powell ahead of Craig Reed. Have they got ahead of um, Jock Borthwick there? Looking back, yes they have, so Powell, Stephen Powell now leads Division 2, they're past Borthwick while all that was going on, that was coming through the hairpin I think. Impossible to know which race to look at, got two races in one here. Stewart Oliver now defending from his uh, rival Ryan Smith. 
for everyone to rival with Ryan Smith because he's been the man to beat for so many years. Up the inside there, Stuart Oliver holding that third place. The leaders run a little bit wide. Now, what's Gibson going to try this time? He knows he's quicker. There's the lead fight in Division 2. Craig Reed's taken over. You caught a glimpse of there. So Reed leads Division 2 for the fourth time this weekend. It's still Tom O'Rourke who leads Division 1. What can Ryan Smith do here? Takes a special driver to get past Stuart Oliver with his years of experience and titles won. This is great stuff. First four there ahead of Mark Taylor. David Jenkins still there in sixth. Brad Smith going well in uh, seventh place. Waiting to see uh, who's leading Division 2. I think the uh, live timing may have given up the ghost momentarily. So uh, can't tell you the gap at the moment. Leaders go through and uh, O'Rourke is under real pressure this time from Martin Gibson. He gets alongside. That's the better exit he needed from Brooklyn's corner up towards Carter's. But again, O'Rourke holds him off. And Oliver does the same to Ryan Smith. We look back and see Craig Reed leading Division 2 ahead of Stephen Powell, Borthwick, John Powell and Adam Bint. Craig Evans has dropped back. Here they come then. Gibson to the inside. This time he can't get the better run off the turns to get the run down the straight and get alongside now here comes David Jenkins he's going to have a look at Mark Taylor up the inside is the hairpin Taylor turns in there'll be a bit of rubbing on the exit I'm sure between those two can Jenkins get through for fifth place here Taylor fights back they're still rubbing as they go through Spitfires Taylor out onto the grass Jenkins didn't leave him a lot of room there but he's through into fifth position Good save by Mark Taylor, sliding it through there. Still, Tom O'Rourke has got the lead. Martin Gibson, I think he's getting impatient now. And one man who's getting very impatient is Ryan Smith. Oh, no, Stuart Oliver, a bit of a lock-up there. That's going to force Smith to go wide. What's he going to try into uh, Brooklyn? He's almost pushing Stuart Oliver there. Now they're starting to get heated up, and look who's creeping up on them. Despite some front-end damage, here comes Dave Jenkins. We're just coming up to half distance in this very close final truck race of the weekend here at Pembroke. This is terrific. Round the right-hander at Honda Curve. It is still Tom O'Rourke somehow hanging on in front. I think he's only had one win in his uh, British truck racing career so far. If I remember rightly, that was at Donington last year. Still he holds the lead. Martin Gibson sliding in second there. Jenkins ready to attack Ryan Smith for fourth. Is it going to be the latest bout between those two? Stuart Oliver still in the middle of all this in third place. Six behind them is Mark Taylor and next it should be Brad Bradley Smith. Yes, he's next in the uh, number 45. Here they come up towards Senna once again. How is Tom O'Rourke soaking up this pressure so well? We've got um, about six and a half minutes to go. There's Simon Faulkner. He's still going in the uh, number 92. I can't tell you the gaps, unfortunately, because my uh, timing screen has failed. Apologies there. Meantime, Ryan Smith continuing to attack Stuart Oliver. Here come your leaders. Down the straight they go. Again, O'Rourke moves to the inside, into the hairpin. David Jenkins up on the tail there, and uh, Mark Taylor's going to make it six line astern shortly as Gibson again clips the back of uh, Tom O'Rourke. And again, as they come through the crossing, he's pushed him wide. There goes the wheel arch. Get off me, says Tom O'Rourke. And he actually keeps his foot in and pulls away just a little bit there. OK, I think the timing has uh, now just about corrected itself. Sorry about that. Taylor's dropped away a little bit there. Now here comes uh, Ryan Smith again. A bit of a lock-up there from uh, our race leader. Now this could give uh, Martin Gibson the impetus he leads to make an attack as they come round the last two corners. No, O'Rourke again moves across to the inside. Superb defensive driving. 
Here they come. We've got less than three minutes of this race to go now. Craig Reed's gone clear in Division 2 ahead of Stephen Powell and uh, Jock Borthwick. Then it's John Powell, Adam Bins, Craig Evans further back. But it's all about the Division 1 battle here. Gibson to the inside. Is there room there on the inside? No, again, O'Rourke moves across on him. He just cannot get the line for the hairpin every time Tom O'Rourke's got an answer to it. And now he forces Gibson to go wide. David Jenkins is meanwhile attacking Ryan Smith before. There's bits of bodywork falling off these trucks everywhere. Martin Gibson still holding second. Ryan Smith on the back of Stuart Oliver. Pushing him there over the crossing. Smith up the inside. He's got through. He may have put a wheel onto the grass there, I think, coming through the crossing. We couldn't quite see, but he's into third place. Stuart Oliver will surely attack back again. O'Rourke's pulled away a little bit. Now, if, if uh, Gibson comes under attack from Ryan Smith, that's going to play into Tom O'Rourke's hands because he's going to be able to pull away. We know that Gibson and uh, Smith are two of the championship protagonists. David Jenkins, likewise, is uh, in contention for the championship this year. It's not been runaway Ryan Smith like it has been the last few years because he's had uh, a few teething problems, as we've seen in past events with his new Mercedes. Mark Taylor staying with them as well. Now, can Martin Gibson have a go this time? I think there'll be two more laps to go. Ryan Smith moving up on the leaders. Gibson's soon going to have to attack and defend at the same time. David Jenkins up the inside. He's past Stuart Oliver. And so is uh, Mark Taylor. Has Oliver got a problem there? He lost those two places very quickly as they came over the line. I think he might have a tyre going down as well, quite possibly, on the left rear. Looks a bit uh, iffy there. We'll keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on the leader as well, Tom O'Rourke. Craig Reed's clear in uh, Division 2 by six and a half seconds now. So he's going to take a fourth Division 2 win and, uh, I would say, virtually wrap up the championship. But who's going to... Oh, a little bit of a sideways moment there for O'Rourke. This is Gibson's opportunity up the inside. Into... Uh, there's going to be three wide. Look at this coming off uh, Brooklands. Has O'Rourke held it? How he's held it there, I don't know, because he got sideways on the exit of Senna, which gave Gibson the inside line. I don't know how Gibson didn't get up the inside there. Only a few seconds left on the clock. Now, is it going to be checkered flag this time, or is the last lap board going to go out? Let's have another lap of this. Come on. Gibson up the inside. It is last lap. We've got one more lap to run. One more lap for Gibson to attack. Now he's got to unleash his finishing kick, if you like. He knows he's, this is his last chance. Still, Tom O'Rourke is somehow hanging on. Smith is third, Jenkins fourth, fifth is Taylor. Stuart Oliver still going behind them in sixth, having lost ground on the last lap. Ryan Smith is not finished yet either in the number one. They come through towards Senna once again. Ryan Smith on the attack. He's gone in too deep there. He's going to run wide. This is this could be David Jenkins' opportunity to get up alongside him. Smith overcooked it there slightly. He's holding the place, but that's allowed the two leaders to get away. As they come down into Brooklyn's corner. Into the right-hander. The two leaders still line astern. Smith attack under attack from Jenkins now. Can O'Rourke hang on? It'll be gutting if Martin Gibson gets him on the line because he's driven so well here, Tom O'Rourke, to hold on in front. They're coming round towards the final corner now. One of the best truck races I have ever seen here at Pembrey. They are coming up towards the line now. Martin Gibson closes, but it's going to be too late. And Tom O'Rourke wins it. What a drive. Gibson second, Ryan Smith third, David Jenkins fourth, Mark Taylor fifth, Stuart Oliver sixth as quickly as that. Bradley Smith comes home in seventh. And Craig Reed, another win in Division 2 just behind him. Stephen Powell will take ninth. Jock Borthwick, where's he going? Runs very wide there out of the final corner. He does take third in Division 2. Next home, John Powell. Adam Bintz and Craig Evans and uh, Simon Faulkner will complete the finishes. Of course, we uh, sadly lost John Newell with a flat tyre. What an amazing race that was. Well done, Tom O'Rourke. Final finishers come over the line then. Well done, Simon Faulkner. A good debut weekend. And Tom O'Rourke is absolutely elated. That's one of the best defensive drives you will ever see in truck racing I loved every second of that and I'm sure the drivers did too
Martin Gibson uh, pulls up alongside to congratulate Tom O'Rourke. Round of applause from the marshals as well. That's good to see, and uh, the drivers saying thank you to them as well. One of the best truck races I've ever seen. Sounding their air horns in celebration. Ryan Smith defeats David Jenkins in their scrap. And a good weekend for Mark Taylor concludes with fifth place ahead of Stuart Oliver. You have to feel for John Newell though. He'd just taken the lead and then his front tyre went bang. We'll check out the provisional results uh, in a moment. Tom O'Rourke the winner by 0.36 of a second. It wasn't much more for the whole race than that. Ahead of Martin Gibson. Ryan Smith taking third ahead of David Jenkins by half a second. Mark Taylor fifth ahead of Stuart Oliver. And well done Brad Smith a fine seventh place. Division 2 won for the fourth time this weekend by Craig Reid. That's nine wins in the last ten races for him. He's surely heading for the championship this year. Stephen Powell had to settle for second ahead of Jock Borthwick, the early leader. If only Jock had hung on, we'd have had, I think, the first ever Scottish double win in uh, British truck racing history. John Powell fourth ahead of Adam Bint and Craig Evans. Simon Faulkner only just behind Craig Evans there at the finish. He has come on in leaps and bounds in his first five truck races this weekend. Bad luck to John Newell, the only retirement with a puncture. Well, we're going to head down into pit lane then. Pointy and the team will be down there to talk to some uh, probably very tired but very happy drivers. Well, 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 what a race we have all just witnessed. My goodness me, it's surely the best race of the weekend. And what a result for our new friend, Tom O'Rourke. A fantastic effort, saw him hold that first position the entire race. Even had a bit of a wobble on the last lap, but pulled it back. Great sportsmanship from Martin Gibson, led him back onto the track to take that win. An unbelievable result. We see them now opening the gates as the trucks just line up in the pit lane. Hopefully they'll let them across the track uh, pretty soon. Uh, hopefully they won't be doing interviews uh, in the pit lane uh, as they haven't done all weekend. But what an absolute result. Uh, the people here on the uh, on the banks were having a fantastic time. The cheers that went out uh, when they finished that race was unbelievable. So we're just waiting and we really need to get them back over. Yes, we can see them coming over now uh, with a very, very excited Tom O'Rourke and a sterling effort, of course, as well from uh, Ryan Smith that did manage to badger his way through the pack uh, back in Division 2, of course, as well, we saw Craig Reed take another very good win. Oh, it sounds like they're on. Is, is they're on their way around now? We can see the GT pace truck driven by uh, my friend uh, Stuart Williams, uh, the uh, the beautiful MAN. We've got uh, Martin Gibson in second place, wherever Tom O'Rourke disappeared to. Ah, there he is, the 86 white MAN, just over there on the horizon. We've got some traffic on the. Uh, on the track. I don't know why he stopped. This is live television for you, ladies and gentlemen. We just never know what's going to go on. So we'll have a quick word with Martin Gibson first, I think. Martin Gibson, first of all, wow, what a race. Yeah, that was bonkers. Was that as hard for you as it looked for us? Yeah, Tom didn't have the pace, but he could sure block. He was doing a good job. Fair play to him. I was impressed with what was going on in front. He's got some balls. Yeah, we all were. I mean, that you, we saw you trying and trying and trying the entire race, and every corner was like, no, I'm here. I think I've used the whole of the real estate here to try and get past him, but God knows. <laughs> what happened just in front of you, that small wiggle he had on the last lap? Can, can you get, uh, shed any light on that? I honestly don't remember. You don't remember. <laughs> it was all a flash, all just a complete blur. Well, thank you very much for a fantastic weekend and what a way to finish here at Pembury. Congratulations on your second place. Let's now go across to uh, Tom O'Rourke. Tom's walking over. Of course he is. Right, okay. Well, let's try and find Tom O'Rourke then. Um, I'm just reeling in the cameraman. Uh, <laughs> got myself a live one. He's walking over. Well, let's go and meet him further over if we can then. Another result, of course, for Jock Borthwick. I honestly can't find him. You want to speak to the man himself and he's not in the truck he's supposed to be in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure what they want me to do with this. 
Ah, I can see him now just coming off the track. Let's make our way over quickly if we can. Watch out for Simon Faulkner. Right, here we go. You can see him now. Lots of fans, family, uh, and his team are extremely, extremely happy with the result. Tom, Tom, you, you, you won the race and you've made us wait this long to oh, come and talk to you. My goodness me. I mean, uh, first of all, congratulations. Let me shake Thanks your hand. Well done. How did that feel? It was, it was absolutely brilliant. It really was. Um, I, I led a couple of races this weekend for four or five laps and just became a wee bit unlucky with water and different things, but it all came together in the last race. It was really good. You know, Absolutely I thoroughly enjoyed incredible. it. The performance and was fantastic. Martin Gibson was, had nothing but good things to say about your driving. Yeah, he's, he's, he, he was knocking me and knocking me off my line. <laughs> and, but that's what you need to it get is, used yeah. to. I still need to get used to the crash in a metal. You it's know? just a Anything. reminder that they're, bit, they're behind you. So oh, the next oh, mistake so, you make, that's uh, it. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. And uh, it can have a real laxative effect when you get one of their bangs, you know, it can. <laughs> well, that, that's a, certainly an image for the uh, fans to take home. Uh, big celebrations tonight then in Timo Raw. Uh, really just into the car and up the road. We've a seven hour journey home, to be honest. I've been away for four or five days, so. But no, no, we'll have a bit of a, um, a, a bite to eat and then head up the road. But well, uh, no, no, really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was brilliant. Well, fantastic. Thank you very much for that performance. Very, very well done to you. Tom O'Rourke, ladies and gentlemen, and what a win and what a way to finish the weekend of British truck racing here at Pembury. Uh, I think that's all from me now in part for me. So I'm going to head off and hand out some trophies. Pointsy, thank you very much indeed. You can uh, go and have some tea and biscuits now. You've earned it. Thanks very much to Pointsy and also to uh, you and down in the paddock this weekend, our ace interviewers catching up with all the drivers. And that does uh, just about wrap up our uh, coverage from Pembrey this weekend from the three championships we have on our coverage. So uh, first of all, uh, thank you to the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club drivers and uh, thank you to the junior saloon drivers as well we saw earlier on thank you to our truck races one of the best truck races i've ever seen there to uh, conclude the program so thanks to the drivers and to all their support teams in the uh, paddock we wouldn't be able to drive with no cars uh, prepared for them to compete in of course so thanks to all the mechanics and uh, other team members in the paddock thank you immensely to all our volunteer marshals as always plus the medical staff the uh, recovery crews the race control staff all the other officials from the uh, british automobile racing club we couldn't go racing without them and thanks to everyone especially our volunteer marshals over the course of the weekend thank you to all of you for watching as well thanks for all your uh, kind comments on our feed and uh, we'll hopefully see you on air next sunday where we'll be at mallory park for the classic touring car racing club season finale champions to be crowned across their racing there Right, I think I need a lie down after that last truck race. So thank you all of you for uh, your support across the course of this uh, Welsh truck race weekend here at the Pembrey Circuit. And we'll see you next Sunday at Mallory Park. That's about all from BARC TV this weekend. Thank you very much indeed to you all for watching. That's about all from me, Dave Goddard. So on behalf of my uh, co-commentators, Ewan and Pointy down the paddock and to all our camera teams here this weekend a thank you to them as well this is Dave Goddard signing off here on BARC TV we'll see you next Sunday thanks for watching bye for now